just me, but that makes sense for the YouTube replay. Starting off with the one we finished with yesterday, Waterfalls. Waterfalls. Oh yeah, Waterfalls. Mm -mm -mm. I'll just roll this. Oh, bring these up. Don't get paint on my sleeves. There we go. Hello, Brandy. You're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. For my life, my love, and my lady. Here's the sea. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Raw. I get that, but I'm excited you're here. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Angel. All right, it's a little bit cold today. Violin learner, it's been a while. Have you looking after yourself? Your ex used to sing that? Well, I'm not your ex, but I'm not sure what's good or bad about your ex, but I've got a reasonable taste in music to like that one song, so I'll give them that. <laughs> Sharma, how are you doing? Got here in time, but Sharma, you have a new profile picture. That's very exciting. Good for you. And Amethyst, great gem. I had a cup. I lost the cup. I'm going to find the cup. Oh. What did I do with it, guys? That's the question. I had a cup. And I lost the cup. Oh! It's over me. It's over here. It's over there. Yeah, it's a good sweater, this one. It's a colder day today, so we... Snazzy sweater. It's actually a hand-me-down. It's not even from an op shop, so... Uh... It's a good one, but um, I'm using it disguised from the fact that I need to shave, and I haven't, so. <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to distract everyone from the fact that I haven't shaved today? I know. I'll wear a sweater. Um, but no, I've had the uh, air purifier running in the um, lounge for a long time now. So the air purifier is fantastic because it purifies the air. It's in the name. But... The best thing about that, uh, sorry, the other thing, the other side effect of that is that it cools the room down. So it makes you chilly. I went to art class and someone stole my colour. Stole your colour? Like, as in, like, your inspiration? Or, uh, you had some paint? Whatever it was. It sounds like it may have been a... It sounds like you're making it out to be a bad thing. Could be a good thing. What is considered cold? I don't know. A breezy chilly coming from my... Uh, breezy chill coming from my air purifier. That would be considered cold. It's been like 90 here in New Jersey. Minus 30, 60. So what's that? 30 degrees. It's pretty hot, isn't it? I'm doing good, Noel. I'm doing good. It hasn't been... Ah, oh, it's 90 here in New Jersey. Thanks. Ooh, how do you pronounce that? Honey... Honey Gabini? Honey Gibini. That's what we'll say. Right. Now... These are right on the elbow part, so they just get kind of there. I always find when you're painting, it's good to get your uh, sleeves up past your elbows. Because that means when you move your joints, you're not restricted by the clothing. So if it's either, it's either all the way down to the end, or have it all the way up past the elbow, I find. And that's just how I feel about it. You might find comfort in different spots, but that's just me. Honey bee in German. I like that. And thanks, Cho. This top's giving some love. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had an interesting thought about painting and improving your art or your craft. We normally look at it as a very personal thing, and that's okay, but imagine if you looked at it through the lens of a stranger. If you imagined you looked at your art as if a stranger was looking at it, would you notice the same perks in it? Or are there things in it now that you need to accentuate? Are there things you would tell the person of the artwork you were looking at what they could improve. Who knows? Who knows? 
Hello, dude, how we doing? I wonder if I was to play some music, what would we ever feel like? Question. Maybe. Hey Lizzie, long time no see. Listen to Redbone by <laughs> the Smiths. We've got some variation coming on the music front there. Um, Lizzie, long time no see. Hope you're looking after yourself. If you missed it yesterday, Lizzie, we've got an air purifier in the building now. That keeps the air nice and fresh for me. Oh, this is going to die. Don't die on me! It's going to run out of batteries. I'm going to plug it back in. But we're going to do something quite fresh today. Ooh, fresh. There we go. Here's a little cord. Cheerleading camp. This may surprise you. I'm going to surprise everyone here. But I've never been to cheerleading camp. <laughs> um, I can imagine myself, though, as the mascot. Reckon I would have made a good mascot. We had a bad storm, it's passed now. That's good, that's good. Um, is that charging now? I think that's charging. <clears throat> Let's go like this. Let's go like this. I've got an exciting idea. Already imagined me as a mascot. I think I wore a giant. Um, hmm. I wear just a giant bear costume. I think that'd be fun. I think that'd be fun. Now let's see here. If I can go like this. I know when it rains or it pours. It's a very funny song though. He's very he's very high pitched through it, but it's a good song. Like he it's a nice touch. You Waibu, it is looking quite good. We're not quite there yet. Like I said, there's this level of abstraction we're trying to build into it. Um abstraction. There's a few areas where we've slapped on big brush strokes and assumed it just summed it up, but the water cascades and the trees are much more um, dotted and individual in the picture. So we've got a responsibility to try and highlight each individual tree to give the environment its, uh... Is it gonna work for me? There we go. To give the environment its individual, um, flavour for each individual tree. So we're not there yet. I want to capture a couple of thousand trees before we, uh, call it quits, but we're on the right track. Now if I could just find... <laughs> and I know who oh, it rains or oh, it pours. Why is that not working? Let me see here. I'm trying to open that up, but it's not working for me. Wild. Why don't you want to work for me is the question. What's wrong with me? Bit like that. Now I still haven't found my iPad. I don't know where I put it, so it could be anywhere out there in the big old wild world. Naughty. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. I know it's somewhere in the building though, because I know that um, when I try to connect to my AirPods, it connects into the iPad. So it's somewhere. I just have no idea where that somewhere is. So, wild. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different, so bear with me. We might hate it, or we might love it. 
Um, it's going to be fresh. Fresh. Mm. Do, 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 do. Ah, that's what's dragging all the memory. I've been downloading all the uh, free plays and uploading them piece by piece. You can use Find My Phone to locate it. Um, yeah, this is true. I don't know if I... I've never done that before. But that sounds like the obvious thing to do. Um, I'll get Shelby to show me how to do it when she gets back. It's been, uh, it's been lost for 48 hours. Enough is enough. Catch you later, Victoria. See you soon. Ask Suri to find the iPad. A lot of ideas getting thrown around. I like them all. Um, now that I'm finally here, I'll make this thing do a doogly doog doog thing again. You do it for me? That's the noise I was looking for. And then hopefully it shows up in this little thing. Oh, the hoops we leap through. <laughs> like a hipster. Jeepers creepers. Dead serious, she'll start. But I'm confused by Austin's comment, but um, I guess a little bit. Yeah, I'm wearing black boots. Um, I think the uh, hiking pants are a little bit off thing, but uh, see where you're coming from. And yeah, thank goodness for Shelby. Thank goodness. Right, where'd that thing go? And I know when it rains, oh, it pours. Here we go. Here we go. Music. Sure. Yeah, probably tap a little bit too aggressively, but I'm working on that. Good for you. Oh, that's right. Max and touch screens. Dead serious, she'll start beeping. That's the same comment. I read that before. Let's go like this. Oh, uh, is that gonna? That's on the charge. Clap, 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 clap. Very exciting. All right. Let's add in some paint. Yeah. Touches are red, wherever we can find it. You made it, Ash. You did indeed. You did indeed. And did you make it onto the uh, Discord server, Ash? Because I've been posting the... Oh no, you did. Yes, actually, I see a notification on my phone. Um, you're here on your recent TikTok is dark brown, but here it looks ginger. Huh. Um, yeah. Can't tell you why. Couldn't tell you why. Here we go. Add some little bits of paint up and around. Where's that? Over here. Here we go. Sharma, what have I been up to today? Well, I posted in the Discord a fair bit. And uh, I edited a reel. And I was on the phone for a while. And now, I'm standing in front of this painting. So that was the first two to three hours of my day. And now we're doing this. Reese, of course you can. 
There's currently no originals up online. In a few weeks there will be. But if you'd like limited edition prints, jump on the link in the bio. Or if you'd like a personal piece, jump on the... Uh, um, same uh, commission channel. And from the commissions, you might find the perfect thing, a photo, something that inspires you, something I can turn into art. Feed off your inspiration, make something new, make something special, you know? Thanks Stacy, appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. There we go. Put something through there. There we go. Do you even realize? Oh, thanks, Stacy. I think, um, I think it's probably more to do with the fact. You know when you see someone, like, when you're traveling, or, uh, what am I trying to say? I think maybe it's the waterfall. The waterfall's making everything look beautiful. If I swap the painting for, uh, the farmer, you might have a completely different opinion. quite uh, aggressive with this red that's spread more go around more areas of the painting in New Zealand yes yes indeed this is New Zealand this is the land of the long white cloud the land of the long white cloud and what a place to be um, let me see here. Why is that? Huh. Didn't like it. Wild. I wonder if I can, though. There we go. We're putting a bit of red into the waterfalls. I've noticed that we've been quite cautious with the red and we've just put it up in the sky and a few of the land pieces down here. We can't be afraid to add it into the... Uh... Did I put on music or are you going crazy? I think you're going crazy, Lizzie. There's no music? No, there is music. It's, um... I'm adding like a little bit of something in the background, but I haven't quite found the right style yet. So this is more like a... Quite serene, actually. I kind of like it, but uh... might try a couple of different ones. See if I can find the right floating one. Hey, quick question. You're a soul trader. This might be the one. Let's try this one. I'm excited. Ooh, I think it's gonna think, study. Beautiful future, uplifting. Yeah, you know what? I'm a fan. Let's try beautiful, uplifting work study music. <laughs> there we go. That's good, Shana. Getting the book in. I think, uh, just gonna jump just a little bit. There we go. Build it out. Spread it across. We need more of these reds than we actually think we do. Hey there, Richie Rich. And Greek hates winter. Fair enough, Greek. You know what's good about that? You're allowed to hate things. It's totally okay. Just make sure you don't take it out on anyone. That's the big important thing. Dislike things, hate things. Then make sure you keep that under control. That's the important thing. Alright. Little dabs. Little dabs. 
Acknowledging the red that is in this waterfall. Cascading colours that make up the beauty of all this water. Coming down in all its wild different directions. I like that. It has an energy to it. Hey Jamie, how you doing? It's um... This is going to enter more into a realm of abstraction. Into chaos. But it's not going to go there with wild giant brush strokes. We're going to gently lead it to chaos. So it's actually going to have a serenity to it. Serene relaxation to it. And uh... That's really interesting because normally when paintings go abstract they go chaotic and erratic. This one here is going to go into chaos in an almost gentle, pleasurable way. I'll just keep adding colours. Always looking back to our guiding image, making sure the colours belong in the artwork. But, but, Always making sure the colours belong in the artwork. But, mixing up those hues. We can't possibly spot every little detail, so... The ones we do spot will accentuate themselves more. And that's where you start looking through the lens of the artist. You start seeing something very different from what reality holds because you're looking through the eyes of an imperfect human being and the area is an eye spot the rocks, the crevices the angles the movement will be different from reality from what reality actually holds sometimes capture a bit, a bit of feeling of reality but certainly not the exact mirror of reality more of an exact mirror of what the sensation would be, the empirical evidence of reality. And this could come across here. Again, so we're seeing more and more of these reds take over. I've actually combined that previous red we were using in with a bit of maroon. And that maroon deepens that red. So you can start spotting some areas that actually have a deep grey to them. We're not going to be afraid, even in this later stage of the painting, to do some long strokes, drag it across the whole surface and allow it to actually have some expression through it. Not just little dabs, but larger movements where they belong. The paint went on so thick yesterday that the uh, painting is still drying. And I like that. It's dry enough to paint. But... Still dry enough to know it was painted recently. I like it, Lizzie. It's a change of pace. It's like a... It's like a wholesome winter suit today. It's like a... Uh, Sibs in a jacket. He's unshaven. He's playing music that you find in one of those massage uh, spa places. And I feel like it softens everything. Except when I whack a plate like that. Wake everyone up. Oh my lord. This is the colour. This is the colour. We haven't added salmon into this picture yet. And now that the reds have gone down, the salmon can really come in and punch. Oh, thanks, Steve. Appreciate you sharing the live. What do you use as a reference? Great question. I use a photo. 
sometimes a range of photos. In this case here, we're using one photo of a Washington waterfall. I'll show you it because the picture we're doing is actually surprisingly close to what our reference shot looks like. Here's our reference shot. And even though we're trying to be abstract, you'll definitely see all the connotations coming through there. The water continuing to be advanced with that intense pastel color. It's so white, but at the same time, so blue. Um, and you'll see all those reds and oranges. That's what's justifying that sun-kissed landscape. And up in the top there, in those trees, that's where you're seeing that intensity. See that there? The intensity of those warm colors in those trees. And the tiny detail in all those small trees, that's where our dotting brush strokes are coming from. That's why we're up in this area now, picking. When I say picking, I mean touching. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Building it up. Tiny little bits of paint, one after the next. Let's try and see if we can't capture each individual tree. So that together, you see a whole, but individually, you see small parts. Do you paint anything without a reference? Freestyle, what would I paint? I have painted freestyle, and I don't do it often. Because when I do freestyle, I go crazy. The artwork is so unbridled, uncontrolled in all directions that actually, not only does it not represent anything, it's so raw and wild that uh, without that anchor point, it's very tough to understand what it's actually set out to represent, or if anything's being represented at all. It's just raw emotion flying at a canvas. That's okay too. But I like the tether. I like the tether. Because when you're tied to something, like a reference image, it allows you to go crazy within a court. It's sort of like saying, but what about the limitation? If there's limitation in having a reference image, then every single sport that's ever been played has been limited by the field it was played on. You wouldn't see the field that football or rugby or soccer is played upon as being a limitation for what can occur in the sport, but merely as the ability to create the stage. Create the stage of what needs to be created next the game to be played, probably so it can be appreciated. If it moved too far, we wouldn't be able to understand the journey. So without a reference image, who knows where you go? Who knows where you end up? Whereas, if we can all get behind the idea of cascading water and cascading waterfalls, then we can all go on that journey together. Even if you weren't here for the start of it, you could look at the image in retrospect and through its dots, its colours and its movements, you'd be able to, in a small way, understand the little quest we went on. And I like that. There we go. I like that. Let me just swap that there. Do, 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 do. There we go. I'm just trying a different, uh, a group of different styles of music to see which one I resonate with. If one really catches me. I haven't found it just yet. I haven't found it just yet. But, uh, I've liked a few of them. And certainly, uh, the softer noise in the background helps me maintain my trail of thought, which is pretty fun. I guess that's why they call it study music. Because if you're studying, it'll help you maintain your line of thought. Here we go. Get all of that through there. Bounce that over there. And across there. And 
then where else are we going to go with this beautiful salmon color? Bounce it over these bridges here. There we are. More of these bridges. Little touches, one at a time. One at a time. I've never heard of a waterfall being referred to as handsome. Pretty exciting compliment for a waterfall though. Imagine if you said that in a gallery. What a handsome painting. I don't know if we have uh, We say beautiful painting. One of a handsome painting. Maybe, uh, maybe we need to start that. I should put that in my bio. My dream is to paint handsome paintings. <laughs> so that the world may know what a handsome painting looks like. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so let's get back to this. Little touches. Really allowing that sea. Sea? River. It's coming to context. Sometimes it's not the blue that you need to add to it to allow it to actually flourish. It's every other colour that needs to go into the river to help it grow. Let's put it through here. Where else are we going to go with it? Down in here. Around here. On these hills. Just some touches. Handsome paint. Oh yeah, it could be a new thing that catches on. Maybe, blah, 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 blah. Maybe people get tired <laughs> of calling paintings beautiful paintings. Amazing painting, beautiful painting. Surreal, wonderful. It'll just take maybe 15, 20 acrylics to make it catch on. To start saying, oh, what a handsome painting. I went to the art gallery recently and it was full of handsome works. Because we can say things like, he paid a handsome price. But we don't say he paid a beautiful price. Maybe it's my lack of understanding of English. But I think that... Uh, We should be allowed to use that word. Handsome. Kia ora, tiki NZ. Welcome. It is the appropriate music for a waterfall, I will say that. Can't believe Victoria's missing out. She went to dinner. She's missing out on tranquil music. Waterfalls cascading. How do you deal with people who don't like your art? Well, if you ask that same question, how do, you, how do you deal with people who don't like you? Because if you're gonna be an artist, then your pursuit is trying to find what makes your craft real. What makes it the best rendition of yourself? What can you do to best show people who you are? And so through that, you create a connection between yourself and the viewer. So if someone doesn't like your art, it can get very um, uh, hurtful because your art is a reflection of yourself. But that's okay because on one hand as an artist, we expect everyone to like what we make or hope everyone will like what we make. Not expect, sorry. We hope everyone will like what we make. But we never expect everyone to like who we are. And that's silly. These two things can't coincide. We're ready for the world not to not the whole world not to like us, but we're not ready for the whole world to not like our art. So, as much as you're prepared to walk into a party and have over half the party, maybe not like who you are as a person. Maybe not everyone's cup of tea. Maybe you're a few people's shot of whiskey, and maybe that's okay. And if that's the case, you can own that. Um, where was I going with that?
Let me just turn this down to... There we go. Um, I won't dare, don't you worry, I won't get paid on this sweater. I haven't painted for 20 years to make a mistake now. <laughs> I'll do my best not to. Um, but, in terms of someone not liking your art, it's okay to have art. That's not everyone's cup of tea. This is actually fairly closer to connecting with more people in terms of loving it than disliking it. But it's okay if your artwork is more of a shot of whiskey to a few people. And you know what? If you'd walked into a gallery expecting a uh, cup of tea and someone throws a shot of whiskey at you, you're going to be surprised. Arguably, some people are not going to like that. And that may be your art. And so, it's not the fault of the whiskey or the person who drank it. The fault comes in, if at all, with finding the right environment to have the shot of whiskey. So if your artwork's a shot of whiskey, find your environment. Stop disliking people who walked into a cafe at 9am in the morning and didn't like the whiskey you gave them when they were after a very soft and smooth flat white. <laughs> find the place where the shot of whiskey is the right thing to put out there. And when you find that place, your art's going to be appreciated and loved where it really is. That's what it's about. My favourite artist is the same as it's always been. My favourite artist is Van Gogh. I think Van Gogh is the most incredible artist. I think he is the best example of someone who... He was a drink, a whiskey or a tea, doesn't matter. But the people who were having it when he was around didn't like what he was giving them. But he was determined to keep making it the way he did. He just didn't find the right dinner party to enjoy the drink he was making. And sadly, he passed away before the world could say, actually, Van Gogh, you had your really, really good drink. It's a shot of whiskey that we all want to have a go on. So, if that's your art, you might be like Van Gogh. One day, Clover, I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. Painting waterfalls, portraits, landscapes here in New Zealand. Do you have any current American artists that you admire, Michael? Great question. Honestly, I go in an admiration for people who pursue who they are unapologetically. I think that we'd think that it was in abundance today, but it's not. I think a lot of people are pretending to be who they are unapologetically, but what's actually the result is they're projecting in all sorts of directions. But people who are content and happy and pursuing who they are I think the biggest artist who's a good example of that is probably Bob Ross, in that he, his intentions was to make art, but actually spread happiness through art. Art wasn't so much the job, uh, the result, as it was the conduit for making everyone happy. And I can get on board with that. Um, live life unapologetically. I mean, sometimes you need to apologize. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes when you view things through the lens of hindsight, you prefer you acted differently. And it's okay to apologize. It's okay. As long as you, inside your own mind, when you get the chance, review, recalibrate, and improve. That's okay. Have you seen the letters Van Gogh wrote to his brother? Um, some of them quite negative, some of them quite happy. Um, he was very excited that he had a uh, artist visiting at one stage and he painted a whole series of sunflowers, but 
In the same way, we can pluck messages out of anyone's. Imagine, imagine if someone plucked all the messages out of your phone and used them to dismantle who you were today. Use them to dismantle or uh, talk about you in certain ways. It wouldn't be fitting. Just like those letters were sent in private. Hey Maxine, how you doing? Well, you'll be excited about crushes because this is a crashing, crushing waterfall. So, good to have you here, Maxine. JB, hello. And what grade did you finish? What grade? What grade you finish? Do you degree diploma? Ah ha ha. And Jason, yes. So they've been uploaded. They're going up one a day at the moment, so I don't inundate anyone. And Ju, this is um, New Zealand. Hello to South Africa. And if you do want information, I, I feel bad for the people who are here most days and him and regurgitate every day about my education when I started painting, who I am as a person. So I've written a very, very raw and truthful about me page. So if you'd like to know when I got my first clay set, who my inspiration comes from, who helped me, who moved me, who developed me, where I studied, how I studied, how I felt about studies. It's all on my About Me page. So if you go to sebastiangower.com or just use the link in the bio, you can read that. And I'll be honored if you read it because whatever you do, you might find that my own personal struggles, growth, loved ones, changes, the things that I went through, the things I'm going through, they might help you. I'm not sure what you do or how you do it. It doesn't have to be art. But art's pretty universally applicable. And the reason it's universally applicable is that, yeah, I do, Renique. So it's at um, it's sebastiangower.com, which is annoying because I sh it should be said Gower Art, but it's not. Um, I do paint full time, and the web, yeah, so sebastiangower.com. But the best thing to do, use the link in the bio. Save you typing. It's so much easier. Yeah. I think art's universally applicable because art's emotion, it's expression, it's a way of saying, I'm here, I exist. It's like a visual version of Descartes' I think, therefore I am. It's like, I create, therefore I am. And when you look at it through that lens as an expression, yeah, I think you can uh, quite easily liken it to a lot of things that we do in life because a lot of the journey we go through as human beings is a journey to wanting to be seen, to wanting to do something meaningful, or most importantly, in and of, us, in and of ourselves, express who we are authentically and honestly. And if someone on the face of this planet can see us, truly see us, before we uh, move on, then what more could you ask for? And so I think that's the pursuit of every artist. It's just that it's visual and it's more out there, but it doesn't mean everyone isn't doing that exact same thing. Start painting landscapes and not pop artish paintings. Look, there is nothing wrong with whatever you want to do. The subject is merely an anchor or a reference point to allow you to do what you want to do. The actual subject itself, largely irrelevant to the journey. So you know, you go to movies for example, you go watch, um, where is this place? Horrible My Review writing. I can't quite figure that one out. But 
This place is somewhere in Washington, a series of waterfalls. Here we are. We got this here, just quickly. Dun, 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 dun. There's no mistakes in that? Well, that'd be like saying there's no mistakes in life. And you'd be like, oh, but there is. We've made a few mistakes. And so I think the better way of putting it, it's like Bob Ross made mistakes, happy little mistakes. In that same vein, we could say, there are mistakes, but hopefully there's no regrets. Um, if you ever, if you never ended up as a full-time painter, look, I love art because I love people. And so you take that into context, you think, okay, well, if I couldn't do art, I'd do something still with people. Guidance counselor, teacher, probably a teacher. Something where I could help people, make people happy, connect with people authentically, in a real way, not just in a fake smoke and mirrors kind of way, but really actually help and know people. Hey, Sa Sashin, Sashin, Sashin 60 Sandy. Say that 10 times fast. Bet you can't. Well, you'd be typing it in so you'd be alright. Philosophy? Ah, uh, philosophy's pretty fun. I'd study it, but I don't think I'd want to teach it. I think I'd want to... Um, a curriculum for philosophy, you call on the same thoughts on repeat, and it's sort of fun to learn, spread your wings and move on, think differently. But I think you can definitely tell when you're a teacher, or you work in a high school, or you're a counsellor, you can see the meaningful impacts that you have on people's lives. I think that's moving. Art teacher. Probably an art teacher, to be honest. Put me in a high school art class. I'll do that. There we go. There we go. Little droplets of paint. One after the next. Thanks, Memorak. Appreciate you. You're a philosophy teacher. Wow. Learn something new every day. I didn't know that. Thanks, Ju. Well, you're welcome to join for as long as you can. And if you miss part of it, they're up on YouTube, which is fantastic. And then if you are in the wrong time zone, you'll be away. All these things are very fun. Oh, there we go. Just gonna keep dotting that paint around. Keep dotting it around. Building it up. Allowing it to exist. Have you been to rock bottom once? Rock bottom, you mean financially? You mean psychologically, mentally? With your friends or your parents? We're all at once. I think we've all had our ups and downs. And that's totally okay. That's where the pairings that we've made and the ones that we love come in and help us. Not help us in the way that uh, they take control, but help us in the way that they cheer us on or support us in who we want to be. Um, when you talk about recovery, I think actually you're always perfectly capable of doing that for yourself. And so that's why your loved ones won't step in, take the wheel, take control off you. They'll just remind you how much you've actually got it and how much you can sort it out. 
<laughs> Lion King style. Remember who you are. <laughs> Because for any challenge you're facing, however much you're struggling with it, there's a version of you, past or future, that would look at that challenge and make short work of it. And sometimes it's hard to see that at the time. And that's where people who care about you come into context. Because they'll remind you of that person. And I think that's important. Yeah, don't get used to it, Sharma. Next time I'll be leaping around like a monkey. Slapping on paint in all directions. But you gotta go with the mood, you know. At the moment, we're bathing waterfalls. And waterfalls are relaxing. And to be fair, I'm bouncing off the questions a little bit. Hey, speaking of Ash, do you like the little change I did there? I changed the uh, subscriber symbol. It's now a uh, baby blue heart and the tip of it's pink. I think that's really cool. It used to be just a gold star, but they notified me and said, hey, you can customize that emoji now. So it was between that star, I was looking at the honey pot, and then I was also looking at the uh, a little bird and a flower because they popped nicely. Well, Sharma, I'm not going anywhere for a long time. It's going to be here painting. There's so many little dabs I need to notice on this painting. So many little spots. There we go. Looks like modern Monet. If only Monet had access to Google and the millions upon millions of images that we now have. And if only he had access, literally, down at any store you go to, down at any warehouse stationery or painting store, access to 52 different pigments at the snap of his fingers. Imagine what he would have made. He would have seen less countrysides, hay bales, and you would have seen a whole lot more <laughs> of anything that caught his inspiration around the world. Man, he would have had a eclectic collection, which means a very varied and wild collection. Perfect. This is good to hear, Ash. We have hit the nail on the head. I like it. Yeah, I like surrealism. I like what Sal Little Dali stood for. Or the way he approached things. I liked his process more than I liked any result that he made. When you view his process, you think that's beautiful. I'm on board with that. And that, that is a great way to look at it because he's one of the most famous painters of all time. And so when you talk about one of the most famous painters of all time, mm -mm -mm, and you say, actually, I don't like the results he was coming out with, but I love how he went about getting them, that's when you're starting to understand what art's really about. Let me have a look-see here. Lizzie, you're on the move. See you later, Lizzie. I'll catch you later. Have I seen Van Gogh's relative paintings? Ooh. Have I seen Van Gogh's relative paintings? As in paintings of his relatives? I learned the other day something very interesting. I'd always role modeled, marveled at someone like Einstein. It turns out that Einstein doesn't exist. He was one of my heroes. I loved his photos, I loved his work. I loved his quotes. But it turns out he's just a theoretical physicist. Broke my heart. Here we go. Shame, does your back not hurt? 
It would hurt if I didn't keep the good posture up. You've got to stand straight when you paint. Keep your posture strong. Does a color pink mean happy? No, I don't think, well, it can make you feel happy. Your brain connects colors in ways that are unique to you. But uh, in terms of pink, it typically relaxes you, calms you, pacifies you, stops you from having violent tendencies and brings you more into a position of love. That's why they had a prison experiment where they painted the cells pink and the violence of the prison drastically fell because the color had the effect or suspected of having, was, a, was suspected of having the effect of pacifying the prisoners. No, 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 he's a theoretical physicist. Theoretical. How do you know when a painting like that is done? Because I'd probably think it was done. Okay, I recorded a video on this and I haven't posted it yet. But I'll tell you guys now because um, I put a lot of thought into this when a painting's done. And I think I was originally thinking it was fear that completed a painting. It was fear of losing what you'd made over being attracted to the, being attracted to the desire of seeing what it could become. And I realize now that that's incorrect. It's not fear. Fear doesn't come into it. It's not the response you have with the work. It's not, it's not the fear of losing it. It's attraction. And so a painting's finished when your attraction to what you've made is more powerful than the desire to see it change. That's when a painting's finished. And uh, I think all paintings go on a trajectory through that until you find yourself too attracted to what it is to see what it could become. Beauty, Venus, happy, prosperity. Great words. You get it now. <laughs> yeah, we got someone from Florida who's immediately used to ending up in arguments like that. So, hey, <laughs> Einstein's real. Don't start this with me. I'm liking your paintings. Don't, 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 don't. Don't make me turn on you. Yeah, no, theoretical physicist. So the joke in that is that a theoretical physicist is a physicist who thinks about things to figure out fundamental truths of the universe, but they can't actually create a black hole. So they have to theorize what might happen in a black hole. Now, after going through that process, you have to call them a theoretical physicist. And then, once you call them a theoretical physicist, if you say theoretical, that would mean, in theory only. And so, rather than saying he does theoretical physics, we're saying that he, the physicist, is theoretical. It's a very silly joke. It's a very silly joke. Don't turn on. I wouldn't dare. He's got crocodiles. Flora's covered in them. Don't pick a fight with someone who's got crocodiles. They can only... You're so lost right now. Victoria, you came in halfway through. Sorry. So, uh, I was saying that Einstein doesn't exist. He's a theoretical physicist. And then... The joke being that, uh, well, everything I just explained. So, it's good that we've gone through that process together. I'm glad we all now understand that not only does Einstein exist, but he was doing a lot of things in theory. Um, in fact, probably the most important part of his job was thinking about things in theory. And that's glad that you're at peace tonight. I'll try not to drop a plate, because if you're in a relaxed situation, that might be quite startling. I can't guarantee. There we go. All right. Got a nice little crew here at the moment. 55 people from 55 locations around the globe. 
just hanging out here. At 11.43, New Zealand time. Favourite singer. I like Kit Moore, country artist. I like what he does, I like what he sings about. He does country love songs, but he does it in a way that's hard not to like. Doesn't get too mushy with it. Gets more western cowboy with it. There we go. I'm going to be a mad philosopher. I'm not going to compete with an artist's creative professor. Well, I don't quite understand the comment, so in that vein, you were already halfway there. There we go. Thanks, Dance. Dance Academy smiley face. Good to have you here, Dance Academy. There we go. Little dabs of colour. All over the show. And then I'm going to grab a big old lump of yellow. I'm going to mix it into our blues. And it's going to give me a muddy green. Not the intense green that we'd be using. More of a chill one. Say hi to Italy. Is that like a, you were from Italy, so you want to be said hi to, or are you trying to stick up for Italy? Or is it just a power play? Don't get me wrong, all three are acceptable. I'd just love to know the angle. Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. This is that muddy green that I was after. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Naughty muddy green. That's what we're after. It's going to really get between these pastel pinks we've been adding and the intense green that we've already got. That's okay. That's what we're after. There we go. I always do wonder though, when will be enough? When will I stand back and look at it and think, wow, we're there. You never quite know. You never quite know. There we go. No, only Amazonia, again. Do not follow, but... That time on the painting, is it dawn? Loving that the magenta and pink doing this piece. Yeah. Yeah, pink's, pink's just right in this one. It's, uh, it seeps into the pastels, and then turns into pastel itself. It's a very nice touch. And this green is actually going to have a massive effect on it too. Get in there, mix with it, and make it just a little bit more fitting. Stand back and have a little look see here. Yeah, we're in a good place. What a wild painting. What a wild, wild painting. Keep going on it. There we go. How long have you been working on this piece? Well, I think we were up around the uh, six to eight hours. But I think we're anywhere between five and ten. I think that's our current escapade. That's where we're sitting. And. I honestly don't know from here. Thought I did. But as the paint keeps coming and don't stop coming, back to the color palette and you hit the ground running. Does it make sense not to paint for fun? Your brain gets smart and your head gets dumb. Probably five hours. That's what I'm trying to say. Just keep adding it up here. There we go. Beautiful. Hello from Italy. John, how you doing? Pleasure to have you here. Pleasure. To have someone who knows about good pizza and pasta. 
No one makes a red sauce like the Italians. I'm not just mean the best of the best red sauce, but a red sauce in general. Wherever you go, there's a minimum standard. And in New Zealand, how bad red sauce is bad. But in Italy, bad red sauce tends to be still pretty good. Hey Johnny, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Here we go. Let's bounce that through there. Let's bounce that over there. Yeah, that's a little bit. Keep that colour coming in here. Keep it cascading out of these hills. Slowly starting to capture more and more of these trees. Little bits at a time. I mean, when you're painting. Ooh, when I'm painting. Yes, indeed. There we go. So we come down here, again, a little bit of the waterfall. Trickles coming down these hills. There we go. Is it cold in New Zealand now? It's a little bit cold at the moment. It's a little bit. Not a whole lot. Cold enough to wear this jacket. Jacket, sweater. But we're not far off taking it off actually. Because as the day ticks by, this room does get progressively warmer as the sun smashes through those windows. There we go. That can dabble across there. And little bits of paint can fall over, all over the show. Paint gives way to green. Pastel blues, aquamarine blues falling back gently. And you've still got those deep crimson colours bouncing over the top. I don't think any colours fighting at the moment. I'm not trying to gain importance over the others. They're all just working together. As if they're trying to depict something together but no individual brush strokes quite sure what that is. They're not battling up close. They're just existing in, abu existing in abundance together. Ever thought of using a plate? Never thought of using a plate. Yeah, plate's good. See how it's got that grip there? You're not going to lose it. Very handy to hold on to. Have I ever held an exhibition? Seb Gow exhibition. One night only. Come on in. See his works. Meet him. Spoiler alert, he's very boring in person. Um, the gallery, never done it before. I haven't had enough work in one spot. I've been in exhibitions, but never an exclusive. This is Sid Gow exhibition. The artwork doesn't really last long enough to do that. I think it's better when I did do them, live sessions. Because then you can see a piece come to life and you can understand how it goes through that process. Is there anything I won't paint? No, I think I'll paint just about everything. But it has to be something. Here, say everything and then start putting down requirements. It has to be something that I believe is gonna make the world a better place. In a very small way even, but in a small way. You have to feel like what you're making is improving the overall grand picture. Not bringing more negativity into the world. There's enough of that. So, negative subject matter. If I thought it was gonna bring light to something negative, that'd be different. To create change, that'd be different. If it's just scary, for example, for the sake of being scary, I believe we would have missed a mark. Not just in the fact that we've painted something scary, but that we've missed an opportunity to make something uplifting and vitalizing. Uh, that depends, Heather. But it'll change drastically. Depending on what we're painting. 
where we're shipping to. Lots of little factors. The best thing to do, jump on the link in my bio, fill that out, tell me the size, show me the picture, tell me where it's going to. And I can come back to you with a quote and you can either say, that's way too cheap, well, that's way too expensive. It's funny, because when you talk about painting, it is something very, very emotional. And if it's emotional, some people value the emotions and some people don't. And it's probably 50-50 for me. 50% of people say that paintings are way too cheap. I don't charge enough. It's ridiculous. How are you even making a profit? Or things like this. And then the other 50% say it's way too expensive. How could you? Waste of time, I don't want it anymore. You know, it's always 50-50. And that's why you need to value the painting enough. Oh, good night, Joe. That's why you need to value painting enough so that you understand in your own mind, I value this painting as much as I'm willing to sell it for. So that if it doesn't sell or if I'm on the fence, I'd prefer to have the painting as much as I'd prefer to have the money. That's when the painting is in the right spot. That's when you're offering the right price. That's when it's charged. If you think, I really want this painting to sell, I don't want it as, you know, I want the money more than I want the painting, you're probably charging too much for it. Because um, you're hoping that someone's going to give you money and almost, you know, trick them into having the painting because you value the income more. But if you're in a stage where you think, actually, I want to hold this painting. I don't want to give it to you. I don't want to give, I don't want your money, that much money for it. At a certain point, you have to sell some paintings, but that desire to hold onto them means that you're painting from the right place and you're giving it the right attitude and feeling. This is good. Hello, Kwan. How you doing? Right, next color. All right. After this green, I'm probably going to go down a layer. One little layer down. Here we go. And this is going to come into these parts. There we go. Dancing around here. Ooh. Hey, Heather. How you doing? Welcome. Here we go. And Victoria. Thanks for sharing the live, you absolute champion. You know, it really warms my heart when someone shares the live. And the reason it warms my heart is that it's sort of like a uh, way of saying, hey, I like what he's saying, enough that I'm not just interested, but I'd like other people to hear it. And then you have to start thinking to yourself, um, jeepers, what was I saying? <laughs> Oh. oh, had to send it over to Cheryl. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Good to see you. This dark color here, this is what's going to make these peaks. All these little bits right up by the top. That little bit of gray. This ridge line with all these little nooks and crannies right up there by the warm sun bouncing over each other thanks Jay Bruce thanks Heather, appreciate you guys I can't quite understand that DOS times 5 but it's very exciting it's awful being in different time zones I think it's kind of fun I think it's a, a bit unique some people are joining 1 a.m. Some people 5 p.m. Some people the early hours of the morning and some people the late hours of the night. I like that. Middle of the day for me. I do need to chop and change the times though. Because that means that sometimes it's completely different. But sometimes we're all on that same boat. <laughs> and I like that. And thanks for a shell. 
Enrique, Ed Enrique, thanks for the share, appreciate you. Here we go. Docking around in this hillside here. Here we go. Hello from Indiana. Indiana. Good to have you here. Haven't seen Indiana pop up for a while. You finished the pale ginger cowboy? Uh, we have not finished any pale ginger cowboys. I wasn't aware we had a pale ginger cowboy. But now I'm interested in knowing which the pale ginger cowboy is. Is that the one over there? He's not quite done yet. Happy Taco Tuesday in your part of the world. I know, what a thrill. Nothing like a Taco Tuesday to get you going. Been a while since I've taken part in a Taco Tuesday, actually. I'm more of a cook a meal at home Tuesday kind of guy. Maybe I need to fix that. Maybe I need to start being a Taco Tuesday kind of guy. You're either on dinner time or bedtime for me. Well, that's kind of fun. There's a there's a ritual. Blah, 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 blah. There's a ritual in that, Victoria, and I like it. I reckon I've got an idea for the next painting as well. There we go. Where are we going to go next? Just over here. Happy Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Here we are. The left corner is my favorite. This part down here, or this part up here. I like it right in here. There is a ritual and I love it. I prefer bedtime ones though so I can relax and unwind. Yeah, two left, this left, that 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 left, or that left. Those are the questions. Mm. Right over here in this corner. Let's dabble. It's 5 p.m. here, about to start dinner. That's exciting here. What size is this painting? That's a good question. This painting is 36 inches by 48 inches. So it's pretty big. It's pretty big. But, it needs to be, so you can have areas of openness, areas of peace, all the things. It was too small, you'd constrict it, try too hard to fit in too much, and ultimately lose all the bits that you're going for. Hey Julio, what advice can you give us to achieve contrast in warm colours? Depends. Contrast in warm colours? Probably. With this painting, for example, it feels like there's warmth. But it also feels like there's contrast, probably, in that warmth. That's been mechanically achieved. So if we were to put it down to a mechanical reason, by the pastels beside the warm colours. The vermilions, and the Indian yellows being right beside pastel aquamarines and coral pastel colours. Now that's not to say that that is the only way to do it or the way it was intentionally done in this painting but that's a, uh, a way in which it's done here. Can I say hi Andre Question mark. Of course I can. What a thrilling opportunity it is to say such a thing. What an absolute game changer. 
Alright, let's go in there. Let's go in there. Devil down there. There we go. And then across here. Hello. Beautiful. A little bit's gonna be coming through here. Here we go. This one is neat as heck. Thanks, Kirsten. Kirsten Rambo. It's a bit of a unique one. It's, a, it's different from the usual flavour. I can get on board with any sport where people head out there to have a good time. Mm. Rock climbing's fun. Because um, it's equal parts climbing and then sitting down and talking with everyone um, and you can pick walls that match your skill level. Snowboarding's fun because it's so surreal it's in such a wacky location. Um, what else is fun? Uh, any team sports like rugby and soccer and things I didn't really have the coordination to be able to do a really good job of it and then in terms of that's what I will do. I get up off my bum. Get up off my bum. And grab this little seat here. Put this down here. How long have we been going for? It hasn't given me the uh, jet skis. I like jet skis. Jet skis are fun. Jet skis are fun. Um. <laughs> Oh, 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 there we go. Robson's out of here. Robson's just like... Sid looks like he's grabbing a seat for a moment. I'm done with Sid. Get off my screen, Sid. Fair enough. Um, right. Salut. Hello, Fred. So, let's take a quick little break. When you're doing lots of these little dots, or you're trying to match up all the colours in the picture and then putting the dots on here, it is mentally draining. So take a little breaks because you won't feel physically tired. You will after doing it for too long, but um, you won't feel physically tired, but mentally it gets you. And once it starts getting you, you start getting less accurate with you, where you're putting the dots. There's this temptation to do longer strokes because that'll help depict a lot more of that. But the reality of it is you need to keep spotting small pieces and adding that small piece. And the more outlandish your color palette is, the more you'll actually spot small little pockets where you think, that's the correct color, that's the correct color. So at the moment, in our wild, crazy picture right now, you'll notice these cascading waterfalls, they're in three tiers. Now, this area here needs some more love, and it's gonna be purple that goes in there. Purple's going to play a massive role in this, and I'm only seeing that now because we stopped for a moment to actually examine. So purple, and then up here, this sun-kissed hillside, this is fantastic. You get a feeling of something quite tumultuous. Tumultuous? Tumultuous. Which is, you know, turbulent, but not in a rough kind. Not too rough. Um, <laughs> ish. Anyway, up through here, and the dots of colour really gives that feeling of the sun kissing small pieces of it. So the small pieces it's kissing are those teeny tiny little trees one at a time getting hit with different colors and shades. And then the water, the longer strokes, these horizontal slashes. We want to do vertical ones wherever we can, but most of the strokes in this water are horizontal. So by, per by coincidence, that's where we sit. Mm. And then we'll just keep grabbing more colors. This colour, that colour, and another colour, and another colour. And see where that takes us. Oh my god. Seb, you're such a clever thinker. Got a little thing of coffee here. That's fun. It's in a thermos room too, so it stays hotter for longer. It's a good way to have it. Um, 
Do, 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 do. Oh, what shell? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's give this little one a go. There we are. All right. Whew. Ja adore chest top. Is that liking the top fruit? I really appreciate that if you like the top. Because this is a little, uh, this is a favourite one of mine. I'm not going to get any paint on it and be blah 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 blah. Going to be very careful, but uh, it is a favourite. I've got vermilion there, and I could add vermilion onto the picture, but it'll probably hold fire for now. When will you upgrade to 1080p? Is it not 1080p? What is it? Pink. Are we not on 1080p? I'm so sorry. Why didn't you tell me this, guys? Why did no one tell me these things? <laughs> huh. Uh, purple brings it all together really well. Fantastic. Yeah, purple's actually, that's correct, that's the next color we need to get onto. Um, that's a good point. Let me have a look see in here. But, I think it looks great. TikTok just kind of kills the quality of lives for some reason. Niggly. Niggly. So, okay. Ah, so sorry, didn't read the middle bit. So, okay, so the quality just gets pulled down the live a little bit, but we're doing the best quality that we can stream on. Um, mm. Yeah, a little bit of a sit down. We'll grab some of these uh, colors. Here we go. A little bit of this, purple here, purple here. Let's get four different shades of purple and really send it. It looks normal on YouTube though. Oh, so you're saying that it streams in slightly worse quality than YouTube has it on. Wild. Wild. Well, you guys. If anyone has any advice, we should have a, the camera should be high enough quality. We've, we've got like, the camera should do 60 frames at 1080 easily. So if we're not getting that, I'm doing something wrong. So, well TikTok just doesn't like me. Either one's okay, it's highly likely. Um, quality end as well, but not too bad, yeah. There we go. There we go, do cooking bits. Hmm. This is good. It is good to know that we have reasonable quality. All right. Okay. Same, I can see what I need to see. Um. There we go. Well, it is good when the condition's good because then you can actually, while well, I'm putting down these little spots, it's not just a blur, you can make out what's actually happening, so that's fun. That's what we want. Right. It's not like it's 240. Yeah, yeah, it should be 244. It should be a little higher than that. Hopefully. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that's not so great. Do, 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 do. Let's go into here. There we go. Well, let's have a look see here. 
Let's see, well, let's try this one. See how this goes for us. And it's the one. Oh. Your agency using WordPress. That sounds exciting. There we go. Imagine 60 people in the room with you. Um, sometimes it happens. Sometimes there are 60 people. I think the biggest live sets I've done have been to like, uh, like actual people in the flesh. Maybe 30 or 40. And honestly, once you go over the, uh, sort of three or four mark, it's really much of a muchness. You just have to do what you do. Let it come naturally. Relax, breathe, do your thing. I remember my first time, just to prove you have good camera quality, you got to do a zoom. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. I'll show you guys up close what this looks like. I'll just do a quick one, because I've got this painting getting ready to start. So if we come right in, this is what the painting looks like up close. You can see those colours dancing over each other. And then as we come back step by step, you see the whole thing. Now I'll take you up the top there just so you can see what that looks like just up here. These are the hills. Lots of colours. Now we come. Here we go. There we go. Right. For some reason the quality clears up when you zoom in on pieces. Do you think it was slightly fuzzy before? Maybe it had the autofocus on incorrectly. Who knows? Anyway, that's the... Uh, you can see so it's actually slightly different from the... Uh, usual style we do on this channel. And the reason it's different is like I talk about the vitality and going crazy on a piece and sending it to this place of primal, unbridled art. You know, authentic version of feeling. With this painting, it's a slow descent to chaos. It's relaxed. It holds your hand. It says, come with me. Come with me to somewhere abstract, somewhere surreal, somewhere different. Follow me. And uh, that's why all these dots though they're chaotic, when you're up close and you look at them, they have this serenity to them. So, it's not realism, but it does have peace and chaos. Didn't notice the pastel lavender colour. Yeah, big fan. Hey, oh, Larissa. Sorry, Lisa. You've been here for a while, Lisa. What a pleasure to have you. I'd like to know too, one thing I'd really enjoy while I'm painting, be almost meditative for me, to know where the phones are in the world and what's happening around them while we do this live. Some people are maybe in the kitchen, some people at work, maybe they're working and they've just got me sitting there slowly painting in the corner while they do work calls and concentrate on other things. Who knows? <laughs> Working while watching. See, Lisa, you're one of the ones I'm talking about. That it's just there, almost like a, uh, you know, I'm not insulting myself here, but almost like having a pet or a cat, you know, that comes across the desk and, you know, just is animated. It adds something unique and different to the environment, something unexpected, something surprising. Not a pre-recorded movie where you sort of know that it's a movie, you know. At least this is live, it's real, it's authentic. So when you're working at your laptop, there's something there with you. You're not going through your work day or your, God, you know, your life or your 24 hours, or your eight hours at work alone. You've got some weird, wacky Kiwi there. Trying to paint your nails. Be careful, I might drop a plate and the loud bang noise you might accidentally sweep off in the wrong direction. You're like, Seth, and of all the times for you to drop a plate, right then, really? Feels intentional. 
Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Here we go. Dancing, cascading. Find me supper, Tommy. I'll take it. I'll take the blame. I'll take all the responsibility. That's one of the thing that actually uh, had a huge impact on me from a young age. You go through a lot of life putting responsibility on things, people, and uh, a lot of it's not your responsibility, but a lot of it's your problem regardless. And so, one thing that had a drastic impact on me was when instead of saying, that's because of this, that's because of that, that's not my responsibility, I don't need that. Go in the complete opposite direction and saying, everything is your responsibility. Take everything. And once you take everything, your mind does something very interesting. It changes the way it normally reacts to things. Instead, it looks at all the things which you have put under the hood of your responsibility. Your fault. And it suddenly goes, I can fix that. I can fix that, that and that. Those are within my capability to change, to fix, to alter, to improve. And instead of sitting there and delegating baskets of saying, that was my problem, that was my responsibility, that's someone else's. That's not my fault, that's their problem to deal with. Allocating things in your own mind for things that may never get dealt with. You suddenly take responsibility for it all. And notice what you can and can't fix. It's relieving. You took off more things, engage with more things, smash out more tasks. And don't fret over things that you can't change. Your mind starts looking at things and tasks and quickly can ascertain that's something I can change. That's something I can improve. That's something I can fix. My mum's name is a weird question. My mum's name is Susie. Here we go. Purple hearts, what a pleasure. Here we go. Here we go. One episode that I like of, uh, if you've ever seen the TV series, who's seen the TV series Love Death Robots? It's going to be obvious what I'm going to bring up here. But in the uh, TV series, Love, Death, Robots, there's, I don't know which season it's in, but there's an episode called Zima Blue. It's about an artist, a robot, who then basically turns back into, started off as a pool cleaner, was turned into a fancier robot, became a world famous, universe famous artist, galaxy famous artist, I should say, and then returned to being a pool cleaner as its final work of art. But the philosophy behind it was fascinating, because it was a return to itself. It wasn't trying to become something lesser, but it realised it had lost itself in a pursuit for something so much more and that it was actually able to get closer to something real by figuring out who it was. I like that. Never heard of it? Do you also sketch? Hey LJ, how you doing? Good to have you here. Um, <clears throat> Love Death Robots, it's a series on Netflix. It's sort of sci-fi. Some of them can be a lot. Some of them can be quite fun. Depends what you're into. Um, yeah, and this particular one's called Zima Blue. 
It's only about 10 minutes long. It gets to the point quite fast. Go for gold, and when you watch it, let me know what you think. When I first watched it, I thought it was quite, um, uh, I thought it was quite depressing. Because the artist, in effect, goes back to nothing. But then that was us putting our predispositions of nothing onto the artist. And for the robot, he was saying, no, no, I didn't go back to nothing. I became what I was. Because my journey had always taken me away from who I was. And now, I've gone on the journey. I'm happy with how it's gone. I want to go back to being me. Hope to hear back from you soon. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Is that, uh, is that Instagram? Or is that, um, is that, 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 that? Where is that? So many platforms. Instagram, TikTok. All the places. I G. I've got you covered. I'm slowly catching up with Instagram. Slowly, step by step. I've um. But I did make a recent change. In that, we've got Discord going properly now. So, if you are a subscriber, and for some reason you haven't got access to the Discord. I'm not sure how you get it through uh, TikTok, but you can just hit me up for it and I'll sort you out with the Discord. And that's going to be quite fun because I get the notifications from Discord, which is fun. There we go. Step by step there. But look, I know I say it a lot, especially when I'm in a sort of meditative flow state, but um, it's true. Because we get so hung up, especially with painting, thinking, end result, end result, end result, end result, end result, end result. It's not about that. Step by step. Stroke by stroke. What are we doing now? And all you need to remember is first off, what you're doing now, and then the step that will follow. And then, once you're at that step, what are you doing now, and what step's going to follow? Bit by bit. Stroke by stroke, layer by layer, day by day. And it's only through that process, in all its individual little steps, that you can actually make a painting. Actually create something real. Not just something so transfixed off reaching a conclusion. I remember when I first jumped on TikTok Lives, I learned what uh, FYP was. I thought it was fight. I thought it was a word. I thought it was like sky, where you've got like no vowels in it, but you've got the Y at the end. I thought FYP was some word the uh, youth were using. Probably something similar to hype. I was like, okay, hype is H Y P E. So, fight, F Y P. They must have just dropped the E off the end, and the H wasn't cool, so we went for an F instead. Turns out it means for your page. It took me a while to learn that. Um, your voice has a familiar edge that reminds me of someone I used to know. Do you mean that uh, the song? Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Somebody! Maybe I remind you of that. I think they might have even been Australian. Who knows? I might have been Australian. Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah. I say youth. It's probably the wrong word. You're right, LJ. What I mean is people who are down with it. Down with the lingo. I'm not down with it, guys. I'm not cool. I'm the kind of guy that's early to a party. <laughs> Which ironically means I'm late to the party when it comes to trends and things like that. It's 
an okay place to be. No, 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 no. We get cool confused with confidence. Although confidence can be cool, doesn't mean cool. <laughs> I spent my life not being cool. And you know what? I've learned to own that. And once you learn to own that, people start mistaking it for cool. But make no mistake. You had to own your goofiness. Own your ridiculousness. Own your quirks. Own your style. In order to actually come away from it. And seem confident in something else. Confident in your dorkiness. I think I'm a dork. I think that's the best way to put it. Own your uniqueness. Thanks, Jow. Jow with a fantastic profile picture of a sunset coming in there with an absolute banger of a quote. What a pleasure, Jow. You're welcome here anytime. <clears throat> All right. Let's dabble with this. Little bits. Slowly bouncing over each other. The craft of a million little droplets. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. At the end of the day, mate, <clears throat> excuse me, was your quote, own your uniqueness. I feel like we need your profile picture, like on Instagram, has one of those posts with um, your, 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 your words on white on top of them. One of those inspirational posters. There we go. There we go. Docking it around. Sage advice. Let's give some sage advice. I would say. Doesn't sage unblock your nostrils? Isn't that what it's supposed to do? Or do you use it to get rid of uh, spirits in the house? I forget. I think it's for... S you wave sage. No, I've seen some memes on that. You wave sage. I'm on the in crowd here. False people boring you too much. Did you run off onto some other streams, did you? <laughs> Spirits in the house. Yeah, I got it. I got it. It's a cleanser. Right, I'm going. You have been a bad influence yet again keeping me up. Have a great day. Thanks, Sharma. Sorry for being a bad influence. Get some sleep. Hope you enjoyed your book. See you later. You burn sage to ward off evil spirits. Perfect. So I was on the right track. Good place to be. And guys, for such a chill stream with just a few people, it's pretty cool that we're almost at 20,000 likes. Because we haven't had the crowds of like 20 people, 30 people, sorry not 20, 30. We haven't had the crowds of like 200, 300 people here. We've had the uh, just wonderful group of like 50 to 70 people the whole time. And it's been really wholesome. Every, no one's been ignored. Well, we never ignore people, but you know, no one's been missed out. We're catching all the comments. Everyone's been wholesome. It's probably a sweater. And, uh, yeah. But we're getting likes in here. I reckon that's really fun. Small, small community, but a thriving one.
What's that quote? Thinking of the JFK speech when he's in Houston. I don't know why what I was saying just reminded me of that. It was probably because someone yesterday was saying that I reminded them of JFK. And I'm like, that's the first time I've ever heard that. Can you super like on here? It's called power tapping. You can't super like, Joe, but if you do want to shout me a coffee, we'll be a part of the uh, <clears throat> behind the scenes dialogue and get exclusive information and discounts. <laughs> Um, no, if you do want to be part of the subscribers, I'd love to have you, Joe. If only for your fantastic quotes that you spit out. But that's on, uh, that's on, I'm not sure how you do it. I know the feature's there somewhere. And if you sign up, it'll give you a Discord link. And it would be an honour to have you on the Discord. We're getting that Discord off the ground. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be special. It's going to be flying out in all directions. And uh, if anyone's a subscriber and you're not in the Discord yet, hit me up. Let's get you in the Discord. Let's get you going. It should give you an automatic invoice, invite when you subscribe, which is really cool because it means that I don't have to automate it. So I don't have to do anything. I can just yarn in the Discord and then subscribers just come and go. I love that. And we can make our own little community. Lower left hand corner of your screen, you'll see a star. I gotcha, I gotcha. It would be my first Discord. Do it, do it. Because I am only on Discord for one thing. And that is the, well, two things. One of them is for the moderators. I've got a moderator chat. And the other one is for subscribers to yarn because there's lots of stuff that goes on choosing images creating banners figuring out changes and deciding on commissions whether we'll take them whether we won't whether I'll uh, which image out of five is the most appropriate to paint what the best thing to paint next is going to be how to get back inspiration if it's lost all this sort of stuff it's all part of the quest, part of the journey. No, him feet the... Um, I mean, you, you've lost me with the last three comments, but that one really got me. Thanks, Flynn. Appreciate you. Take a picture of your painting every day and put it on a video. See the result. Um, I do do something quite similar to that. I like the style. I like where your head's at. It's a great way to look at it. What I do is I... Um, take a time lapse and then what I'm supposed to do I've been a little bit slack on it but I should upload the YouTube video and then take the time lapse and then attach a link to the time lapse in the, in the uh, sorry, attach a link to the YouTube video in the time lapse get out scud with the result of you be able to watch the time lapse, get interested and think, yeah, I'll watch the rest of that video, or be like, nah, that painting wasn't for me. You'll have the option, the choice, the power, the free will. There we go. Jow, absolutely fantastic to have you part of the team. First off, thank you for your support as well. You absolute legend. The subscriber team is better to have you on there. Better, better with you on there. Spendy. What's that mean? Is that like spendy is like spends money? I'm an op shop baby. I go to op shops for my clothes. I'm probably from my farming background more frugal. And now, Jow, you get that cute little pink blue, blue and pink star. Angel. I was so proud of you yesterday, Angel. And today, you're back on the caps. But I'm sure you'll figure it out. You'll find that caps lock button and you'll sort it out for me. I know you will. 
Thanks, Scott. Appreciate you. across in here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are we doing over here on these darker slopes? Good actually. Really good. Buy it and put a bit of that magenta, build it out a wee bit. There we go. Fantastic. Hello, Hector. How you doing? And Todd Jeffrey. Really appreciate that. Is it doing that thing again on TikTok where when you log into the uh, stream, it suddenly changes your text to capitals? That happens. Hmm. It will, and um, there's different gloss mediums in the paint. Some are transparent, some are glossy, some are satin, some are, some are matte. And so what that will mean is, depending on where the light's going in the room too, it'll pick up on different colors in different ways. So it's quite a cool piece in terms of a color investigation. We've lost a little bit of the waterfall in favor of representing the feeling and the wild colors in the picture. But the picture is definitely made mainly of wild color and wild feeling more than it is, hey, let's paint a pretty waterfall. Um, the pretty waterfall is the base, the anchor, the anchorage point, but it's not the fundamental only part of it, it's just part. It's the, it's the thing that allows us to do this wild job, not the crux of the investigation. You're gonna run to the store. You're all good, Victoria. I'll catch you later. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I'll see you next time. Or, if you come back later, I might be around later as well. So, I might catch you then. Paint some important events or a piece of a festival of every country. I like that idea, DJ Sam. You know what you should do? Is we do grab images every now and again from different places. Grab the image of make sure you've got the royalties like the, the, the copyright for it or you know it's your own image or it's a public use image and then post it up on the discord and if we've got leftover paint or if we need an extra one to slot in we can grab that image that you've got and see if it's the right match it's the right vibe if it's the right if it's the right inspiration we can grab that one run with it see what we can make i like that i like this it is a good trajectory. Right, next color. What's it gonna be? Probably we are turn this uh, purple into pastel by adding in some titanium white, just straight titanium white. Just a little bit of this to thin it out. There we go. See where this takes us. I'll chuck it, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, um, because we do go from commission to commission here, but you need these ones in between to use up the paint evenly and better, or simply to get you in the right headspace in between commissions to make sure you can give commissions the love they need to have. It's important. Pay, P. Pay, P. Good to have you here. Appreciate that, Pete. There we go. Dab these around here. You get that. That's good. <laughs> um, I'm going to say yes. That counts. You're golden. 
Scud, champion mate. I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks for popping in, by the way. Classroom. Well, I think classrooms are censored, aren't they? Because they're school rooms. Gotta look after. People in schools. There we go. I can't pronounce that name, but it's absolutely lovely to have you here. Mm. There we go. Just spread this out. Over here. Hey, thanks HH, I appreciate you. Some hand hearts, keep it going. It's an absolutely lovely gesture. Classroom equals class. Thank you for the maths equation there. That's a thrill. There we go. Spread this out down through here. Come right down low. So we've got more lavender shade coming in here. What happened to my Instagram? Should just be as per normal. But you have made me worried. So I will check. Instagram. Nothing has happened to my Instagram. It's exactly as it should be. You've made me panic. Instagram, Poloni, good. However, I've got no idea where you're coming from. But, um, yeah. You'd be worried, though, because I almost had my Instagram hacked um, a couple of months back. Someone, um, someone from Nigeria or somewhere, um, what they did was they managed to get right into it until just before. Um, yeah, you gotta stretch. You absolutely do. Um, with painting, straight up and down is a good place to have it, and then your posture too. I crane forward with my neck, so I put the painting slightly higher to keep my neck straighter. That's so, so important. So important, Jow. Um, and thanks, Nikki, appreciate you. And... What was that last part there? Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. We've been working on this one for about eight hours, I reckon. I reckon we'd safely call it eight. Safely call it eight. We're not quite ready for a smaller brush just yet. I don't think we will go to a smaller one. I think we'll keep dabbling with this size. See where it takes us. Thanks, Kimberly. Um... Beautiful piece you're working on. I wish more people could see how it's made. <laughs> I appreciate that. I think a lot of people do see it though. People share the stream. And on Instagram, a little more fun, wild and furious, but people see a lot of those as well. The goal here, always the internal goal, is just to spread some contagious love and vitality. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so they couldn't get fully into the account because there was two-factor on it, but it all got locked down because they somehow got the password, which is wild because it wasn't a uh, reused password. It was a auto automated, automated um, one that was generated from a password security system. So somehow they got in and... Because it's like a verified account, they locked it all down. And we're like, yo, sick. What do you want to do? And I'm like, this is news to me. What do I do? And they said, tell us some details. And I said, here's my details. And they said, perfect. Here's your account back. 
lock it down tighter. And I'm like, okay, I will. Do I sell prints? P, that is a great question. Yes, prints are available. Not for this one yet, because we're still working on it. But if you go onto the link in the bio, you'll find a bunch of details on prints. Um, there's about 10 up there at the moment. Um, and there's three sizes. So you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got, um, three of the A1s, limited edition, six of the A2s, also limited, and then limited on A3s and 4s, at 9 and 12 respectively. Thanks, uh, can't pronounce that, but at gmail.com, appreciate you sharing the live. Getting some love out there. G'day Jacob, it's going well. Is it possibly worth not using pre-made passwords? <laughs> I think that's what I was saying. The password was generated by a password security system. Um, no, 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 I got the account back. So, since it's a verified account, they're quite fast to actually help you um, secure it. So it's all goody. But yeah, have your two-factor turned on everything, guys. That's a good piece of advice. Because that's what saved the day here. Hmm. Yeah, but it's tough too. They're living tough lives in some places. And if you can get into someone's Instagram account and get a couple of bucks out of them. Probably a good bet. There we go. Long time. Long time. Um, if you want the full blurb though, P, the link in the bio, click on that and it'll take you through to an About Me page. And on the About Me page, it'll tell you all about my journey, where I studied, how I studied when I started painting and why I keep painting mm. there we go Sips ST <laughs> G'day Steve Good afternoon, how you doing Phil? Welcome Colors to accentuate the other ones. Can it all just be saturation? Sometimes you get the most pale. <laughs> we knocked Steve clean out. That's quite funny. There we go.
Here we are. All right, what's the next color going to be? We do need to accentuate some more blues. Are we going to do more blues? Were they already realized? Probably we'll dabble down into some of those softer, whiter colors. Silver? No. Gray? No. Definitely with white. Little Bear, welcome. And what can we spice into that? Probably just a tiny touch of turquoise, just a little bit. Just enough. There we go. A whole bunch of clear painting medium. This one's got some fun aspects to it. It's got some fun aspects to it. Uh, the color. The color is going to be mainly white, but the teeniest, tiniest bit of turquoise through it. Teeniest, tiniest bit. There we go. And that's going to help us. Get almost a baby blue shade. That's going to add those brilliant highlights to this waterfall. Really give it that flowing feeling. Get more of this paint in here. Less transparency, more paint. No way you painted Aku Aku from Crash Bandicoot. Love that game. <laughs> you bet you be. Um, and part of the reason why I painted it is because of your reaction right now. It's something that we recognize. And you don't feel like the art's trying to stop you from seeing something. You feel like the art's meeting you more on your level. <laughs> it's not finished just yet either. It's... Um, it's going through phases, but it's in a fun space right now. Hello, Jude. Good day, everyone, team, Jude. <laughs> We've got 166 members on the team. What a fun place to be. There we go. What's up, my guy, Jackson? I'm good, thank you. Nothing. What's up with you? What's up with you? Okay. Let's start that in there. There we go. I should be around tomorrow. I mean, we'll see how we get on, but uh, we should be. We should be. Hold on, I'm just going to do a little reconfiguration here. Do, 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 do. Go like this. Go like this to here. And coming back, guys, don't panic. I'm just moving around my reference photo to here. There we go. Bring that closer. Okay. Can I get this still? Probably. Sneak that in there. There we go. Perfect. Let me get this here. That's okay. And bring this to here. Three. Bring this out a bit. There we go. 
back and cut it there. Perfect. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's what we need to do. Sorry. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Thank you and good night. You're all good. Catch you much. Catch you later, Sharma. And what's the temperature? My screen doesn't have a temperature thermometer on it, but it's a little bit cold today. After I've done this baby blues, maybe I'll drop a layer. Maybe it will finally be time. There we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Sun kissed. Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Nell Francisco. Appreciate you. Ooh, belly rumble. Todd, how are we doing? Welcome. There we go. I'll be back, checking the Discord here. Go for gold, Joe. There's some posts there from this morning. And uh, I'll keep you posted. If anyone else wants to join the uh, Discord, if you're not on Discord, that's totally okay. You can get it for the sole purpose of talking. Been part of this art channel. <laughs> want a Discord? If you've been thinking, hmm, maybe I want to be a Discord person. Maybe that's me for the next couple of years. Be like, hey, my name's Joe. I'm a Discord guy now. And uh, it's there for you. Have I posted? Yeah. Yeah, I have. So now that I've got it back, First day of posting today. And I'll start giving you guys everything I can. Keep you in the loop. Keep you enjoying it. And if there's anything else you'd like to see on the Discord, what's the H M H M U? Hit me up. That's what it means, right? I'm hip. View. Oh, I've got you covered in jail. We can do view. I can do view. Pew, pew, pew. Here we go. Remember though, jail, the Discord's very fresh. So you've got a whole lot of history to go through there. Like, it is this morning. It's just begun. What would be quite cool though? Is if we got an audio channel going. We could talk. Quite fun. It's like bow. Bow. Bow bow bow. Now I'm following. I got you covered. There we go. Let's chuck this in here. Keep building it up. All right. <laughs> Over here on this far side.
His white's really making these hills pop. Thanks, Jay Smith. Appreciate that. It's in a really, really healthy space. Fast approaching. Blast of this layer. We'd have to raise a uh, compelling case. What another layer might add to it. This ridge here, it's a bit of a waterfall gathering. Beers are on me. Is that beers? Is in? Well, that's beers. I got you beers. That sounds like a bit of fun. <laughs> beers. I did have a big trip. Possibly in the pipeline. In recent history. But hellfire. Maybe in the next. Hopefully within the next year. We'll see. There we go. And we'll pause there on this one. Hello, Jenny. Pause here on this one. Let it dry. Let it sit and see if we want to keep adding layers. See if we want to keep adding layers. But like I say, sometimes it's quite fun where it is. We'll see. We'll see. Let's take down this one. And get ourselves kicked into the next one. one comes and in for the next one voila in it comes do that bring it all the way up up there maybe even higher there or 
I've got a wild idea team. Right, let's screw this part here. Or oh, is it, where is it? I've got just the thing. Just the thing. You hold your horses, team. We haven't used one of these for a long time. But now it's appropriate. So we slide that into there. This block, this game changer of a block, comes down here just like this. It slides up on here like this. There wasn't paint on it. It's got a little bit of paint there that's going to slow it down. I should have. What do I do with it though? See if, this, see if we can slide it past those blobs of paint. It's gone past the first one. Are you going to beat the second one or are you going to make me fight? Here we go. A little bit of gesso stopping it from going on. We'll sort that out. There we go. Off you come. On the other side too? Probably not. That should slide on now. Gotcha. Just. Just past the lumps. I'll we'll set that to there. There we go. Perfecto. Right. Now that that's on, we can lift this up to it if we like. This is why this is very handy. Now that we have that on there, we can grab a piece of art, put this one on here like this, just like that. Lift it up last a little bit. back. Once we've lifted up just a little bit further. There we go. Hello. It's all on. Stand strong. And all we're going to do now is just a little bit of a change. We're going to lift you up a wee bit. There we go. There, here we go go. Is that the right position? That is the right position. Bring in here right in on the cowboy shot. That's where we want you. Perfect. Alright. Now, let's get ourselves ready to start. What will be the first cover? Time lapse in a better position too, actually. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, Javi here. Thanks for sharing the live. I promise I'll paint something soon too. <laughs> okay, this painting wants the exact same attention that we gave to the uh, previous one, and that it wants to get some of that turquoise. And it wants to get some of that white and have that spread across its surface. Just in these parts, a little bit on these bags, but thick. It wants it thick. It can't have itself a nice thin transparent coat at the moment. We've done a few of those. We have that layering. Now we need those bold punches and a few little spots to accentuate the detail. That's the next step. That's what we're after. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate you. And Michael. Cowboys, Michael. That's where we're at. We're working on some cowboys. Now, where did I put that? There we go. That's where this is. Before I start tearing into it with this color, I'm going to come back in just a second. 
Give me a quick bathroom break and we are into it. It's exciting. Who missed me? Good to be back. <laughs> okay, I think we're a little bit close there, but we'll just come out a little bit there. I'll spin you there. Here we go. That should be the right position. Perfect spot. Okay, now, big blue. Big blue. A little bit of turquoise, a little bit of white. Stir them in together. Stir them. Then, yeah, I'm back, I'm back. I ran away on you, came back. Before I get started though, naughty me. You're always trying to get started and then you check your reference picture and then you realize you haven't got the correct reference up. You're looking at a picture of a waterfall. It ain't gonna work for you. Here we go. Bang. There we go, Greg, <laughs> you're saying you missed me. All right, that's what you're saying. In which case, I'm sorry, I'm back now. Okay, baby blue. Now we're still gonna use the edge of this larger brush. It's gonna be a very different style of paint stroke. So all the strokes don't have the synonymous feel. There'll be an area of intrigue between how each gesture was made. I like that. Is there a picture you're using as a guide? If so, can I see it? Of course you can, Michael. This is the picture we're working to. So you can see it there, one and two. One of them is the, this one here's the painting. This one here's the picture. I know you can tell, I'm just being silly. Um, but you'll see the color palette's almost correct. What we're doing now is we're building out different, uh, colors, shapes, details of the work. And, and really, really uh, embellishing them. The uh, point of the mountains, the intensity and the whiteness of the plateaus, these little bits, that's what comes next. There we go. At this point in time in the painting, we're not worried about the texture. If anything, we want to embellish these final coats with the texture. The wilderness of paint. Craziness that you can get from different textures and the way they'll flow over each other and catch the light differently. We want to get that now. That's what we want. There we go. There we go. A little bit more in there. <clears throat> There's a big one that comes across here like this. There we go. Wonderful. I thought you were doing a waterfall. Is that finished, D? Hello, D. Um, and we let the waterfall sit for a little bit, but it's closer to finished than it was at 9 a.m. this morning. But it's not finished yet. Not until we've actually framed it, photographed it, and 
and we say yes. That's where we want this picture to be. It has reached the point of completion. It's not quite there yet. And neither of these cowboys, these two wild cowboys, hanging out here in the sun, rooting, tooting, shooting. Let's have a look, see you guys. Whoop. Hmm. <laughs> You're golden. Do your thing. Paint, seems like painting a barn would fit your painting. Yeah, I can see that. Can see that. I like to see my style fitting into all sorts of different things though. You watch me paint cowboys, so you think he'd paint a good barn. But then you watch me paint the sea, and you'll think, man, he'll paint a good sea. Or you might see me painting different things and think that is awful. He is way out of his depth. You never quite know what someone else will like. There we go. Little dabs here. Am I not painting a barn? Maybe I should be. There wasn't a barn handy this morning when I picked up my paintbrush. If there was, we would. I'll tell you what, if there was a barn handy, that's exactly where I do want to be today. But there was not. Um, they are not, that is incorrect, they are a father and a son, in a western style fashion. I love the pastel sky, pastel sky is fun, it is fun. There's a relaxed feeling to it, it's not trying to. Making the whole painting relax in intense contrast around this area. Pastel Sky balances it. Big fan of the Pastel Sky. Big fan. There we go. This gun over here. Where did you go to college to learn to paint? Are you self taught? Ooh. I went to Massey University, Otago University, Otago Polytech. Where else did I go? Lots of places. Of all those places, I learned the peers that you surround yourself with change the most. Even with my style right now, it wasn't actually a university that developed it. But usually I show paintings in confidence to my buddies who have been through art school as well. Now, so what do you think of this? Or I'd show them to people who had nothing to do with painting. What do you think of this? And they'd say, nah. Or the lack of emotional 
change that would be elicited would be your answer. Sometimes your friends won't lie to you. Sorry, will lie to you. Just try to make you feel good. I love it. How does it actually make them feel? That's the question. Am I ginger? Let me look at the string. That's just regular brown hair. <laughs> We've had a few ginger comments today. There must be something in the water. Time to go live. I'm in London, so I'm guessing time zones are a lot different. You're in London, Pete. First off, that's pretty exciting. Good to have you here from London. And uh, typically, though, it's a nine to five thing. Well, sometime between nine and five, depending on what's happening on any, on any given day. But I usually try and tee it up for about mm, sort of ten till two. But the world's wild, Pete. Some days I'll tell you, this time, my hair looks very red today. Thanks, Flexi. <laughs> Some days you'll say, you'll be there at this time. And all sorts of wild cards will come up and change the plan. Other days you'll be there earlier than expected. It's really hard to know. But I have been thinking about deviating from a regular time and just making it a little bit more random with the intentions of allowing more people to actually catch streams in different parts of the world. I've read it. I'm just trying to be engaged with the live. Oh shit. <laughs> What's that there? I missed that. All right. Let's get this up here. A little bit of this. We're on grey now. Grey's going to have an enormous impact on some of these popping areas. There's going to be a lot of saturation in them currently. And we're going to replace some of those popping colours for something with a little bit more... A little bit more... What I say? Plain? Not plain. Neutral. Here we go. Bonjour, hello, Avicos. Welcome. Here we go. more of this grey. Just dabbling it over. Helping build out these colours. You like when we take you outside to paint? I like that too. The wind's been crazy, guys. It's crazy at the moment outside. So, today, we're avoiding everything from blowing away. But I do agree. There's something special about doing a craft out in the elements. 
really leans into the actual chaos of uh, painting by allowing the elements to take control of whatever the artwork could become. I like that. Yeah, I agree, Michael. I agree. There we go. Little bits. My imagination takes me to where you are. I've been sitting on my couch in the USA, but I'm there with you. That's exciting. That's exciting. painting little drops of grey onto the roof of a shed. So if that helps your imagination flow wild, let it go. You just paint on canvases. It'd be amazing to see you paint a pair of custom trainers. Paint some shoes up. That'd be pretty fun. I'd paint some shoes, Pete. Painted a surfboard once. We definitely would do that again. You can see me as a cowboy, like a Toby Keith song. Should have been a cowboy. Should have learned to rope and rise. Wearing my set shooter, riding my pony on a cattle drive. What a tune. All right, little boys. Here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's stand back and have a little look-see. Yep, good spot. We're going to move into a light grey, just a touch of pink through it. That's the next step. Ooh, the last bit of coffee's got some granules in it. Nothing like some coffee granules in the morning. Kick packs a kick. There we go. Let's grab this grey. Devil with a few of these areas. Again, still using that corner of the brush. Corner of the brush. That's what's carrying the team at the moment. And these greys, as they get added, you'll see the rest of the painting. Those other intense yellows, intense reds. Everything will start to pop off the page. Symphony of Chaos. There we go, a little bit up there. I've got professional bull rider friends. I can get them to let you ride a bull if you want. 
Jeepers, what an offer. Who are your friends? Are they... Anyone famous? Luke Schneider? Don't you dare say Jamie Mooney. It's Jamie Mooney, I'll get on the plane right now. I'll go ride some bulls with Jamie Mooney. <laughs> I'm gonna ride some bulls with Solano Elvis. I'd also say yes to Luke Schneider. You're more than welcome, Steve. I'm glad you're enjoying watching it coming together. Cornish boy. Cornish boy? Ah, I'm the corn I'm the Cornish boy. Actually I'm not. Deep distant ancestors from Cornwall. But probably too far down the line. Unless someone's gonna give me some inheritance from Cornwall. I'm not sure I'm that Cornish. <laughs> hey Sam, how you doing? Welcome back in. Right, let's tippy tops there. There we go. Scooping out over here. Scooping out over here. Alright. I'm gonna go next. There. And these money bags. Sam, thanks for sharing the live. You absolute champion. I appreciate that. Building up those layers. Stand back and have a little, little look see. Cool, cool, cool. We need something a little bit darker. But still with that, a uh, little bit darker, but with flavor in it. So we're gonna add some blue into this gray and a little bit of Mars black. So Mars black and blue. Blue to make it that sort of steely color. And Mars black to send it into a darker area. Here we go. Give me that dark Mars black. There we go. Even more. Let's get some more of that. one for a client? Yes it is. It is. So this one will never be available. But um, if you do want your own one, you can jump on the link in the bio. Select commission an original. And from there, you and I can make our own bacon together. It can be a cowboy theme. Doesn't have to be. Can be whichever theme your inspiration charges in. Here we go. Keep spicing this up around the painting. 
a little bit around there. This is that darker colour. Really good definition in some of these areas. There we go. Thanks, Jay Smith. Answering any questions? Thanks, May. This is a fun one. This is Cowboys. Not just Cowboys, though. It's a father and a son. So weird. Getting that Western style in there. All that Western goodness. But also, a feeling of family. So it's a combination of both those elements to make this painting special. Starting to build its context. And then down here, same story. There we are. How long did it take you to paint this? Jeepers. I'm not sure how long we've spent on it now. Lose track. I know we've got I think this won't be the end of it. This will be my guess is the second to last layer. There'll be one more after this. Hello Denny, I'm doing good. And May, as long as you're having fun, you don't need to worry about a single thing to do with that. Painting's got very little to do with what gets created. Everything to do with how much you enjoy yourself while you're making it. Details dabbing in there. Those faces get a few little itch marks there if the darker lines in them. And then we cut back into them, probably with salmon, to cover up a few of those darker areas. Push back those features into the correct place. What acrylic paints do you use? In Broadway Steve, thanks Broadway Steve. Uh, acrylic paints do I use? What watercolor paints do you recommend? Watercolor paints? I think there's a world of options out there for you. And honestly, I recommend experimenting. I reckon whatever your local art store sells, it's a great place to start. And don't settle. Don't settle. 
you'll try some things and you'll be like, hmm, it's tacky, it's sticky, it's uh, not colourful enough, it's this and it's that. Typically, a great way to start is by buying the most expensive paint, just a tube, and buying the cheapest paint, just a tube. And then what you can do, hey Mason, and then what you can do is compare them both to each other, how they mix and how they work. And you may find, you may find, you'd be like immediately, ah, I see. That's why this one costs more. It dries like this, it has this kind of effect, it works like this, it's, it's this, it's that. And then you'll be able to understand why certain paints cost more than others and make good buying decisions going forward. There we go. Hello, Paul. Mason, what do I do for my signature? The signature, what I would attribute as being the most irrelevant part of the painting. Because it's like a, a need to market, a need to own it. I feel like every brush stroke of the painting is its own little acknowledgement of I was here. And then you throw a signature on it to almost confirm to yourself, this all belongs to me uh, more. It was my fingerprints. I think a distinctive style carries with it those fingerprints so clearly that you don't need to write it down in the corner. I'd prefer to sign the back of a painting. But in terms of the signature, I just go SBG, Sebastian Ben Gower, done. Yes, B, G. Happy days. All right, let's stand back and have a little look see at this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I need a little bit of a new plate, but I need to get some lime green, some green, splice it into a little bit of blue, splice it into a whole bunch of white, and we're away. The easel, no, nah, just from an art store. It's a portable one, so it packs up small, so it's handy to travel with. But it's not the be-all, end-all easel. There we go. Thanks, Mountain Sky, I appreciate you. There we go, here we go. Right, now, the color I am after is so specific. It really is, though. We need this exact color and nothing else. It's like a kappa green. Kappa green, that's all we're after. There we go. All right, where are you? Not Tedaverde today. I want sap green. Permanent sap green. A little bit of this. And then get that kappa green out of it. A little bit of titanium white. Then I'll use a bit of turquoise, maybe, to splice, but mainly this candium yellow medium. It's going to be the combination. Then I will eat the last little bit out of my clear painting medium bottle, and we'll be away. Thanks, Batgirl. Appreciate you. Um, 17 degrees. Do you feel cold? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'm not used to the cozy feeling of this jumper at the moment though, so I've been leaning into that. But, um... Oh, that's right. Inspiration. Inspiration. Where do I get inspiration from? I get inspiration from... I've been here before, you'll know that I changed the word inspiration to motivation. I get, ins I get motivation from... 
people everywhere who feel something from art, the people I can connect, the people I can connect with through art, the um, the feeling I get from making art, the feeling of colours and uh, feeling of colours in liquid form and a paintbrush dragging through those colours and the sensation you get from actually creating something from nothing and watching it come together and being as much of a person on the person on that process, you know, a uh, uh, crew member on that journey as you are the captain with the journey moving. And when you get too hung up on being too in control of the process, you lose it. And so you're just as much, you're just as much of a crew member as the people watching you paint, hoping that, hoping upon hoping that what you're creating is going to head in the right direction and become something that you're going to love and believe in. So that's what I do. Hello Santiago, welcome back. Good to have you here. Here we go. A little bit of that. Now the key of this kaffir lime isn't actually in the uh, green and white combination. It actually comes from the tiny touch of yellow that we add to it. Let's get that lime green touch. And put it through these scars. In the scars for love, love. This isn't a new painting. We've been working on this one for a while. Slowly bring it together. Slowly bring it together. It's not far off completion though. It's not far off. Not there yet. Not there yet, but not far off. Hello Justin. Justin, it has been a hot minute since you've stumbled across this stream. Where have you been? What's been going on with life? Why did you abandon me? Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Life gets busy. Come meet our new friends. We've got P here. Santiago. You moved to Florida. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, thanks Pete, by the way. There we go. Top just died. No, you just stuck with me. All right. Sorry, Santiago. What did I ask you? It's gone out of my mind. One moment it's there, the next moment it's gone. There we go. Gun there. Barrel. And we have this gun. Perfect. Looking good there, thank you. Yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good sweater. But no, I'm glad it hasn't got any paint on it yet because I love this sweater. You know, this was the sweater I first went live in. On the very first stream ever. It was in Christchurch. And I put this little sweater on. It's about 2 a.m. in the morning. And I was just painting out there. In a shed, actually. And. Oh, I was halfway through the story before, and I was out in the shed, painting, it was on Reddit at the time. And anyway, I looked back at the screen at one point, 
I've been ignoring it. I looked back at the screen. And there were 25,000 people watching. That was a lot. Especially for your first stream. <laughs> anyway, it was just because on Reddit, things would trend. When it trended, they'd just go from power to power. And so, I was so nervous, shaken. I went silent, didn't know what to do. And yeah, it would happen every now and again, make me panic. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Oh, thanks, Darko. Appreciate you. How much would that good for? How much would that good for? Well, it chops and it changes. Depends where in the world you are. Shipping and things like that. And then the other thing to factor in, framing. All sorts of things. Sometimes the image too. The, com the, uh, the complexity of an image Or well, sometimes a lack of complexity can have a huge impact on what it gets priced at. What's the weather like in New Zealand? The weather in New Zealand is really mild at the moment, but uh, it has been. Um, It has been very windy, so there's an inability to actually paint outside without losing everything at the moment. <laughs> so we're doing that. Um, celebrity sweater. I wish. Well, do I wish? No, I'm pretty happy actually. There we go. There we go. Thanks, Jude. Appreciate you. Dabble with that through there. We call them sweaters, jumpers, polar fleeces. All these names work for Kiwis, we're not too fussy. Not for Kiwis in the way that they're before. Us as Kiwis, but. Uh, Four Kiwis in the way that we don't mind. I think we've got a big melting pot of cultures too, so we're constantly stuck in the middle of uh, four or five different terms in any given time. Here we go, leave it across here into this colour. In the sky. In the sky full of love. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Then on these mountains, just a wee bit. Alright. 
Where else are we going to go with it? Just down in here. Fantastic. There we go. Popping white paint. Alright, we stop for a second. Stop for a second. Tilt that to there. Bring that to there. Put that down there. Grab this here. Drop this down here. Alright. And this can finally come off. The celebrity jumper has been removed from the picture. What a tutsy. Okay. Ooh. We're making good ground. Next step. The next step. Let's wipe down this brush for starters. It's enough of that green. And thanks, Jay Smith. He's right. Um, all the socials you need are in the bio. So, whichever socials you're after, or if you've got, um, you want to leave a message, or if you want to connect for a commission, or if you want prints, it's all there in the bio. All via one fancy little link, which I reckon is pretty cool. All right. Thanks, Kendall. Hope you get more in love with the painting, too. That's the big one. That's the big one. Here we go. Let's put that down there. It's going to grab a fresh bottle. And a fresh rag. Because the other one's getting a little bit too painted. That's all we're after. How many paint pellets have you got going right now? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. But um, they don't last forever. You've got paint pellets for, um, they start to dry quite fast. So I swap from paint pellet to paint pellet. Um, and now I think the next dabble we're going to have is with Dabble with Vermilion. Here we go. Is this the correct color? Let's find out. Let's find out. Yeah, this is the correct color. This is what we're after. The correct pigment. Take a little bit of this down here. A little more to help it run. Get a little bit of medium yellow to build into towards the end of it and we're away. Hey Robert, how we doing? We'll get to those two. We're about another uh, few minutes of finishing this layer inside this work and um, all those darker shades, vermilions lime greens and baby blues so after this layer is done the next stage will be those two paintings which are more just wild cards they're sort of all over the show um i like the farmer i like the farmer a lot and we're going to start what i said pixelating that was a term someone used yesterday which was pretty fun um but we're going to start just uh Putting that one together. We'll probably go to Farmer next, I reckon. Let's see. There we go, bring you in there. How's that? Exactly where you need to be. Perfect. Right. It's like, mm, a little bit loose. That's fine. Right. Ah, <laughs> cheapest clever. And San Diego, California. 
Good to have you here. Have I ever done exhibits in the States? There are paintings in the States, but they're not visible um, because they're in private homes, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a pity, especially if you are trying to see the works. Um, but maybe one day, we'll do a custom exhibition. Maybe. There we go. Okay, popping vermilion. There we go. Cool. Thanks, Call the Year. Appreciate you. There we go. down here, crouching here, there, here, there, everywhere. <laughs> New York City, yeah, one day. There's about, there's actually enough in New York City. If everyone came forward with their work, and agreed to put it on display. There'd be enough in private houses to do like maybe, ah, you got a small gallery, there'd be like 10 pictures, maybe 15. So, that should be pretty fun. Here we go. Colorado, I have. Beautiful place. Smoky Mountains. Not the Smoky Mountains, sorry, the um, Rocky Mountains. Beautiful. Absolutely breathtaking. And weed's legal in Colorado. <laughs> That's a funny one. Perfect. Rocky Mountains are spectacular. Alright, where are we going next? Just up through here. Standing on back. Good, good, good. There we go. And now we're going to grab some of that. 
some white straight into there before we try and spread it a little bit of this. Um, what's the most patties I've worked on at the same time? Um, like actively tried to finish or just had on the go? Because on the go is about mm, 10 or so right now. But um, in terms of actively trying to finish, like working on, about 15. 15. And that's a lot. That's a lot to try and all bring to fruition because you're trying to have an emotional connection with everyone you're working on. And so when you're doing 15, a lot of tabs you gotta keep open. But um, at the moment, ones that actually need to be finished, four. Which is a nice place to be. Thanks, Nikki. Appreciate you. And hello from Dallas, Texas. Welcome. Quilindo. Thanks, Mazia. Amo sabor de arte. No hablo español. La sienta. Por favor, English. <laughs> Do you sell your paintings? Fair warning. Yes, um, this one's not for sale. This one is a commission. It has a home. At the moment, the originals are all gone. So, when there are more available, they'll be up on the website. But at the moment, there's a series of prints, limited edition prints. So there's only a few of each of them too. Some people love prints. I like these prints. They last for 500 years, which is pretty cool. They have perfect in quality. Also very cool. And you can get them framed. So you can buy it. Not need to worry about getting a job. She said, I love artwork, fantastic. Studio's beautiful paintings, all right. Thanks, Santiago. A resident Spanish translator. I love the one you did the elephants and the bull rider, but I like all of your paintings. Thanks, Broadway Steve. The bull rider is in uh, just south of Auckland, I think. That's where his final home ended up. So the guy, it's with, a, it's with an ex bull rider called Clint, actually. And uh, the elephants. Zambezi River is literally in Zimbabwe, uh, not in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, which is pretty fun. Here we are. 
Portugita said you were one of the best who I was experiencing. Alright, that's lovely. And Master Rich, thanks Richie Rich. Just putting it together. Putting it together. There we go. And now I need to grab just some deep green. Why do it with my cloth? There we go. Deep, deep green. The deep green, hey KU channel, I haven't seen that name before. Welcome. The deep greens and coming here. Just cut in a few little points. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. I think this is our shade here. Yes, it is. There we go. And then we want our blacks, carbon blacks. Here we go. And then we want our a little bit of transparency medium. There we go. Have a little look from a distance. So we're gonna be doing some of the areas of black that stick out and some of the areas of black that actually, sorry, areas of light that need to be cut in a little bit. Just a little bit of a touch of it. Here we go. Mainly green, but the carbon black allows the color to go slightly darker. Here we go. Here we are. It's going to cut in there like that. There we go. And then here. Perfect. And then up here. Stroking through here beside the gun. Down the side of the gun. Very top of it. Then encroaching along here. In the hat. Out to that side. On top there. Top there, this hat here. Encroaches down there. There we go. Singlet. And sleeve. Pole. Pole. Coming over here. A little bit in there. Coming down here. A little bit there. And down here, a little more there, and between these buckets, a little more there. There we go, giving attention to these darker areas. Embellishing a wee bit. Embellishing. Start to see these areas being framed just a wee bit more. Sorry, I missed a few comments there. Get back to them in just a second. Here we are. Do you think painting idea at night time? Do you think painting idea at night time? Free night time? I'm not quite understanding that, but sometimes painting works at night. And my favourite singer, I said Kit Moore yesterday, so we'll change it today. Let's give it to. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> She's got a unique husky voice. Pain sequin. Okay, yeah, good, good. Oh, 
Perfect. A little bit of these touches up in the sky here. mountains and over the side too. And a touch here. Mr. Spot, my favourite singer is Bob Ross. Does Bob Ross sing, does he? Alright, let's. Oh, no, hold on. Let's see a part. Straight away. Coming on back, coming on back. A little bit here. Coming on back. Let's reach up right there, we'll do some more. Right there. Right there. Right there. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's my favorite thing about New Zealand? That's really, thanks Mike B, appreciate you. Um, my favorite thing about New Zealand is probably coffee and the fact that there's no nothing here that can hurt you. So it's all just innocent. There's um, no rattlesnakes, no, no nothing. No, nothing. I like it. Safe place. It's a safe place. We do great coffee. Right. Just want a little bit more in there too, actually. Let me just have a look. See up here. dry and look for those blacks through it, just touches, and then salmons and finish I reckon. Salmons, yeah, salmons first, salmon, salmon's next, and we'll see where that takes us, but yeah, it's in a good spot, but it does need some last little spots of salmon. I don't want to do it with the blacks on it though, because with the black on it, um, the salmon will mix immediately and nullify both the colours. Go let the black settle, salmon, golden. A little bit of these phases here, a little bit across this ridge on the back of the horse there. This part all seems a bit finished. In here, these two barrels, salmon, salmon, yeah. All these barrels, the ridge line there, the two phases in the back of the horse. Once the salmon goes in there, oh, I'm a little bit through here, then we'll be close. We'll be getting close. So that's exciting. Right, let's have a look-see here. Let's let this one settle. 
let this one settle. We'll come back to it shortly. Here we go. Down it goes. And let's bring up our wildcat. Our big messy work. So now you've seen a wild one, but quite a clean one. You know, we're working on those cowboys bit by bit, but we're not actually riding around paint like a wild man. This one would be pretty, pretty wild. And so now we're going to start trying to relegate this one back to a place of sensical. Uh, sorry, back to a place of sensical. No, I'm not that. We're going to keep seeing this one more and more wild. See if we can't. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jay, mate. Appreciate you. And Larissa, hello. All right. Man, this one's in a wild place. We're just going to lean into it. Are we going to keep using that same brush, though? I don't think so. I think that brush is done its dash. So, I'm going to swap on to the next brush. And we're going to swap on to a new medium, which is going to be this one here. <laughs> hey, Max. All right. If I didn't say it, J-Mac, thanks for the head and mustache. Appreciate you. All right, let's chuck this on here. It's probably too much, but that's okay. It's probably too much, but that's okay. A little bit of this here. There we go. What else do we need? This one here. There we go. This one here. There's three colors to start with. We're not done there. <laughs> Where is the falls? Were you here at the start of the day, Max? We've done a fair bit on the falls, so we've put the falls to the side for a bit. And now we're doing this man. Problem is, that brush is the one that I want. The other one that I want, hoo, 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 honey. The other one that I want. There we go. Give it a good wipe off. Wow, the paint by number is really. <laughs> Cheers, Broadway Steve. Thought you need a little humor tonight. That's nice. That's nice. All right, that's ready to go. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. A little bit of coupe. Ah, all the things. All right, you crazy, crazy farmer. Paint by numbers out the window. Paint by chaos has begun. Let's go. Okay. Oh, posture first and foremost. Do not slouch, Sebastian. Stand strong. There we go. Through here. Have you got a favourite piece? I don't. Probably out of this collection would be between. These two aren't further enough along yet, um, but it'd be between Farmers and Waterfall. That's only because they're close to the end, so I've got more time invested in them. Doesn't mean they're necessarily better. Once you start talking in terms of better, you're talking more of, you're talking more aggressively in terms of what you think a painting should be. You're getting probably too caught up on the uh, end result. More than anything. Let me just spin that to there. I'm just gonna, there we go, perfect. And actually if we go, if we do that, I might have to go and zoom in just a touch more. Put it there like that. There we go. Um, there is a Twitter. Ooh, I mean, we need to cut up a little bit. Otherwise, it'll cut my head out. There we go. There is a Twitter. The Twitter is 
um, via the link in the bio. So, let me just grab that off there. Put that there where it's out of the glare. There we go. There we go. Yes, there's a Twitter. Probably not the way you want a Twitter, but Twitter in the terms of that it's a uh, place where I post wholesome art quotes and short videos. Which I reckon is fantastic. Hello Tina, thank you so much. Thanks for passing by. Thanks for passing by. Devil that through there. I think we can actually swap this brush. I'm going to go guess. It's not quite, it's got a little bit dry on the brushes, so that one there is just scratching a bit. So let me just swap it onto a freshie. Give me a moment. I was saying on the uh, Discord today, I said to everyone that before I went live, I was going to wash my brushes, and I didn't. So I just quickly, quickly ran off and washed two brushes. <laughs> so I'm gone. Um, and Tina, yo, well that's fantastic. I'm glad you stopped by too. So everyone's happy. Um, <laughs> cheers Broadway Steve. And this is going to be this one next. Perfect. Perfect. Now, let's get this colour here. Okay. There we go. Where are we going to go next? We're going to go into here. that Let's get that one around here little bits teeny tiny little strokes one after another Go. 
I'm off to sleep. <laughs> Cheers, Pete. I absolutely will. Go get some sleep. Thanks for joining in. And I will see you possibly next time. All the best. In London. Whatever time it is in London. Bye. Just pop this around here. And all the way down. Down here in his face. Ha! <laughs> Cheers, Walden. And Kevin, thanks for sharing the life. There we go. Splashing it around. This is our vermilion. We're really doing a lot of work with it. Because this one here got a lot of yellow. So to make that yellow fit in, get that warmth into the picture, we complement it with the vermilion. That's the plan. That is the plan. There we go. Around these hands. Down through here. Combining into the greys a little bit. It's like a steely orange, almost like a faded salmon. Just a fun color to play with. Thanks, Cody. Appreciate you. Just dancing around with it. Oh, broke my forehead a little bit. Think we'll get this picture here. Grab this pole here. Oh, not that one. Retract it. And then bring it over to here. Can I move it? Oh, almost. Almost got it. But not quite. Tighten that one up there. Can I move it in between? I can. Just loosen off that one. Bring this one up. Tighten that one up. Bring it to there. Take that one off there. Put this one. Hello, Angel. How you doing? Good to have you here. Appreciate you. Um, let me see here. Here, 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 here. There's our picture. Good to go. Back to our steely orange. Keep splashing around. There we go. Jump off for a bit as I'm hopefully I don't miss too much. You won't. See you later, Ash. Look after yourself. On the side of the painting. Oh no. Sometimes it crops it weird too, I think. I'll tell you, I'll bring it back to there. How's that? Now you've got the full shot. 
I think depending on the phone too, sometimes it crops it weird. And uh, when it crops it like that, you can lose bits. So, watch out for that funky cropping. There we go. A million dots. A million per million. There we go. Devil with these through here. I know you've told us before, but what age did you start painting, Steve? Long time ago. Man, I must have been... Two? <laughs> young Tekka, so... Way back yonder. I think we get so caught up on wondering when someone started painting, how they were educated, that we lose track of actually... I think the work you're doing right now why and how? Thanks, crazy uncle. Here we go. Check that on there. Bounce that around there. And chuck this around in all these little spots. Standing up. More grey. Here we go. Mix that in there. Thanks, Pete. Now. We're going to get this in through the bed here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. go. A little bit up into the sky here. Keep bouncing it around. All right. And this painting's going through some stages. Just really want to see where we can take it. I did get paint on this shirt, but not today. That came from another day. But I've made a mess of this shirt. I have. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now I look like the guy in the photo. <laughs> You absolute champion, crazy uncle. That's a really, really nice thing to do. Glad you're enjoying looking at this farm we're coming together. <laughs> there we go. Let's keep chucking the paint on. There's Paddington Bear. Just about, actually. Slice and dice, baby. Alright, on to our tan. This is going to amalgamate the um, yellows and vermilions. Well, it's more of a leathery 
bright leathery colour. So it's really gonna accentuate that jacket, but we'll just spot check it. Spot check where we want the paint to go. It's similar to the waterfall one, but this one has a bit more husk to it. Hello Vicky, how are we doing? Um, when I say a bit more husk to it, I mean this paint itself. It has it um, the way I'm applying it is a little bit more lashy, inconsistent, imperfect. And so the actual result will have more of a husky farmer's feel over that serene landscape feel. There's an old movie based in the 1800s called Wind and Willows that granted that the granddad, that, I don't know the, uh, oh yeah, no, I do know that movie. Looks like this guy. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And thanks, crazy uncle. That's a lovely little hat. Just keep loading me up with hats, mate. Keep a hat on my head. <laughs> That's very nice. But it's got also, so who have we got right now? We've got, who's the person? Can I say your name? La fleur cotière of the vif. As close as I can get. Honest attempts. Hey Jamma, thank you so much for sharing the live. You absolute legend. There we go. How do you know when you're done with a style of painting? Ah, I was saying this at the start of the live. You know when you're done, when you're more attached to what you've made, then you have desire to see what it could become. I'll repeat that. You're done when you're more attached to what you've made then you desire to see what it can become. Uh, Zadri Zanul, links are in the bio. Everything you need. Everything you need. Well, maybe not everything you need. But if what you need is wholesome, fun, lovely art, and a good attitude, and a pick me up each day, then yeah, everything you need is in the bio. There we go. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate you. Did I get close? Last week? Yeah, too bad. <laughs> or am I getting further away? All right. Let's have a little looksy here. The cry face makes me think I got further away. I'm trying to sell my paintings. Do you sell yours? I do sell my paintings. Um, now, I think. Sometimes when it comes to selling paintings, it's different solutions for everyone. Different solutions for everyone, but you have to ask yourself first and foremost, why are you trying to sell the painting? Sounds like a silly question. Ask it. You ask yourself why you're trying to sell the painting because if it's to actually, sometimes, I mean, if you're wealthy, for example, you're trying to sell a painting to feel um, gratified that you are a painter. You want to sell paintings because painters sell paintings and that makes you a painter, it makes you feel good. Or you want to sell paintings because you want to make money from the paintings to survive. Is it because you want the gratification of being a painter? Do you need the money to survive? Or do you just want to sell paintings because that's what painters do? Because you can still be a painter and not sell paintings. Good example, Van Gogh. Van Gogh didn't make any money selling paintings. Marvel's Graffiti, thanks crazy uncle. Um, do you ever do Queen Elizabeth when Shakespeare... Did you ever do Queen Elizabeth the first era where Shakespeare was around? Uh, no, I haven't done that yet. But sorry, um, going back to what I was saying there, Van Gogh, who is the most famous artist in the whole world, didn't sell a whole lot of paintings. And he's one of the greatest artists of all time. Was Van Gogh an artist? Yes. Did he sell art? No. So, are you trying to be? In, are you trying to sell art? Because if you're trying to just sell art, that was something that Van Gogh was never very good at. So you can be an artist like that. <laughs> Thanks, crazy young girl. I appreciate that. Um, but. If you think actually, I want to pursue art, 
Uh, that's what I want to be doing. I want to be painting. Painting's my dream. Doing artwork and making art pictures and sharing it with the world is what I want to do. To do that, you still don't need to sell paintings. You can get a job um, and have that on the side. Actually, for a long time, I worked 30 hours on painting and I had a full-time job of about 40, 45 hours that I did during the day and I was painting in the middle of the night. Um, and I loved it. And it was great because there was no stress on my craft. I was able to paint for others when they can't, perfect. You want to create for others when they can't, fantastic. So I had the full-time job that I was doing during the day and then I was doing the painting at night because the painting was something entirely for me. And it was so much for me that I actually had the uh, canvases that once I finished them, I'd paint over them in white. What I made would be gone the next morning. I'd paint it in white, just like 50 First Dates, if you've seen that movie. I was rollering the painting away and I was painting again because it had nothing to do with the end result. I was just trying to make paintings for me. I didn't want to see what the result was. I wanted to get so lost in the process and the creation of it. That's what I wanted. It was actually, <laughs> it was actually because people started grabbing artwork out of my, I can't, <laughs> cheers Leo. Um, how do you choose your subjects? I'll get on that in just a second. Um, I'll just answer the question by Vicky there. Um, so the best quote you can take away from that and what really will help you understand art and how you want to pursue it is an artist never makes art to make money. An artist makes money in order to make art. Now, when you look at it like that, you don't need, for like, and I say that you don't need to actually sell the art to make the money. Make the art in the most authentic, real way that you want to make it. And if that means you need a side hustle to actually fund the art, then that's fine. Because last time I checked, Van Gogh made his art by working full-time jobs as, art deal as an art dealer and things like that. No one was giving Van Gogh millions of dollars for a painting. He did the paintings because that's what he loved. And you need to actually have that philosophy towards your art. Otherwise, the whole process will be unsatisfying. And you might get there through craft alone, making pretty pictures. And you'll be like, look, I'm an artist, I'm selling art, but grr, I hate what I make. <laughs> the process is grueling and it breaks me over the period of time. Like, ooh, do it the way you want to do it for the reasons you want to do it. Look, if it comes to the stage where you throw aside your, your side hustle and art becomes your only thing, fantastic. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was to do the art and you were doing that either way. Um, delayed response because I was thinking, that's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry, delayed response because I was thinking of his name. Claude Monet didn't get famous until after. Monet's another great example. Monet's another great example. Do it the way you want to do it. For the written, like, Monet and Van Gogh are my two favorite artists of all time. They both had, had other careers while they were alive, but they did those other careers because they had art and they did art. Like, Van Gogh and uh, Monet could have both painted pretty pictures that would have sold the farmer's market at the time, whatever, in whatever context at the time. And they opted, they said, no. I want to do art like this, I want to capture feelings and expression like this, and I will not, uh, what's the word, uh, I will not compromise. And that's why they're the greatest of all time, because they did that, and we can do that too. So, sorry, going back to subject matter. Subject matter is important. Super important. Possibly one of the most important things. Um, I choose subject matter first off. I love subjects I can imbue with vitality with joy, with vibrancy, with colour. I'd never do a black and white subject. Well, when I do do a black and white subject, I embellish it with colour, like Alexander the Great, or uh, Lincoln, or Beethoven. Um, sometimes it's fun to send all these hues off in all directions. Um, a lot of these, are, apart from this one, there's a couple here that aren't, but a lot of them are commissions, so I'll be given a subject by someone else and we'll bring that to life. Now the reason why I'll choose these pictures around them is I'll look at the commissions we've got and I'll be like, right, to keep a fully encompassed style so I don't get caught in landscapes and think differently or caught in portraits and think differently. What rounds that off? Okay, we need a water picture, we need a farmer picture, we need a 
a horse picture, we need a abstract picture, we need things that get in between what the commissions are so there's a the whole spectrum covered. Otherwise my thought process will become linear, it'll get narrow, we can't allow that to happen. So I'm usually looking at what I've got to work with and going, here's the extra puzzle pieces, that completes the picture. Right, and then on down. Bada bing bum boom. I do love my paintings and I get a hard time. There you go. You have a hard time letting them go. Then don't sell them. Get a job that you can work at. What's the good thing is you can get a job that works with your lifestyle. Um, sometimes that's something like a, uh, sometimes if you can work as a plumber or a sparky or a builder or even a um, jeepers. If you can get a home job working from a desk, that's quite cool. Or something that gets you moving around in between the painting. Whatever works. Cheers, crazy uncle. I appreciate that. Meteor shower and galaxies is my favourite. I love space. Um, I'm 30, by the way. So I turned 30 in January 12th. So I'm closer to 31 now. It's wild. Wild world out there. But if you don't want to sell your paintings, get yourself a different job and make your paintings just for you. And it's okay to keep them. I actually had a great aunt or uncle. Um, great aunt and uncle who used to do that. And that's why we still own all their paintings. Because they didn't sell them, they kept them. And they're just a couple of uh, pictures of portraits and flowers and things like this. And they're absolutely lovely. Cheers, Jay Smith. Um, and so if you can afford to, keep your paintings. So then your next generation, your kids, your grandkids, can look at it and go, that's what great, great, my great, great auntie did. That's what my great, great grandfather did. You can do it like that. It's okay to do it like that. Don't get caught up in the dogma that real artists sell art. <laughs> Point that person who says that outrageous statement in the direction of Monet and Van Gogh. <laughs> how, how dare we think something so outrageous? Um, yeah. You're allowed to be an artist and not sell your art. As long as you, innately, internally, are pursuing your art for the right reasons, and you know those reasons, or you're trying to find out those reasons, then you're okay. Whoa, that's a fun one. That's a fun one. I'm watching the animation on that. Wow! I like your style. I like your style. Crazy gay uncle, you're an absolute legend. You've made it possible for me to have a coffee after the stream. I appreciate you. Jay Delpa, your subscription is about to run out and I love you to bits for subscribing in the first place. You absolute legend. I appreciate you to the ends of this planet. Um, that being said, Jay, do you have access to the Discord? Because I need to get you access. Unless you're like, yo, subscribing ain't for me. Seb's had enough out of me. I'm done with that Seb guy. I'm going to go watch a different streamer who does skateboarding instead. It's like, don't break up with me for a cool sports kid. It'd be like, high school all over again. <laughs> please, please choose the painter. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, Jay, if you haven't got access to the Discord, let me know, because even if you're only around for a little bit longer, it'd be cool if you had it. We're doing the Discord now, guys. I'm a Discord guy. I'm going to be posting there about what's going on, all the things that don't go on Instagram, TikTok, and these lives. Because the lives are stationary camera, but I can do the Discords everywhere. Sports kids are overrated. You should never choose it. <laughs> yeah, tell tell 18 year old said that. He needed to hear that. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, guys, everything's all good. Just be you. Just be you. Don't get hung up on what anyone else is doing. Because no one can do you like you. But the moment you start looking at someone else, you end up getting yourself tilted. You end up looking behind you and running slower because you're concentrating on what someone else is doing. Don't do that to yourself. Put racing flaps on. And when I say put racing flaps on, the race is to your own happiness. So put racing flaps on your happiness and be like, hey, 
I bet other people are doing some great things. I believe in those other people and I wish them the very best. But for me, racing flaps. That's what makes me happy. It's in that direction and I won't settle. That's what you gotta do. You were a chorus and drama kit, did cheerleading for a while, but it wasn't for you. That's fun. Crazy A Uncle, welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. It is absolutely lovely to have you on board. And we are one step closer to our little subscriber goal. I'm hoping to reach 30, guys. That's the milestone. 30 subscribers. 30 people who join us on these giant escapades, on these lives, to slowly develop these paintings one layer at a time. And to jump behind the scenes with me as I wake up and moan how my coffee's not great. Or that I'm not feeling it today. Or that I'm feeling it way too much. Or that, you know what? I need to go for a walk. Or complaining about breakfast. This is the life of an artist, these little things. These little things. For most of history and language, paintings were considered a mess. Ah, hmm. Most painters were male, but that's because back in the old days, ah, hmm. I think there's a lot more to that picture. Um, and possibly, actually, you're best to go back to the Sistine Chapel. And you'll say, around that period, um, when you're looking at the Sistine Chapel, and you'll be like, painters must have been revered as gods. No. No, actually, was it? Jeez, I'm having a, I'm having a uh, brain fog moment. It's Michelangelo at the Sistine Chapel. Sebastian Gower, how dare you forget that? Art history major as well. Boar, my teacher would kill me. Um, Sistine Chapel, Michael, is, is it Michelangelo? Someone, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. Um, yes, Jay. I need to send uh, the same meeting uh, invite as before will work. Otherwise, if that doesn't work for you, hit me up on any platform. Let's start our yarn and let's make a plan because I'm very excited about that. I'm very, very excited. Um, so, let's just say Michelangelo. Please don't quote me on it if I'm wrong. I'm having a really bad brain fog moment. Um, anyway, the Sistine Chapel, he said to the priest, I'll only do the whole roof of your church. I'll only do it if you say that I was gifted by God to do it. I want you to tell everyone that I was empowered by God to do such a good job painting the Sistine Chapel. That's what I want. And the Pope, the guy in charge of the church, the Pope, was like, yep, sweet, I'll do that. You paint my church. And, I mean, I'm, again, please bear with me, I'm paraphrasing like a madman. Thanks, Vernon, you absolute champion. Um, and so he did it, and he was one of the first painters who was like, no, no, I have been embellished by God to make paintings. And everyone's like, he's been embellished by God. And so, away you went. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean for a second. Prior to that, painters were more like labourers. Painters were labourers in terms of, you know, they were just uh, making the same craft over and over again. There wasn't creativity in it as much as there was, do it like this, learn this way, do it this way, and then move on. And that's why people like the uh, Impressionists, like Van Gogh, like these other people, had a bit of a struggle because they came in there and said, I don't want to do it the way it's always been done. I want to be a wee bit silly. And everyone said, no, we don't like that. And actually, he had to die for what he loved. He had to do it his way and only his way. And only once he was in the grave and beyond did anyone even go, you know what? That Van Gogh guy's all good, eh? <laughs> So that's a tough gig, but um, for example, when you look back at those times, painters as labourers, remember the, thanks Julia, thanks for sharing the live, um, remember the old saying, costs an arm and a leg, costs an arm and a leg. The reason why this is an important saying, the reason why this is an important saying, is that back when you'd commission paintings to get made, you'd pay for the amount of limbs in the shop. If I stood like this, you've got two arms and two legs to paint. Now who's seen pictures in museums where they stand like this? 
Well, what have I got now? One arm and one leg. Oh, that's cheaper. That's cheaper, isn't it? So when you say it costs an arm and a leg, they're saying you've gone from one arm, one leg, the richest people would stand like this, cost an arm and a leg. There you go. So it doesn't fit for all paintings, but you will find in some paintings there will be this uh, difference where they'll stand side, side on to uh, save moolah. I'll save the money. You've got to save that money. That's what they do. And like there are other things that would affect painters too. Colours were expensive. Purple in some parts of the world has been so expensive that painters would have to take a deposit for royals, which is not okay. They'd have to take a deposit though to be able to buy the purple in order to make the painting. Now that is wild. That is an expensive colour. No one goes up to a royal and says, well I'm not going to... Uh, you're going to have to pay a deposit before I start your painting. You start that painting. <laughs> but when you say, I don't actually have the money to start it, it's very different. you got to do that. Isn't that why the famous Napoleon painting had his hand tucked in his coat? I can either confirm or deny. But I can say that... Um, I can say that... It's definitely an interesting way of observing that painting if you were to look at it. Because cost an arm and a leg, that is where it came from. Um, I did go to a museum. I was, talking, I was talking to a lady. And we went to a museum together. And I was quoting that saying. And then the museum's artwork did not apply to that saying. So I looked silly. But that's okay. The point there, the point, is that most of the time, that saying applies. <laughs> yes, and had a period yellow. Hmm. Can't quite follow that. There we go. Embellish this. And if I... There we go. Dabbling with this colour around. Spots. Has your art a process changed since you started TikTok? Um, yes. Yes, it has. I pick mediums that don't run as much because I keep the work much more vertical. I um, use less fumy paints since I'm painting for long term and sometimes indoors as well, like now. I don't want to get gassed out and uh, affect my frontal lobe. Um, I um, occasionally choose subject matter, like Aku Aku there, the Crash Bandicoot shot, where I can actually do something that as you scroll past, you're like, oh, I recognize that, to really show that art's not about gatekeeping, everyone's welcome to be a part of it. So that happens too. Um, and I... Um, oh, I get to see the picture close up, a lot, sorry, further away, because when I look at the uh, recording that happens on TikTok, I can see it as a small little box, so as I look at the screen to read the comments, and that keeps calibrating me and going, okay, here's where the overall picture's at in any given stage, and then I go back into the depths of it, and then back to the zoom out, and then back into the depths, and then back to the zoom out, and I do this backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards, and it helps the end result a little bit. But apart from that, it's about it. Final Fantasy inspired painter things would look amazing. That would be pretty fun. That would be pretty fun. The skills, technique, that's in all the right places. Thanks, Bish. Bish to gaff about you. I'm not, I'm not saying that right, but thank you very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yeah, dab this paint around. There we go. Husky painting. There we go. There we go. All right. What's the next color? What's it gonna be? Let me have a look. See in here. 
Let me have a look and see. Colbat Hue Blue, yes, yeah, what it's going to be. Here we go. Thanks, Pilot Pete. Appreciate you. Um, also, guys, if you do like any of the pictures I'm doing here, these ones aren't available as prints yet, obviously, because we're still painting them. But if you see previous ones that you like, um, a few of them have already sold out. Sorry, but um, yeah, sometimes that happens, guys. They sell out. And when they sell out, there won't be any more prints. So there's a couple of each size. There's the small ones, A4s, A3s, A2s, A1s. The biggest one's about this big. And they go half, 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 to get about the small. Um, they can come framed or not framed. Um, and they are available by the link in the bio. But if that's your gig, go for gold. I would love for you to own one. Um, if that's not your gig, that's totally okay. But um, to get prints, yeah, thanks, Jay. That's where to find them. Um, and these will be available as prints too. So I try to make sure there's one of each kind of print in there. Um, oh, and if you want a discount on prints, I forget these things. Um, there's a discount code which will get posted in the Discord chat. So if you're a subscriber on TikTok, you get exclusive pricing. So exclusive pricing, I will post a code each month in the TikTok chat that you, the beautiful people who support me and make part of this possible, have access to. Hello Sally, how you doing? Um, so yeah. So if you're looking at buying a print, you actually save cash by subscribing, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. But I want to do something special for subscribers because I was like, what can I do to like stick up for the people who've like got my back? What can I do? So, and the other thing I was going to do too, I've been talking with some tech guys about it, is releasing some NFTs just for subscribers. Sounds pretty cool to me. I got the idea when I saw that Twitter would allow you to have an NFT profile picture. Pretty funny. Um, oh, Dylan, I look at the chat, and then I look at you, and then I look at this picture, and then I look at the chat, and I look at you, and then I look at the reference picture, and back at the main picture. All over the show, Dylan. Gotta keep darting my eyes around. Don't get time to settle. Are your paintings in pesto? That is the right word, crazy guy uncle. That is the correct word to use. So, um, the paintings are not in pesto. They are slightly textured though, but not enough to say in pesto. In pesto is when you really elevate texture to accentuate different parts. Now the whole thing is textured, but not for the impasto effect, just across the board. Um, so, you, 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 you can appreciate texture, but you could talk about the effects of a pasta or not, I suppose. But I think you'd be better say, you'd be better placed by saying it's just a. Uh, are you talking about the art style itself? Because it's the art style itself. You're better placed to say that is post impressionism. Call me a little. Uh, I mean, if you were to review me quite aggressively, you could say, um, you could say, he's just a little 2023 Monet. That'd be pretty rough. I feel like I'm got a little bit of a different tact, but you could say that. Okay. But I don't like saying that certain artists inspire artists or create certain artists because what it does is it sort of puts you in a box. First off, makes it hard to move your style because it's in a sort of locked down box. And second off, it also, thanks Joe, it also, bada bing bum boom, stops, it makes everyone see your work through a particular lens. And I think it's fun to see every work by artists. I understand the artist, but as an individual, 
to someone living in the 1800s compared to now, there'd be two very different people. And yes, there'd be correlations in the way they use a paintbrush, but not in the way they think. Um, not beyond, not reviewing. I'm not that um, arrogant, lol. Not reviewing. I forget. Did I say something stupid? I'm sorry. If it was something mean, I swear to God I was misunderstood. If it was something cheesy or corny, you understood me. That's how I behave. I apologise. I'm colorblind. I absolutely love your work. I can see most of your color choices. Oh, that's fun, Joe. Is that your grandpa? No, it's not. It is not. But um, I've been to his house before. Lovely guy. And I've shorn sheep for his uh, son-in-law. Oh, no, son, sorry. And I've shucked oysters for him when I was a younger fella. Thanks, Caroline. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun color palette. It's sickled, sure. There we go. No, no, you said if you were reviewing me, just saying I wasn't, I'm not, I, oh, I gotcha. I gotcha, yeah. So sorry, when I said, re when I mean reviewing me, what I'm meaning is um, if you were critiquing me, if you were uh, like a, if you were doing like an art history degree or an art theory paper, and you were like, Sid Gowrat, where does he fit into this? You could both be very sweet or very, very brutal. <laughs> um, but you gotta realize that no matter how, what perspective you take, you can really go from any angle you want. And so, when you read art historians' work, don't take what they say as gospel. Most art historian works, bar some, bar some bigger key movements, a lot of the time, they can be a little bit like opinion pieces. But like that's what that's a you know what that is a very very wholesome opinion. Bertie, I could do. Jump on the link in the bio, fill out a commission form. Maybe we do it. Um, in terms of saying that's awesome, it sounds like a simple statement, but it's actually it's not. It's you saying there's a visual medium that Nardis has produced, and I like it. Its job was to induce feeling, or to invoke feeling in someone, and I feel something. The artist has succeeded in making me feel something. Powerful. Simple. Done. Fantastic. Its job was to make you feel something. You felt something. Oh, it's powerful. It's so simply effective. <laughs> You're laughing, but it's true, right? Do you go to an art gallery sometimes? And walk around and be like, um, you want to go to the pub? Like, or like, you don't really connect with what's there. This is okay. It's not your job to connect with the art. It's the art's job to connect with you. And so many people go into an art gallery and they're like, you just don't understand what you're looking at. That's your problem, man. You're looking at this art, but you've really got to read into it and know all about it before you can appreciate it. No. That is a fault of the artwork. The, if, the, if, if the actual artwork itself can't speak to you in a way that you think, wow, that's quite special, then the artist has missed a trick. Because we can do that, we can make the art look in certain ways and not gatekeep. Like, something that's so hard to understand that you need to read 500 pages of literature to know why it's important, it may not be that great. That's what I reckon. We do collect art and I know what I like. No, no, you, you are a critic. You are a critic, because you know exactly what you like. You're the most powerful critic out there. You look at it, you make an emotional decision, and you choose it. This is exactly what art's all about. And so many people are so terrified to trust their taste that the most worst, terrifying situation comes out. They listen to someone else's opinion about what they should like. And that's like, oh, that's like being told, you should be into this sort of a person. Or, here's... Here's what your taste in a partner should be. You know, we know what you like better than you do, so here's what you should accept. 
ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Let yourself actually form your own opinions, your own tastes, and love what you love. That's the healthiest way to pursue art. And then when you unapologetically say, this is what I like, that's why I purchased it, and it brings me joy or vitality or happiness or pleasure every single day, just a little bit when I see it, come into my home, it might be the same for you, if it doesn't, it does it for me, so it's meaningful to me, perfect. No one can take that away from you, that's how you feel, and you found a product that induces a positive feeling. This is good. That's what my husband says and hates. You make an emotion. <laughs> yeah, so definitely that same philosophy can get caught up with uh, uh, when you say making emotional decisions. But in terms of buying an emotional product, if you're not making an emotional decision about an emotional product, what, what are you doing? <laughs> so what? You're going to listen to someone else's emotions to tell you what to like? Like when you say it out loud, it already sounds bad, right? So, in terms of purchasing, purchasing emotional products, thanks, crazy uncle. Appreciate the galaxy. Um, in terms of um, purchasing something from an emotional standpoint, the best thing you can do to get the right artwork is get more emotional. Really think about it. What do I care about? Who do I want to be? And what art, um, a great way to do it is if you don't understand art that much and you're not sure what you should like, but that looks cool and that looks okay, but you just don't know, figure out about the artist. Figure out about the artist. Figure out them first. Who are they? What do they do? Who are they as a person? What journey have they been on? Where are they going? Once you understand who they are and where they're going, you think, okay, I like that vision. I like who they are. Let's see what they're making. Not only do I like what it was before, I really, now I understand the backstory, I'm even more into it. Perfect. You found your artist, but um, a lot of the time you might like some art and then learn about the artist and be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Cheers, JB. Uh, if anyone didn't notice, someone just gave you a galaxy. Yeah, I think I saw that one before. Thanks, Henry, um, for pointing that out. I think. What I love most about your art is it has always made me happy, the colors. Yeah, so one thing I want to do with my art as a core value of me is I want to bring more happiness into the world. I want it to give you vitality and happiness. Think of that feeling you get when you have your first sip of coffee in the morning and it picks you up a little bit and it gets you ready for your day. If you're not a coffee drinker, maybe you do a walk, maybe you see a sunrise. Whatever it is for you, glass of water, that feeling when you supercharge yourself and get prepared to start your day. Okay, now get like an eighth of the strength of that coffee. An eighth, just a little bit of that feeling, 10%. And imagine I can give you that every day when you see the painting. Just a little kick, just a little, just a little jump start to get you into your day. And if it, ha if it has that effect every day for 20 years, this is potent, this is, this is worth pursuing. Worth me creating. Michael, all the best, 1130, I so get it. Um, and uh, what emotes to steal your earlier phrase? Um, the subjects, what it emotes. Yeah, so subjects, I'll use the subjects as manipulation to try and, to try and even uh, pursue that agenda of making happiness happen. Michael, Love you to bits, mate. You have yourself a good sleep. And thank you so much for joining in. You've been here for like well over an hour, so appreciate you. And I hope you liked what we did. It's been quite a spotty day, actually. We've been doing lots of spots. Don't know why that's the case. It'd be interesting to see psychologically why I did that. Um, and thanks, Sapphire. I'm just assuming Sapphire. Um, okay, people sit in, sorry, people sit in battles on here doing nothing and hit rankings yet in battles? What's a battle? What's a ranking? <laughs> oh no, I missed a trick here. Are people doing battles and rankings? Why doesn't no one tell me about these fun features? I don't think I do any good in a battle though. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, it's a game on TikTok. I don't think we're... Uh, 
I don't think we're about that life, but I'm excited that life exists, if that makes sense. I'm glad someone's out there battling, but uh, in a wholesome way. But uh, I don't think this is going to become a battle channel anytime soon. I think, uh, but I think live streaming is fantastic. And the reason I think live streaming is fantastic is there's the ability to actually connect with people in a real way live. You can't fake live. You see someone's actual feelings and actual emotions immediately. With, with, you capture things in their reactions and the way they talk and the way they think straight away. There's no lies, no camera angles, no, no, like, no sudden changes in cinematography backwards and forwards and fancy music and... I mean, it could be if I could afford copyright. Um, <laughs> um, but there's none of that stuff. It's all... It's all very, I like how it's raw, because that's what the painting we do here is, it's raw. Um, so how far out, how far out are your commissions? How far out? They're usually about 20, 20 days wait time, but they sometimes extend out further. I usually say 20 day wait time on starting them. Um, and then once we're running with them, we're running through to conclusion. So... The easel there looks as if the subject has a... <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um, or unless you mean the value of commissions, it depends, crazy gay uncle. Depends whether it's a commission in New Zealand. It depends whether it's a commission in um, America because there's the, uh, the, 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 the shipping. So a lot of the work goes to America. And uh, it depends what the subject is. Because sometimes the commission won't quite fit what we're trying to do here. So these things come into it. <laughs> here we go. But the best thing to do is leap on the link in the bio and select uh, buy an original and you can tell me the size you're after where in the world you are and you can attach a picture or what your inspiration is etc and then from there I can come back to it and be like this project will be this much to land a picture framed box on your doorstep how do you feel and you might be like, fantastic, let's go. Or you might be like, absolutely not, Sebastian. That's not happening. You never know. I'm located in New Zealand, so... But like I say, maybe... 15% of the artwork stays in New Zealand. Which is sort of sad. <laughs> so we don't get to see much of it, but... Uh, like in homes or anything like that. There's a fantastic piece owned by a lady named T in Hamilton. Love that piece. It's of a dog. And then there's a uh, piece in Christchurch. A couple of pieces in Auckland. A lot in the Bay of Pliny. Thanks Jay, appreciate that. Look, I think the lives have something really special in them, guys. I think it's, uh, especially for artists, I think you've got to, as an artist, you've got to put yourself on stage and let yourself be examined psychologically. Let people understand who you are. You know, the written about me section these days where it just has this little blurb about who you are and why you do what you do. You need to go a step further. You need, to, you need to actually tell people who you are, what you care about, why you care. Why do you do what you do? Why do you bother waking up in the morning? What are you doing? And then once you can stand on top of the stage and tell people about this, help people care about what you care about. What's your vision? Do you want to make the world a happier place? Do you actually care about that? 
Thanks. Oh, crazy gay uncle, you absolute champion. I appreciate you. Um, so much. Um, do you actually care about making other people happy? And if that's the vision, align everything around that. Don't, don't confuse anything. You go after what actually is meaningful in your art or whatever your craft is and do it properly. And like for me, I, I, I love color. I'm not gonna start working on a tablet with a computer, not because I reject technology, but because I love that primal, raw, unbridled feeling of colored liquid and a tool in my hand. I don't wanna trade this for a Silas pen. I love the rudimentary nature of it. If I was on a tablet with a pen, I would opt to move on to this raw, wild process because there's something in the minute parts that pixels don't carry. This raw, chaotic feeling of reality in the paint. I love that. Love that so much. I'm um, sorry. Uh, coming back here. Steve, welcome back. We've got your work over there at the moment, Steve. We're not done yet. We added that last coat on it. It needs some salmon. Some pale salmon. It's going to go touching the bottoms of the mountains, a little bit on the faces, and then after the pale salmon goes on, We'll have another probably one or two colors, but we'll stand back, see how it hits, and then poof, get back into it. It's in a good place. It's in a good place. You're all good, LJ. I'm just here down on my thing. Um, and the same plate as yesterday? Yes. Washed. Same plate. In it, geez. Um, And hi from Puerto Rico. I was there, I was just silent. I oh, got you. Steve's just there silent in the background. I hate what he's done to it. I hate what he's done to it. <laughs> no, I'm sure you, I'm sure you weren't, but um, we've got we've got a little bit of that pink to go in there, and then we'll probably choose some colours around to soften the blacks. Maybe the thing that will soften through the blacks and blend them into the tans will be some purple. If purple hits, I think purple's gonna be the colour. But we will see. We will see. Hello from Santa Fe. Santa Fe, that's exciting. Actually, speaking of Santa Fe, we had a picture that's sold out now. Um, it was the uh, a city different. So Santa Fe has a nickname, um, is the city different. And for a man named Chad, who no longer lives in Santa Fe, I think he lives in Atlanta now. Uh, we painted him the uh, countryside of Santa Fe. So it had spires coming up plateaus and a turbulent sky, but beautiful, vibrant um, tans and purples, and it was just a really cool painting. But anyway, um, people in Santa Fe loved it, and it's sold out. So, no prints left for you, unless you've already got one and you've just tuned in for live. But uh, that was pretty fun. That was a, that was a fun, fun artwork. Um, <laughs> appreciate that, Ash. And usual drop by to show some love. Peace in, peace out. See ya, Hitty. Thanks for stopping by, you champion. And guys, I missed the 30 and the 40 grand um, like marks, but uh, thank you so much. We are closing in on 50,000 likes. Now, I have no idea what that means, but it's pretty exciting that we're on the way there. Um, I wish I would like to do a little explosion on the screen too, like, bee, 50. Unless it does, and I've missed it for the last year. Maybe. Right. This rag is getting dirty. Put that down there. How's this going? Claudia, Claudia Kluber, what time do I sleep? I sleep at uh, tonight. I'll be fast asleep at hmm, 3.30 at the moment. So I'll be up for another six and a half hours. So today the routine is I'll probably finish here, 3.30. I'll finish here around five maybe. Every time, I put a, every time I put a time on it, I drift off it. So I'll probably finish around five. And then after five, I'll head out to, I may go to the gym because I need to stretch a little bit. Um, maybe work out, but mainly I need to do some stretching. My back needs stretching, my legs need stretching. I'm going to touch my toes for a while and see where it takes me. Thanks for joining the team, ASD. Um, and then after that, I'll come back and probably make dinner. 
and then if anyone's got any good suggestions, maybe a movie later on while I upload some more videos to YouTube, um, and we'll see where that takes us. And if the inspiration hits, I might throw some inspirational whammer jammer up onto uh, Twitter, and if it doesn't, I won't. And threads. I basically copy and paste it Twitter and <laughs> threads, so it's in both places. But usually that's text, so if I've got a thought which looks better in text form than it does verbalizing, I'll put it there, and then if it does better verbalized than text, I'll say it, try and say it to a camera without stuttering too often, and try and make a reel out of it. Um, speaking of which, guys, if you have any questions or um, questions, inquiries, stuff you'd like to hear about, um, feelings, uh, send me a message, a DM, or uh, however you want to get in touch, get in touch, ask me, and then I can um, turn into a reel, because if you've got the question, chances are, if you don't want to ask it here, that's totally fine, um, chances are a lot of people have that same question, whether it's about ruts, whether it's about challenges, whether it's about difficulties, we can get that, we can turn it into a, a palatable answer that we can give out to more people to help more people deal with whatever they're dealing with. Because normally, even if it's art-based, it's usually transplantable into a lot of different situations. So, there we go. Do a Q&A live. Uh, what's... We sort of do do it here, though, don't we? You like... Or even like submit anonymous questions. Because that could be wild. Um... I'm sure you've already seen it, but Maverick or John Wick chat for Yeah. Um, someone bought John Wick 4 on my um, account. No, Shelby's account. Because um, it was logged in. And so we had 48 hours to watch it because it was on rent, but we didn't watch it, so it's gone. Um, that being said, uh, Maverick, I've seen Maverick. Maverick's a fun movie. And probably thinking... Honestly, guys, I like a documentary, and I like something edgy and different. I like something that challenges you um, in a wholesome, positive way, but challenges you to think differently and look at something from a different perspective. 50,000! I saw it tick. I literally looked up at the exact moment it ticked over. That was pretty fun. Now, to acknowledge 50,000, I'm going to wander off because I need some more plates. I've used up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plates. And we're going to go through about three more at least. So, more plates. Back in a moment, guys. Hello, Ocean.
I'm coming back. See the bottle of water, putting that down there. And then we grab the plate. Alrighty then, here we go, voila. Hello Kyle, another cowboy, it's a farmer, but uh, close, close. So, I suppose he's like a New Zealand cowboy, but he's a farmer and he's got an old sort of country hat on, he's got a vest, and there's a little child down here who's his grandchild, and so a cane that he's walking with. Um, who is from New Zealand? Me. I'm from New Zealand, Eric, thank you, you absolute champion. Um, I am in Forest Hill, that's exciting. And then Santiago, welcome back, thank you. Watch Sweet Tooth on Netflix if you haven't yet. I watched season one, it's pretty fun. Um, I think there's another season coming out slash came out, isn't there? Maybe? Who knows? I'm just going to tag that and start that one again. There we go, chuck those plates down there. Okie dokie, I think that's a hobbit, not a ha <laughs> Yeah, could be. Ever done a bull or a matador? Um, have I done a bull before? I would have thought yes, but I can't remember. Bull. I've done a bull rider actually. It was a commission of um, Lane Frost, which was pretty fun. Now, let's see here. Let's grab some different shades of red. That one, perfect. Um, season two has been out for a while. All right. Well, sounds like I need to get to it. Yeah, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. Obviously, it's a uh, real story. That's what happened. Um, there's a song about it too, called um, Red Rock. Check this down here. Um, the movie, oh no, 8 Seconds is a different one, I think. There was a recent bull riding one that came out about some cowboy love stories, like Notebook, but for cowboys. And then... There was... A movie back a long time ago about some old cowboys. The likes of uh, Lane Frost, Tough Hederman. And they used to ride with the likes of... I think they used to ride with Ty Murray and... Who else was there? Jim Sharp? The song's about Jim Sharp, he's infamous. Alright, up we come. Let's have a little look-see from a distance. William Defoe. Do you like a bit of William Defoe? Unless he's on your side, in which case he'd be William to friend. There we go. Let's let this around in here. I might go to sleep and dream. That's not a bad idea. I think that is a great idea. Go get some sleep. Boom, ba boom. Here we go. Let's get this maroon. Dab it around. Wow, what's happening here? Ha <laughs> ha, that was fun. Thanks to the interstellar crazy guy, Uncle. You absolute champion. That was a good one. That was a good one. Appreciate all the love and the support while we put together this wild farmer. And dots of paint, little bit by little bit. 
Lay by layer. Man, it's getting thick on this one, team. It's getting real thick. There's a lot of paint building up here. I almost want to get weights on the canvas before and after. So then we can actually see with the process, you'll be like, with the process, instead of just saying it was this long, you can say it weighed this much. This much paint went into it. What about Secret Invasion, if you're into Marvel? Whoo-wee! I'll put that in the maybe basket. I don't mind a superhero movie. I get on board with uh, Captain America, most of all. And the reason I love Captain America, it's a very cheesy reason, is that he never gives up hope. He never gives up hope. And there's moments in those Marvel movies where all the other characters give up hope. Even Iron Man gives up hope. But even in the face of helpless, helplessness, when it's just him versus the entirety of Thanos' army, and he actually thinks in that moment he's the last one left. And he's going to have a go. And he picks up his shield, broken. Broken shield. He picks it up. He starts walking towards this army. There's a scene right there in Avengers Endgame where he's got his broken shield, he's standing on a ridge, and he's walking towards the entirety of Thanos' army. You can see him go, this is going to be a problem. But he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And when it comes down to that, Captain America's unflappable hope, that, that is commendable. That is something I can get behind. No matter how bad things got, even when 50% of the population got wiped out by Thanos, you know what he did? Kept going. He's like, I can't do anything about that right now. But I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And then the opportunity's going to come, and then I'm going to do what I can. Now, yeah, that's America's ass. <laughs> um, oh, wait, you're saying, I, no, that's rude. Um, I thought you were talking about Captain America. That was a great scene in Captain America. But um, he has unflappable hope, and that is a trait which... We attribute to all superheroes, but Marvel put it in such a way that we realized not all heroes have that power. And when things get to a certain stage, everyone else gives up. The cat does not. If you were to liken that to one person in DC, I'd liken it to Wolverine. He doesn't give up hope, because he's been through too much. And he's just like, this, this ain't bad enough. I've seen bad. <laughs> I did World War One, World War Two, and Vietnam. I've seen bad, all right? <laughs> a little bit of Jean Grey ain't gonna upset, upset me. Um, coming back here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, they've gone in a whole bunch of directions. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, the third one made me cry so much. Third one was wild, yeah. Um, I think... Uh, yeah. Rocket and his team of misfits, where his name came from. Couldn't really, I didn't really like the bad guy. I prefer movies that don't frame a bad guy and just say, he's bad. He's really bad. You know, he's bad, bad, bad. This guy here is a bad guy. He's bad news and he wants to be bad. I like a bad guy who's not shown off as a typical bad guy that actually has traits it has become bad but has a story that's compelling that you're like oh you're a bad guy but gosh, i'm sorry this happened to you like um and obviously you need to be stopped but i don't hate you i just disagree with everything you're doing but like that's the kind of bad guy i like um yeah i feel like i didn't do it enough with the uh, Enough with Thanos, if I was to be picky. No one felt like Thanos was even remotely in the right, or not in the right, but like, no one was remotely empathetic towards Thanos' point of view, or Thanos' story. He was just a bad guy with a big stick with a problem with everyone. We can do better bad guys than this. Um, so, so I like it. I like a more complex storyline in that I like the bad guy to be a grey area. Even the good guy to be a grey area. 
good guy but for the wrong reasons. Like, that's always an interesting thing. When you look at the philosophy of morality, you start wondering, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Or is that just the sides that I've ended up on in this particular conflict? And is there much more to this picture? And it's not as simple as seeking out some... What's the word I'm looking for? Seeking out some insidious evil. There's actually much more going on. Convoluted, confusing layers to the story about who's bad and who's good and if you play with it enough you blur the line so much that you walk out of the cinema or you win the movie very confused you're not sure whose side you're on there's a story occurring but you don't know who you back so did you like what they did with the live action ah uh, that was yeah that's quite a good one actually that's with uh, Angelina Julie right but you actually, when you hear her backstory, you can't help but to be more on her side. Despise the king, where previously you thought that she was the evil person, and then you realize that actually, wow, they took her wings brutally. How, how, how dare he, how dare they? It's very hard to, it's a hard one. That's quite a raw one, actually. And it's an interesting one to show kids because you start showing them the philosophies around or, or start challenging thoughts around what's good, what's evil. Not good and evil, good and bad. In the same way, I think us adults do the same thing. It's so tempting and easy to get wooed into a situation where we believe that there is an insidious evil or an objective good sometimes both answers are wrong but you have to pick one and that's a tough situation to be in i think we've all been in that situation where you're between a rock and a hard place that's what they call it how long does it take to dry this painting here um it was still drying from yesterday's paint session but looking at the size of the bumps on it i would guess I would guess, I would guess, I think it'll be dry through in 72 hours. But again, just guessing. We're just guessing. Here we go. Mix that in here. Here, 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 here. here we go. Get a whole bunch of that. That's what I'm after. Start dotting around this color. Mm, 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 mm. Um, Santiago, I had this question a few times. Aye. But no one's asked it on TikTok, so I haven't had the ability to answer it via a reel. But the answer is when you get so attached to what you've made that you no longer. Well, you still desire, you always desire to see what it can become. Or well, you're so attached to what you've made that you won't risk it for what it could become. Say, so, no, I love this. I love this in its current form that I can't bear to bring a paintbrush to it and alter it. It's perfect. Right where it is. And if you don't say that to yourself, then in your own mind, it's not perfect just yet. And it wants you back in there. It wants you to add more to it. It wants to continue on a journey. I don't know how long that journey's going to be. I don't know where it's going to take you. But until you love it too much, you're too attached to it, to put a brush on it, it's not finished. There you go. I am from New Zealand, and I never use watercolour. I love the saturation that you can get from acrylics and oils. This is acrylics. But oils and acrylics, you can get so much poppy colour from them. So, I can't imagine trying to paint without such intensity. Layering, and pasto, wild, wild effects, cascading over each other. Couldn't imagine doing it. So, I won't... Uh, 
so I don't use all, uh, watercolors. That's not to say there's anything wrong with watercolors. Watercolors are fantastic for certain artists, not for this one. I like that rudimentary primal lack of delicacy. Yeah. But you can create something delicate, but through wild, splodgy, weird paint like that. Hey Sarah, how you doing? Well, part of New Zealand, you were there, Lukey Luke. Alright, um, if you were here, I am from Auckland. Well, I'm from Bay of Plenty originally, but now I live in Auckland. And that's where the studio is based. Splodgy, good word. Yeah, it's a great uh, textural gel they sell in the um, stores here called Mod Podge. Funny name for a product, but um, I think words like splodgy, unbridled, messy. Messy's, messy doesn't always cover it. Messy, messy's so broad. I like, yeah, splodgy's a good word. What's that painting like? No, oh, it's a bit splodgy. Modge Podge, we have that. There you go. There you go. Art with Mir. He's got Modge Podge. <laughs> What's this one? Man alive, that's a cool looking one. Planet. Cheers, crazy gay uncle. I appreciate the support. To no end. But I do need, I do need, I do need more than anything. Where is it hiding? Where did you put it, Sebastian? Titanium white. I need this. You good? That's good. Use that for puzzles and paper mache. Yeah. Modge Podge is good. It's similar to PVA, but it's an artist version of it. Um, and it's, I think it's non yellowing, or these types of it there are, that are. It's non-toxic, so kids can be around it, from what I understand. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here, obviously, but um, I think that's the go with Modge Podge. Put this down here. All right. Grabbing a seat. We do a little thing here. We're going to tilt that down here like this. Swipe that there. And then we're going to go... Shunka. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Mm. Thanks, Tokus. Someone did some incredible person who loves the art that that happens there, and what I love about that is that. What I'm trying to make, and the feeling I'm putting behind it, even though you're not seeing the artwork physically in the flesh, you're seeing pixels of it, but you're seeing those pixels change, augment, be created, and you're seeing how I feel, and the way I talk is I apply the paint and make that painting, and when that connects with people, that's really special. And so when you, when someone feels compelled enough to send a gift to say, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with this. I see what's happening. I love it. Um, that, not only is that support, that's also telling me, hey, what you're making right now and the way you're making it is connecting with me. That core value you have, that thing you care about, that you think matters, you're doing it right now. You're doing it reasonably well. That's, that's where I come from. That's where I come from. You should see my train. Still have a little more to go. I need shadow boxes. Yeah, I'd love to see your train. I would love to see your train. And I don't know what context that's in. I'm always talking about like a model train. We're talking about a painting of a train, a sculpture. Honestly, I'm excited to find out. I am excited to find out. Um, 
Let me just swipe that there. There we go. Thanks, Vernon. Appreciate you. Look at that. There's a funny angle for a hat. I feel like I'm staring at the sunrise. <laughs> All right. Do, 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 do. Right. How are we doing on timer? I've got a little bit longer left. My brush is clean. Put that down there. Wipe it off there. Have a little bit of water. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm. If you're considering it too, guys, and you'd like, if you've been here for a while and you'd like to join um, behind the scenes, which I'm not quite sure what I'm going to take yet, but uh, it'll probably be a bunch of oversharing till I figure out what the right stuff to say is. Um, you can jump on the subscription, which I think is a yellow star or something around somewhere on the screen. Subscribe, that'll give you access to a Discord, and from the Discord, if you don't have that yet, neither. Um, it's a fun little place where we can post, we can talk, we can add things, and uh, basically get more behind the scenes content. And then there's also going to be a, it's not there at the moment, I'll post it tonight, 10% discount code, which will change um, for prints on the website. So if you're going to buy a print, best way to buy a print is to actually just subscribe and get that code, even just for a month. So that way you can actually get a 10% discount, which will be cover more than the cost of subscribing, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I'm still curious when you're going to paint the galaxy, Black Bunny, uh, soon. Well, actually, Aku Aku's a little bit of a galaxy, so that's on the way. And cheers, Dragonflyzilla. Appreciate that. Vernon, you champion. Vernon, I've appreciated your support over the last few, like, several months. It's been fantastic. It's been good having you here. Mmm. Okay, and Sam's back. Sam, you left. Naughty. Good to have you back. Um, yeah, so. But yeah, regardless of what you choose to do, guys, whether you want to hang out here, you can hang out here when you're As long as I, I always, I want to make sure these chat rooms as much as possible can stay open to everyone. So I reckon that's really wholesome. But, um, yeah. Appreciate the support. And if your support's just hanging out there like a fly on the wall, watching, seeing what's going on, popping on and popping out, I like that too. Don't think for a second, I don't want you to be you. You be you. Black Bunny just got back from the gym, you wild cat. Had to grab a bite to eat, I get that. Fair enough, Black Bunny. Welcome in. Now, I think I'm actually gonna swap off this brush. Well, I was going to stick with it, we'll trade with this one. And our time is done. We're back. We are back. Right. We're going to use... Let's get this mix right. So the last brush I was using had longer bristles on it. The longer bristles stop you from being able to change direction suddenly. It sort of makes a wishy-washy movement, as if you've been followed by a tail. Imagine like a... Um, imagine long hair and water, how it sort of trails. Um, shorter bristles, much more control, but when you get too short, carries no paint. So there's a fine uh, middle ground which you want to have. So that one there, long bristles, great for just slamming paint onto the board. And then now we're going to the shorter bristle ones, more control, more fun with some different shades of the color. That's what we're doing here. All right, okay. close my eyes and all I can see is just paint landing so but that's a good place to be that's why we do what we do it's like when you go to sleep after playing a computer game for too long anyone who grew up with Pac-Man, Spyro, <laughs> Crash Team Racing, Mario you'll know about the sensations of uh, going to sleep and all you've been able to see is just endless um, boxes being bumped, gems being gathered, Spyro sprinting along and this is like things. Mega Man, that's another one. Or if you've been spending a day cutting up wood, sensation of actually, once you stop, all you can see is blocks of wood being put on the uh, thing. When I close my eyes, all I can see is black. 
Uh, Justin, yes, you will. You will, that's pretty cool, Ash. Sonic Healy, fair enough. Um, you won't just see black. If you do a task so often, you'll start to actually, when you close your eyes, all you'll be able to see is more of that task happening. Sort of like when you see, uh, stare at a green screen for too long, then look at a uh, uh, piece of white paper, you'll see a tan, cyan color appear. <laughs> Fair enough. How to get rid of the... Oh, hey Andrew, how you doing? Oh, I see, I see. Clever, clever, clever. There we go. Um, so yes, just rings for days. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. And let's chuck that there. And let's start throwing this, because that comes all the way up there. There we go. Get that correct mix going on. Thanks, PT. Means personal trainer. He's a personal trainer, but we don't know for what. There we go. Dab this in here. Stab that through there. Keep building up the layers upon layers. Don't be afraid to if we are dabbling with the paint strokes. Sometimes we can be afraid to actually do a longer stroke. Don't be afraid. Do what you do. Sometimes it's appropriate to do little bits. Sometimes it's appropriate to do big bits. There we go. Devil through here. I know it's my job to do the talking, but a little bit of silence was pretty cool. <laughs> kind of like it. Still. Sweet. Gentle. Mm. Sometimes it's quite nice. Just be in the presence of the painting. Just slowly add paint to it. Thanks, J. Smith. Guys, if you do want to subscribe, I'd love you to this, and I would really, really appreciate having you on my subscriber team. And I'd love to get to the goal today. 30 subscribers, that would literally make my day. I'll be running around like a, like a kid with a kite at a picnic. <laughs> but I'm also very excited. Thanks, Knox. I appreciate that. And Alex, welcome to the team. Good to have you here. Now, there is a stillness. I think it's in these more muted tones. I think when you get onto the more muted tones, you can't help it. In the way they land, in the way they feel. The way I'm using this brush too, this is the same brush 
that I finished off Zambezi River with. So it's kind of fun when we're doing the same brush strokes. I know this painting its own, is its own unique thing. It's not Zambezi River. But the way the paint's landing reminds me of it. Can the cam zoom out a bit? Is it framing weed on your phone? Um, and thanks Alex, I appreciate you. Can I get uh, clarification from anyone who's been here for a while? Can you see everything in the artwork or is it cropping weed on the phone? Um, let me know. Hello Noel, how you doing? Thanks Alex, appreciate you. Champion Jay. Obviously if we do need to change the screen, let me know guys, because I can do an adjustment, but I want to make sure that we don't zoom out too far from the painting, because you want to be able to see these little bits of detail we're adding in. If we come out too far, we'll just have a white wall where it will be pretty fun to see the rest of it. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Alex. Right, muted tones. I say muted tones, they're not even muted. They're, um, they're just mixes in between. This is more like a deep, dark salmon. Matt. Yes, I am. In Santiago. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Cheers, Josh. You know, this one's getting close. I'm loving this work. And the most important thing, and this is the most important thing, people think I'm joking when I say this. Lefties rise up. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and thanks, Keith. Appreciate that. Um, people say this is stupid. Like, not stupid, but when I say I'm having a lot of fun making this, I'm loving making, like, if you ask me what I could do right now that I'd be enjoying, I'm not going to say I want to run off and do something else. I'm saying that for fulfillment for me right now, my little monkey brain, I want to paint this picture. This is where I want to be. And so what's really special about that is that means that I'm loving the process. Now, some artists hear me say that, and they're like, yeah, okay, love the process. Me, 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 see the voice is that. I do, but it matters because if you love what you're making, then the result that you make will actually have a little bit of that enjoyment that you had imprinted on it. It's like a loved process gets a loved result. The best example I can give is the complete opposite. When you don't want to make something and the process is grueling and you don't enjoy it, that stain of dissatisfaction is left on the result. The result, if you look at it, whether other people can see it, you'll be able to. You look at it and be like, a lot of those strokes were put on with resentment and disdain. But when you look at a painting that you made with love, that you really enjoyed making, Every brushstroke is embellished with this joy and satisfaction. This is a good place to be. Um, oh, Sam, you are more than welcome. I'm glad I could say something useful. <laughs> the journey is why you paint. Yeah, 100%. Let the journey be why you do what you do. Trust me, if you give yourself to it, if you give yourself to it, and make that the most important thing. Weirdly enough, the result changes and improves. That's the hardest thing to do. And sometimes when you look at sometimes, when you look at your result, you'll look at it and be like, okay, okay, I didn't embellish that journey. This result is an example of me not leaning into the journey and valuing other people's opinions, my own projected ugly opinions onto a piece of work. 
I didn't let myself be me. So, that's with any jobs. If I, 100%. Um, I don't, I don't want to universally apply something, but I want to say it's true most of the time. Um, I don't think anything applies just to art. I think art applies things in a very, very raw kind of way. I think when it comes to art, since we're dealing in feelings, since we're dealing in expression and motions, it's not... <laughs> Imagine you go to a car dealership, you buy a car, you buy a utility. There's feelings attached to any purchase. Yeah, I get that. But with art, you can buy anything to go on your wall from an op shop. But instead, people pay big money for art. Why does this happen? Because art is feeling and expression and emotions. So you're getting these things that are very real, that make human decisions almost... Almost the most compelling of human decisions are made from those three categories. And we're going to get those and... Let's be trailer thought there a little bit. We're going to get those three things. Come on, trailer thought, come back. Thanks for subscribing, Ice. Send a commission inquiry. Thanks, crazy uncle. I'm excited. I'll check that out later tonight, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, scratch my paintings because I didn't like it. No, I've persevered with them, and most often than not, you can finish them. But um, sorry, when you're dealing in feelings, where was I going with that? Oh, the answers you get are a lot more raw and exposed and make you much more vulnerable, but the actual answers themselves and the way you get to those answers and the effects that they have, that is universally applicable. So whether you're doing plumbing, whether you're a writer, whether you buy and sell stocks, whatever you do, the emotions that you go through on a creative process, and the creative process is such a buzzword that it turns a lot of people off, but actually to say, the emotions you go through while you're doing a job like painting and to try and create something on a 2D surface that is meaningful, that embellishes emotion, that same process, what's real in that process and what's meaningful is the same thing that helps someone who works from a laptop, who works remotely for Google Ads, who um, works for Spotify or Shopify in the head office, who works as a whatever, a planer, a framer, a videographer, works in a factory assembling cars. This is all applicable. Embellishing what you love coming at it from the right direction, believing in yourself, trusting your own instinct above all else, um, listening to others and caring about others' opinions, but then understanding what you care about and who you are to pursue that correctly. This is all, this is all important. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate you. Um, and trippy or not, thank you. Glad you like the painting. Um, do you work on multiple paintings at one time? Yes. Yes. Multiple. Um, I try to have one that really matters though, one that really matters at any given point so that you can embellish that process and really position the others around it so you can really care about that one. So at the moment that one for us is a cowboy shop. That's our number one. And so we choose colours and methods and timing around that painting with the intentions of getting the most feeling and emotion into that one. That's not to say that the other ones get less, but we'll start the day thinking, right, how do we nail that one? And the Kiwi, thank you crazy uncle, that's phenomenal. Yeah, that's a special New Zealand one, guys. Kiwi for the Kiwi. For those who don't know, a Kiwi is a native bird of New Zealand. It's a flightless bird. It's got little lumps for wings and it cannot fly, a massive beak and it lays eggs about the size of its own body. Humongous eggs. Now, a kiwi is also the name of a fruit. You may have heard of kiwi fruit. Now, kiwi fruit was a branding exercise. They used to be called Chinese gooseberries. Chinese gooseberries are from, well, they're Chinese, 
We got that fruit, it grows really well in New Zealand. We rebranded it, called it Kiwi Fruit after the bird, and we started shipping Kiwi Fruit all over the world. But Kiwi Fruit and Kiwis are why we call New Zealanders Kiwis. So if you've ever heard of a New Zealander referred to as a Kiwi, that's why. And that's why on our, um, you might see Kiwi stuff with a little, like, little bird with a big long beak and a big bum and tiny little legs. That's a uh, Kiwi. Um, we love them. They're defenseless. They're lovely. They're very friendly. Um, the reason they're so defenseless and all the things is because there's no predators in New Zealand. We brought in um, cats and dogs and things like this, which have given them a hard time in the last few decades, um, last hundred years, uh, and stoats and ferrets and things. But um, on the whole, they are defenseless. We have to look after them very carefully. They're lovely birds. Um, anyway, kiwis are our thing. And... Um, yeah, so if you've ever seen that symbol now, you know. Um, and that's why I love it. TikTok apparently changes it from country to country. So our thing is Kiwis. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Trivia or not. Um, just learned something new. Fun fact of the day. Yeah, yeah. That's a fun fact of the day. Um, you will not see it on the flag. So when you see our rugby team, if you've ever watched New Zealand rugby or seen our sports teams, we have a fern, and you'd be like, Seth told me all about kiwis, and now I'm seeing content about New Zealand, and it's a fern, it's a white fern. Why is it a white fern? Well, typically it's a white fern, because silver is quite hard to print. Here it isn't silver. Um, last week, and it is brilliant. Mr. Jenkins in my home. Oh, thank you so much, Jenkins. That is phenomenal that you've got a copy of uh, Zambezi River. They are all sold out. Well, they're all sold out and it's the home of the final Zambezi River is in South Africa. Um, and that was a really fun picture to paint. Hopefully, hopefully we get a chance to make some more elephant and river shots. We won't do another one of the Zambezi River with the elephants. That one's unique. That one will be its own thing. But I'm hoping we're going to get other shots that we can dabble on because so many people had so much love for that photo that when we moved away from it and started doing a different uh, sorry when we, when we when it sold out and became unavailable a lot of people missed out so they can't have that one that's not how prints work it's an addition once they're gone they're gone but we can make other things available like um like 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 Maybe elephants on a safari somewhere, maybe a lone elephant, maybe a portrait of one, who knows? But we can't do, yeah, that one's its own unique thing. It's a really special process to be a part of, and I'm so glad you love it. Yeah. Oh, that means a lot to me. Um, I wish you could stay away. Crazy gay uncle, get yourself to work. It's totally okay. Relax, sleep. Um, if you miss any lives, it's totally all good. They're available on YouTube. So I'm a little bit behind, but I have started uploading. They should drop one a day, every day, um, for the next month anyway. <laughs> I've got a lot of back lot backlog. Um, so as they start coming up, um, whenever you need a live, they'll be a live. And I can't guarantee it'll be a good one. Always in a different mood. But um, they'll be available to you. And yeah, time zones, you'll be up all good. Um, thanks, Levi. I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, I will see you next time. Get some sleep, get to work, live life. Whatever it is you do, hope you enjoy it. Put your best foot forward on it. Remember, um, yeah. One of my things too, guys, is it's funny because sometimes I'll say that to people and they'll be like, yeah, it's easy for you to say, you're a pink, you're out of here too. Don't you leave me pink. Don't you dare. Wow, what's that? Oh my god, I've never seen that before. Dragonfly. Thanks, crazy gay uncle. You absolute legend. Go get some sleep and get some love right here from New Zealand. All the best. Bye for now, and I will see you maybe tomorrow. Depends on time zones. But anyway, recordings are available. Next time. Next time. And uh, you'll be asleep, but I'll check out your commission once I'm finished here. Maybe in like... Half an hour to an hour? Who knows? Who knows? Um, now, what's a rising star? 
Jay Smith, I'm so lucky you're a walking encyclopedia of TikTok because <laughs> actually Black Bunny this all came on here from uh, yesterday and I didn't wash it fast enough so it stayed dirty so my beautiful um, ranked 9 and rising star what's rising star? Uh, most of, thanks Paul, appreciate you, hope you love your artwork though um, there was a question back there that I missed I need to come back and see it where was it? Where was it? No, it's gone. I missed it. Um, you. Chris Lambert. Wait, Chris Lambert? Is that like the uh, musician? So, I forget. Um, despite that, God, what was I saying? Look at me. I see one dragon, I lose my mind, and now I can't even remember what I was saying. Ah, that's right. Um, when it comes to me saying, whatever you do, you know, put your heart and soul into it. I hope you have a great day, blah, blah. I get sometimes, especially from people, um, sometimes people are like, that's easy for you to say. You're doing what you love. You know, you're painting. That's been your dream since you were five. Um, so you're pursuing that, you know, but I have to go be a mechanic and... Um, I'll say that actually for me, when I was younger, see my family um, owns, uh, owns a restaurant and, uh, or like, once they moved off the farm, now we, now, my, you know, my, my, my parents were involved in a restaurant and I actually worked in the restaurant and I ran a lot of plates and did a lot of admin -y stuff and blah, blah, blah when I was younger and one of the things I used when I was carrying around plates is you'd be carrying, I'll show you, we'll do it right now, it's fine. You'd want the tables carrying plates. So here's three plates. And when you carry plates, so there's three of them, you'd have two on the other hand. But um, the reason why I use a plate as a pellet, I use a plate as a pellet because it, first off, <laughs> makes me feel in a zone of comfort and happy. Now I feel happy because, or comfortable, because this is. This is something I grew up with and it's so natural to me. It holds naturally. It's perfectly balanced. Paint mixes on it really well. Um, but my confidence with the plate here now really helps my ability to paint. It has a huge impact. My confidence holding my palette is 30% of my movement while I paint and that is humongous. So when you take that into account, whatever your job is, Whatever you do, whatever makes you money to then pursue what you love, you might just be having, even though you think it's completely unrelated, just like Kung Fu Kid or Kung Karate Kid, uh, Mr. Miyagi taught Karate Kid, wax on, wax off, polish my floors. And then all of a sudden this floor polishing turned into the ability to do karate correctly. In the same way, me running plates, using plates, has now made my ability to use a palette while I paint. Now, I don't know what you do, a librarian, a bookkeeper, a, a, a mechanic, uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, appreciate that. Um, because I'm passionate about telling you guys this stuff. <laughs> and cheers, Shimon. Um, whatever you do, you may not know how it applies to your dreams, but if you don't pursue it with intention and with love, you won't get that wax on, wax off. So you've got to do what you do with real intention, with real care and real belief. So that way, when you do discover what you love, all those skills that you thought were useless, that you thought were meaningless, that but you still put your heart and soul into, they'll apply and they'll become not just the challenges you faced, but part of your product. This is powerful. This is good. Um, I swear he messed up the movie reference to get more comments. Isn't it wax on, wax off? I swear I did. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? I didn't mean to get it wrong. <laughs> I messed up the movie reference. Oh god. Tell me what I did wrong there. What was the... It is Wax On Wax Off right though. Mr. Miyagi, Karate Kid. Um, Mr. Miyagi, Karate Kid, Wax On Wax Off. Waxing a car. Oh, he's waxing a car. He's waxing a car. <laughs> I was... Mm. 
oh, that, yeah, good point. So if it was the floor, it would be scrub on, scrub off. And I said, wait, yep, yeah, okay, yes, sorry, I'm the idiot. Yep, fair enough, fair enough, sorry. Yep, this guy. I will own that. This is okay. Regardless, car or floor. <laughs> you never know in what way what you do is going to apply. So, that's why no matter how I go with my painting and what I do, I keep the plate. Because the plate is my own personal. Wax on, wax off. Hello Mike Brave. And the point is, yeah, thank you. The point, yeah, the point is still good. <laughs> the delivery was botched, but it's a great point. <laughs> Um, sorry, so, yeah, so please understand, if I do tell you, go have a great day, go believe in what you do, go put passion into whatever it is you do, this is, this is not just me throwing out lines at you, this is, a, go do that, because your dreams, whatever dreams you have, that thing that you're currently doing, if you put passion into it, will help with your dream. It will. It will. It'll be powerful. It'll help. Um, I would be lesser of a painter today had I not put passion into carrying plates. Now, don't get me wrong, I drop a lot of plates, but I drop far less because I've carried a lot. Hello, Max Admilius. How are you doing? And Jean Claude, is there a link? Um, there is a link in my bio if you'd like to. Um, connect more, see Instagram, see the website, see all that stuff. It's all there for you. Um, if you do feel passionate about uh, um, this, this painting, this live, this thing that I, this is what I do. Um, if you do feel passionate, you can subscribe and you get a discount on prints, which is pretty cool. And don't want to and you just want to hang out here and watch paintings come together slowly there's a fly on the wall posting the occasional lol or correcting me on my movie references then you're welcome to do that too that's why I'm here but whatever you do when you go back to doing what you do please let this crazy Kiwi ask you Pursue it with vigor, vitality. I think we've all felt that at some point. It may have dwindled out, but we felt it at some point when for some reason you felt good, motivated and strong, and you pursued something with care and vigor, and you charged at it. Now, yeah, that flame dwindled. It's hard to keep that flame alive, but at some point we all had that. Even as a kid, you know? Maybe it was as a kid, who knows? I'm kind of lost. I feel like I won't make it as a... Yeah, Keegan. Okay, we were talking about this before. I love that. I love that. We were talking about this before. And DV. Thanks, DV. I'm glad you've made my day. I'm glad. Um, we had a lady come on. Claire, I think it was. Claire? And she said... Um, she's having trouble selling her paintings. And we had a conversation about it. I seen that two hours ago. Now, the interesting thing that she said was, where we actually concluded was, she didn't want to sell her paintings. And she didn't need to sell her paintings, from what I understood. So, she was wanting to sell paintings, or maybe, this is us paraphrasing here, but maybe she only wanted to sell the paintings so she could say she was an artist. We get this idea that to be an artist, we have to sell artwork. This is the most absurd thing in the whole world. It is absurd. It sounds absurd to say it's absurd, but it is absurd. And the reason it's absurd is that Monet and Van Gogh didn't sell paintings. They didn't sell many paintings. <laughs> they died before they sold many paintings. And the reason why is because uh, Van Gogh was an art dealer. He sold art. Not his own art. He sold art. So, when you think about... Uh, um, selling paintings has been the crux of what you want as an artist. This is silly, because two of the greatest artists of all time didn't sell many paintings. Um, now, when you talk like that, you're like, right, 
So let's turn it on its head. Let's say instead of saying, um, instead of saying, I need to, uh, I need to sell art to make money to survive. Turn that on its head. Become the Van Gogh. Become the, become the Monet. I need to make money to survive, so I can make art. All right. Now, the best artists of all time did not make money making art. Find a way to make money. Find a day job. Find a part-time job. Find whatever. Find whatever you can to, to sustain yourself, so you can do what's real to you. And with art, more than anything, you got to realize that the masters of the world made art and just made it in virtue of itself because profit was never a thing in there. Um, sorry, what's the color of his shirt? The shirt should be white, I think. And how's Walt? I've got no idea how Walt Disney did it. And the accent is from New Zealand. Sorry, I missed a few comment there. Um, the best artist of all time doesn't exist. That's fair. So let me put out my subjective opinion and say that I love Van Gogh and Monet. And I love them both because they pursued their careers in art regardless of what other people thought. They wanted to make art. So it wasn't so much about the art itself. It wasn't so much about the uh, whatever, it was about the process of making art. That's what they lost themselves in. Healthy. I love that. I love that. I hope I answered the question. Um, thank you. Jay, you're putting in the Lord's work right now and I appreciate you to no end. Okay. Let's devil this through here. Here we go. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I thought that was a sarcastic comment. I was laughing. If you watch from the very beginning of the painting, you'll see he painted it. Yeah, so sorry, guys. Um, I do get caught in a yarn and end up um, spinning around and not putting a lot of paint on it. We do dab slowly at this painting. We've done a whole lot of work on it, though. It's going to be very, very cool to watch the uh, time lapse on it. If you want to catch the time lapses, you can follow on Instagram. All the links you need are in the bio. So, um, just while there's some people here though, uh, don't uh, don't buy a print. <laughs> Worst salesman of all time. Don't buy a print. Um, buy a print. But if you are going to buy a print, uh, subscribe because there'll be a discount code for subscribers for ten percent off. So. The subscription's way cheaper um, to get that code. So I recommend this. This is this is good, good financial decision if you're gonna buy a print. And thanks, Dub Dub. Thanks, Dub Dub, appreciate you. Um yeah. But otherwise just hang out. Just hang out. What about another how much longer on the clock? Another, maybe hour? Another hour? Let's see. I did want to get on to Aku Aku, but I mean, we're running out of plates. <laughs> We've had some fun. We've used up most of the plates. We surpassed 10, as per the plan. There we go. Dabbling down here. There we go. Bouncing around here. Now I haven't posted about it yet. If you're here earlier for the yarn, that's fantastic. But if you missed the yarn earlier, um, a lot of people have been asking when a painting's actually finished. Now, I believe paintings finish through attachment. When I say attachment, I mean when you have too much attachment to what you've made so far that you care more about that than what the painting could become. When you reach that stage, that's when a painting's finished. And it's getting there slowly with this one. I'm not far off that. Sorry, how many paintings do you do a day, week, month? Okay, so it should be about one painting every four days. 
But sometimes, sometimes you go through lulls. Don't think for a second. Like a lot of the time people get in their heads, especially as artists, that you think, I'm learning how to be an artist. By the time I figure out how to do it, when I know what I'm doing, I'm going to not be insecure. I'm going to not go through ruts and challenges and creative difficulties. As if, for some reason, having a bunch of money or followers would make creative ruts not happen. They become more likely. They become bigger ruts. And so, the best thing you can do is build up your ability to deal with ruts. Do it when you're not. Have a, have a dream. Have a dream way out there and pursue that dream. But find the ability to deal with your own creative ruts and your own insecurities when you're small, when you're starting out. What is it? Is it music? Is it friends? Is it loved ones? Is it certain processes? Is it rituals? Doesn't matter. Figure out for you what it is. So you, when you get to that dream, when you get to where you're going, you know your own solutions for it. Powerful. Powerful. Don't, don't, whatever you do, let, uh, sorry, let me just grab this here real quick. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, I had a point to make from that, but I completely lost it. But basically find your solutions to get you back on the right wagon prior to getting to where you want to go. Um, I was really lucky. I would have failed in art many a times had it not been for me studying um, art history and philosophy. Had I not had that in-depth knowledge of art and artists and process and philosophy for just in general why stuff would even matter in the first place, art would have broken me. Art's tough. But through that, I was able to deal with it, able to understand it, able to embrace it, and able to handle it in a very, very different way. So, encourage that. Encourage that a lot. Um, and that comes back to, there was a point that was coming from, but you lose it. <laughs> yeah, the color in this one's really fun. We've sent it in all directions. It's kind of like a Monet, but way, it's, like, it's like an excited Monet. It's like Monet, your hand of 10 more pigment, pigments and told to go wild. Um, Jean Claude, how am I inspired? Inspired's a funny word. We've talked about inspiration. Jay Smith, I'm sorry, I yarned about this at the start and you were here for it. Now we're gonna do it again, but that's okay. We use the word inspiration for artists. I think it's the wrong word. I think motivation is important. Sometimes you're inspired. You know you, know you love painting. You know the journey you want to go on but you're not motivated to start that journey. That's motivation you need. So what's, where's the motivation coming from? What motivates you? For me, this is not me telling you what motivates me so you can copy it. This is just me sharing so then you can figure out what motivates you. I love connecting with people. I love producing something that's meaningful, and inspirational to me, uh, that, that has feeling or uh, expression to me. And then someone else feeling that through the painting, that connection that you can get, that I can be seen, it's terrifying. Um, you feel vulnerable at first, you feel insecure at first. The fact that you could paint something that someone else could see you through or understand you a little bit better through. This is, that, that is I, I battled with this for a long time. And then eventually you get to a point where you just give up and say, you know what? I don't care if people see me, I'm just gonna paint the way I feel, the way I want to paint. And then all of a sudden, of all these insecurities that you had because you were painting in a way that you thought people wanted to see you and you thought you wanted to create. You suddenly start creating for you and you let your own, make it cheesy, your own light shine. Suddenly, everyone else starts shining too and that you start bouncing off each other. You motivate each other and then you can't help but to keep on painting and producing and making because you're making people happy and in turn you're becoming happier. That's the motivation for painting. Once you start feeling that cycle of love, start the wheel of that starts spinning and increasing, 
oh, you can't be stopped. So motivation like that, that's powerful. But that doesn't motivate all people. Sometimes you can be, I mean, you can be motivated by money. You can be motivated by um, family. You can be motivated by kids. Motivated by love. A lot of artists get motivated by love. Passion, you know. Motivated by um, perfection. That's been a big one. The motivation of making something perfect. Feeling like you're imperfect, but you could create something that was perfect. All these things can motivate you. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Lily. I was trying to be clear, but uh, I guess I wasn't. This plate here is done. Let's grab another one. All right, here we go. Plate down here. Let's have a look-see here. Which is your favorite paintings of mine so far? Um, I've said this before, but I don't really have a favorite painting as much as all paintings have like a favorite stage. This one's had been through a pretty fun, uh, fun stage where you add dots to it. Dots and strokes and wild colors and sort of let it become all that it wants to be. Mm. Ah, yum. Bit of water. Next color, what's it gonna be? Boom, 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 boom. It's going to be a combination of, uh, funnily enough, I basically had it there, but we're going to need some more white. White and with brown, get myself a nice tan color. Here we go. Move this across to here. Here we go. Beautiful. Just like that. That's what I'm after. New plate, landscape paintings. Eddie, yes, I have. Um, if you'd like to see some of the paintings that have been done, click on the link in the bio and it'll take you through to prints and all that sort of jazz. But um, at the moment, there's a couple of prints still up there. They are sold out though, and um, they'll say sold out on them, so you won't get confused. But that's a pity though. Um, they are limited edition, so once they're out, they're out. There won't be more available. Um, but that's where a couple of landscapes. There's two New Zealand landscapes. We've got a waterfall that we're working on, and then a lot of portraits and things like this. Paint that I use. I got a mixture right now. I got a mixture of. Innovative Acrylic, Liquitex, and Atlia. And, yeah, it's a pretty fun combination. <laughs> Thanks, Santiago, I appreciate you. Here we go. Let's add this in here. This is the right color. Now we're talking to it. So this is the actual, probably the realism color that we need here. Um, don't go and say those are, the, those are the key paint brands either, they're not. What you want to focus on is whatever your local art store sells, it's readily available to you. You can go in there, they might even let you experiment. This is a winner. Um, here we go, that's the colour of these pants here. This one here, honestly this brush has seen so many rodeos, it's Da Vinci. Da Vinci. It's seen too many rodeos now. This brush is on its last legs. Mm. Let's get in here. Yeah, just start embellishing a few of these bits. There we go. Also, Jay, thanks for hanging around with me. It's been good. done without you. <laughs> uh, Gene, my first painting was when I was about four and a half, I think. And it's a little picture of a goldfish. Um, I'm finding Nemo fish actually. And I remember it so vividly because I was traumatized because I spilt the uh, punnet of ink that was beside the goldfish all over the table. 
because I was so excited about my goldfish. Maybe I was six at the time. I don't know if that's the very first one, but that's the first one that I remember. My golly, I made a mess. <laughs> you should have seen it. It was a disaster. There we go. And now, when and if I have kids, and they spill stuff all over the floor, I'll be like, don't get angry, don't get angry. <laughs> Your mum gave you a million second chances as you spilled ink all over the floor. Repeat that. <laughs> so, we'll see. There we go. Lots of white in this one. There's a little bit of a high exposure in the camera here. So we'll embellish that. There we go. Bounce it through here a little bit. There we go. down here. Perfect. Probably, probably we've moved away from Monet and we've danced a little bit close to someone who's still alive today um, who is, that is a very sweet thing to say Seth, um, and maybe I'd be like, hey, um, it's very cold in the water and I reckon we can both fit on that door. What do you reckon? And then we can like, live the rest of our lives together. I don't need to be in the water and freeze. <laughs> it was a big door, guys, in Titanic. It was a big door. Here we go. How do you know where to stop? When your attraction to what the paintings become overpowers your desire to see what it could be. That's when you're finished. Not a second sooner. If you're looking at it wondering if you're done, you don't really care about it, you're not so attracted to it that you won't let a brush go near it. When you're so attracted to it that you won't let a brush go near it, that's when you've got it to the right stage. You've made it. The painting's finished. I'm not saying that everyone else is going to love it like that, but if you love it like that, the painting's finished. Um, do you ever paint realism or landscapes? I used to do a lot of realism. I used to love it. But then it, gr it ground me down because I wasn't valuing the process. I was valuing the outcome that uh, people wanted. I thought people wanted to see something, and so I was making them what they wanted to see. I was, so everyone wants to, wants to see a beautiful picture of a person. Everyone wants to see a, this or a that. And so I'd give up to a process, completely relinquish myself to something, and wouldn't care what it took me, what I had to be to get to the conclusion. I'd just go through the pain of the making it. And that's where the mistake was made, because when you paint, it's got nothing to do with the conclusion. You've got to have a loving process. You've got to believe in why you're doing it as you're making it in a way that you are addicted to the process. And that addiction, that love that you embellish the process with, that'll be showing up in your final piece. That'll exist in what you create. Besides painting, what other passion do I have? I love painting. Um, oh, I love passion. I like writing. I like philosophy. I love science. I'm a geek. I watch um, SciShow on YouTube. <laughs> um, Hank Green. He's one of my favourites. Two people actually, role models for me. Hank Green is one of them. I love that guy to bits. Sharing knowledge and instructional videos to everyone. Great guy. And then... The other person is, Ro is it Ronnie? Rodney. Rodney Norman. He's a comedian. But again, he just wants to spread positivity. He's like, what do I want to see more of in the world? Positivity. All right, how am I going to do that? I'll do it through comedy. So, love that guy a bit. But um, probably philosophy, writing. I like to dance. 
no good at it. I like to sing, I'm no good at it, but I do it. Um, much love and healing to Hank, yeah. Power to Hank. Please stay with us, Hank. You absolute champion. <laughs> Hank doesn't know it, but this Kiwi artist loves him. <laughs> I like Monet. Uh, Monet and Van Gogh, two of my favorites. Remember, they actually, throughout their lives, sold very, very little art, which is actually inspirational because people sometimes ask me, I want to be an artist, but I don't know how to sell art. And you're like, well, that's not a prerequisite to becoming an artist. Monet and Van Gogh didn't sell art. Never done a self-portrait, don't want to. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it because I think there's so many more amazing things to be captured in this world rather than my face. I feel like... I feel like... Every picture I do, if I do it right, it stands as a self-portrait. The attitude the brush strokes hit with, the way the image is depicted and the colours that I use, is a window to who I am. It doesn't need to be me. Yeah, yeah, there's a little tacker down here. <laughs> yeah, so it's coming together. It's coming together. Here we go. Little bits. There we go, so a little lug there. Mm. More brown, turn that color into more of a, uh, what's that? Gray sienna. There we go. And down in here. Perfect. And all the way around. Perfect. It's not about capturing your face, it's about how you interpret and represent yourself. How I interpret and represent myself is how I approach every painting I do. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd sooner want to do a uh, painting of my uh, mother or father or brothers. <laughs> so be like, right, I've got some spare time on my hands. Let's get one of you to immortalize and one of you fellows immortalize and paint. Um, how long does it normally take me to finish a painting like that? This one here is probably pushing up on the 15 hour mark, but only because a lot of the layers have covered up the underlying layers. Like I said, I wanted to see where this painting could go more than I wanted it to stay where it was. So I kept adding to it, building it, changing it. Maybe that was stupid, but the allure of knowing what it could be was still just too much. So we pursue and we change. There we go. And just in there. Thanks, Jed Smith. Oh, that's a good click on the back. That's what I needed. Good click in the back. Keep adding the paint. Little bits. Mm. We do need to grab. Oh, darker color, do we need it? Mm. Hard to decide if we're on the right track. Dotting these in. There we go. Okay. All right. I am going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to make myself a coffee. Number two, I'm going to hold on a second. There we go. I'll throw this little bit in here. Now I'm going to go to the bathroom. Both those things. I drank a lot of water today. So, that's priority one. Here we go. There we are. Maybe coming up here on that shoulder. Perfect. 
the uh, little run of speed here. Perfect. All right. Coffee, bathroom, and I'll come back. Right. While I'm gone, I'm going to go like this, like this, and two minutes? Yeah, it's plenty of time for me. All right, I'm coming back. Oh, if I do that, you can't see the painting. That one's a little bit intense. Here, let me put this one on, but I'll be back before that, I promise. I'm coming back before that, but two minutes on the five minute timer. <laughs> two minutes on the five minute timer, I'm coming back. How'd I do? Hey, oh, it's just too late. Oh my lord. My god, that's so close. I failed. What was that? It was literally like, is it a rabbi? It's not, it's a New Zealand farmer. Um, but I like creativity. Now that you say that, I kind of see the rabbi, but uh, the vest should be a giveaway. bring back our cushion down to here oh my god a wild sip appeared the wild sip users sit down and sip on the coffee um, <laughs> wild sip escaped um, if I was a Pokemon I'd just get caught in a regular Pokeball I wouldn't put up much of a fight maybe oh uh, now, if I was a Pokemon, put me in the uh, Safari Zone. I'll be like a Nidorino. Uh, Nidorina? Nidorino? I'll just be a Nidoran. Throw a Safari Ball at me. It's a good place to be. I make that coffee pretty well. It's made with instant, but... There's nothing to frown at. Yeah. I couldn't think of a more appropriate tools to stir it with actually. I've been doing that since high school. But the one thing you have to do, if you're going to use your brush to stir your coffee, keep your paint off your brush. Not the tip, that, that's, that's the paint. But like this whole part here, wash that too, because otherwise you'll get a boiling cup of coffee and you'll mix it and all the paint res residue and mediums that you've been using that you didn't wash off properly will come off into your coffee. So clean brushes, yummy coffees, not consuming chemicals. <laughs> this is the way to do it. Okay, let's have a look-see here. What are we gonna do next? How do we feel about this picture? Um, hmm. I think we're gonna grab, what are we gonna grab next? Gray, probably. I say grey. Grey? Let's have a little look here. 
Let's get this brown off anyway. We've probably done enough brown. But I think probably grey. Grey with a little bit of yellow through it. I think that's going to be the dream combo of the next five minutes. Here we go. A little bit of, this is called toning grain mid. So it's a good grey, but it's not great by itself. It won't actually hold its, uh, hold its ground too well against the other colours. But if we splice toning grey with a bit of candium yellow medium, just a bit of each, and then to give them a bit of kick, this is essential, a bit of kick, I'm going to add a little bit of acrylic primer and extender. You don't need to. And actually, arguably, I'm just saying words to fill in time. You don't need to copy any of that, ever, or know it. Just know that we're going to add some grey with a little bit of yellow through it, and it's going to look pretty, and that's all that matters. Here we go. Ah, uh, we've got plenty of red. We've got plenty of red, but yes, you're probably right, Jay Smith. After I get this yellow tone through here, it's easy to swap across to the red, because the red will be stronger than the yellow, and overpower any areas we put it into. So, we can always move on to the red, but we can't move on to yellow. We have to start with the yellow. So, let's see where this takes us. There we go. But I like where your head's at. You're on the right, you're on the right uh, direction. There we go. There we go. Do, 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 do. You saw the uh, the red. Let's go through there. Am I the only person who didn't notice the red? Hello, Joe. How you doing? This is good. The chat room's got to a controllable level, so now I can read each person's thing and answer back properly. Sometimes it gets just a little bit hectic. I lose track of things. And uh, people feel like I ignore them. Well, that's not my intentions. It's never my intentions. I'm always awe people. Oh, thanks, Anne. Appreciate you. And how long have you been working on this painting, Michael? Ah, about 12 hours. But that's because I've made a few mistakes with it. I had to backtrack, had to cover things up. So the actual paint you can see probably took only about five hours. But uh, it made a bit of a mess. Man. Nah. Thanks, Stacy. And but typically for a painting like this, if you thread the needle, I say thread the needle, so you go from start to finish in a really cool, powerful way, then uh, it should only take you five to ten hours. It shouldn't take longer than that. Any additional time was just you then having to cover up the mistakes that you've made. Say you, me having to cover up the mistakes that I made, slips that I've made, little things like that. Ha <laughs> ha, Chrissy, Miss Jasmine, either you're having me on, or I need to teach you. This whole picture is a giant long set of mistakes. One stroke after another applied with the best of intentions, but never quite in the right place. But in unison, they all come together, and there's an effect called emergence, whereby all these incorrect little wild colours and strokes have a picture that comes out of it with no stroke ever being correct enough to actually represent the picture in itself. Do you start with an outline? Just freehand any Ella. Just go at it. You want those mistakes. You want those incorrect proportions every now and again. That's human. It's human to make those mistakes. Let photographs get proportions perfect. And let AI get the perfect blueprint and do it immediately. But let yourself actually go through a process and battle and make mistakes and learn. This is okay. We judge this. We pretend like mistakes getting distracted, running off in the wrong direction. And a, gru a tough process, a loved process, but a tough process might be some sort of a mistake. This is incorrect. Or somehow not as great as a robot. This is also incorrect.
Um, <laughs> cheers, Max. Um, why don't you paint realistic? Why do you choose dots? Well, in this case, we sort of chose dots. We just ran off into a dotty feeling. Um, this was lines before. Wild, big, long, cascading lines. But we sort of converted into a world of dots. As we noticed, small parts of it. But, uh, honestly, the intentions wasn't to be dots. We just started pursuing dots in this particular painting. It wasn't coming together with lines, so we started doing dots. If dots stop working for us, we'll quickly change again, but right now they seem to be working. So continue that theme. <laughs> here we go. Check a little bit of this through here. And then that goes there. There we go. This is a picture of a farmer, by the way. It's a New Zealand farmer. He's from the Coromandel. And we're just trying to capture a little bit of this kiwi husk. It is acrylic, but it's going to look like oils. We're going to try, about try and capture a little bit of this kiwi nature. His get the job done farmer style. But um, he's older now, so there's a hunch to him. There's a walking stick. So there's some connotations inside the picture. We want to have a down-to-earth kiwi farmer, but we want time, mother time, to have a little bit of importance in this painting in terms of understanding him. <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Yeah, so it should look like oils, but it's not oils. That's one of the key things about this painting. I add a lot of mediums into the paint to make it behave like anything other than acrylics. Acrylics tend to dry out. They dry out and they look flatter, more matte-like. It's fine for them to do that, but I want to keep that lush, rich, saturated, vibrant colour of oils. So. I added a lot of mediums to the paint to make it do a lot of different things. Here we go. A little bit of this. Perfect. This is what we're after. Okay. A little bit of this through here. Mix that in there. Fresh new take on some of these colours. <laughs> Cheers, Motigoat. Motigoat, I like that name. Motigoat. It's like motorboat, but it's a goat. Mm. Okay. There we go. And next. There we go. Alright, how much? It's not finished yet, it needs framing. Um, it's got more steps to go on it, but I'm hoping it won't sell before it's finished because I'd like to actually put it available on the website as an original. Um, too often do we have these paintings that we start here, someone buys before I actually get on the website, so the world can't see it, but um, my human mistakes don't look like yours at my best. <laughs> And, and, you just do a different kind of mistake. Don't be like that. Um, but, uh, yummy. Um, so, this one should be finished in the next week or so. Framing it, because I always frame them. Um, that'll be another week, so a fortnight away. Then once that's happened, photographed and things, and hopefully sold as an original. If you like this one though, and this is the work that you think, yes, I want a Kiwi farmer on my wall, that's perfect for that space, blah, blah, blah. 
get in touch, um, jump on the link in the bio, um, email, Instagram, anything, and I'll let you know when it's finished. Now, I say let you know when it's finished because, first off, you may actually hate how it looks when it finishes. I may just put in some violet or um, aquamarine blue, which just really grinds your gears. So if you love it now, but it's not finished yet, sort of like your true love in high school is different from your true love in life, they change. You're allowed to be into one thing at one stage, into another thing in another stage. Just like with this painting. You're into it now. Three layers on, you may change your mind. We'll see. Would love one of Anna Nicole Smith. Ooh, that's a wild idea. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Um, let's see a little looksy around here. I think we're going to dive on that one. Yes, we've got the right colour for it. We're going to bring back Cowboys team. Let's pull down this one. Down you come. There we go. I was going to move on to uh, Aku Aku, but I'm just not quite too sure yet. Oh. Maybe we'll attack it. Maybe we won't. We will see. Okay, let's put this little block on here. Just like this. Steve, are you still here? Or has Steve moved on? If you're still here, Steve, we're going to put another layer on your painting and see if we can't bring it closer to where we want it. It's not there yet, but it's on the right track. Just do that one up there, switch that down to there, put that up to there. There we go. Grab this one. <laughs> okay, moving off the previous picture, and now we're moving into Cowboys. Just make sure you get everything in the right position. There we go, there we go, and now we're going to go, loosen this one off, all the way out, into there, we're going to tighten that one onto there. Perfect. That's where we want that. Let's just make sure that's all station back there. Ah, I see what's happening. It's not quite the whole way up yet. There we go. It's quite hard to get that position exactly. How's that for positioning? positioning for you guys? We'll zoom you in a little bit there. There we go. There's your painting. Fantastic. Here I am. I'm going to reset that. I do a little time lapse to post on Instagram, which is fun. I love it so much color in your paintings. Thanks, Emma Marie. Appreciate you. That's a lovely thing to say. Um, you'll take that one too. Thanks, Modi Code. <laughs> Um, do you live on other socials? Just a second screen. Um, no, no, so I, uh, no, no, I sort of live on one at a time, and then, uh, live on one at a time, but then that one takes a time lapse, and then I download the live and put it onto YouTube. So if you're watching, if you miss a live and you wanted to catch one, you could go onto YouTube and you see the replays, and also see how my behavior changes from day to day. <laughs> You'll be like, ooh, that painting set from that last video, Sip was having an off day, um, which you have. You're not always on fire, guys. Here we go. Now, flying. Ooh, ta ta ta. Camera colors, oh, fantastic. I had someone giving me grief before that the camera quality was no good, and I was like getting really insecure about it, but try not to show it, and now that's really helped, so thank you. <laughs> Abbas, oh Abbas, you were here yesterday, good to have you back. Right, we're adding a pale salmon to this painting now. Here we go, 
Here we uh, mix this up properly. Ah, before I get started, I need that. Oh. The painting. Selma. I love how paintings can make you feel. I love the process of actually making them. I love sharing that process. And I like the fact that we can use a 2D surface to actually, in a small way, feel something real. Paintings can evoke feelings. If they can evoke feelings, if you believe they can do that, then you can use them to make people happy, a little bit happier, a little bit sadder. A lot of power in a painting, if you do it right. Like music, yes, exactly like music can, 100% correct. With music, in a brief moment, you can feel intense euphoria, or you can um, feel intense sadness, or love, or you know, happiness. All these things can come from music. A painting is similar, but it's different. It's more long term. So with a painting, instead of giving you that sudden moment of overwhelming love, it drip feeds it to you over days, weeks, years, months, a lifetime. So, paintings are a slow burn. But if you can get a little bit of pleasure out of a painting, a little bit of pleasure out of a painting every day, that's something really special. That's something not to be sniffed at or frowned at. So, Sorry, there we go. Not to be sniffed at or frowned at. That's uh, something pretty cool. We're just adding a little bit of detail into these faces here. Slashing up a bit of this. Mm, not quite right. What accent is this? This is the Kiwi accent. So you listen to a New Zealander. Uh, New Zealander. So that's pretty exciting. If you haven't heard of New Zealander before, then you missed Flight of the Concords, excellent TV show. And you didn't get told that we sound like robots. Very monotone. Not a lot of jumping around. A lot of accents leap around. New Zealand accent was like, nah, I'm just gonna stay right here on the same beat, non-stop, in one direction. So, fun, but uh, it is what it is. that on in there. There we go. Thanks HUNZ. Splice down here. Mm. And across here. Fantastic. It's not really showing off these. Bags of money on the counter here. Doosh, doosh, doosh. Here we go. Fantastic. I love it. You can consider a painting ASMR channel if you have. <laughs> uh, the problem is, you call it an ASMR channel and you're taking huge complaints because they'll be like, I was so relaxed. I was in a euphoric heaven watching a painting being made, and slowly drifting off to sleep. And then that obnoxious Kiwi painter, the buffoon, dropped a plate. And it made such a racket that I woke up and I couldn't get back to sleep and it's all his fault. And I think he even got me to subscribe to his behind the scenes content. And now he's woken me up from my nap. I can see it, it's too much drama. I'm back, hello Steve, how we doing? 
We're adding a little bit of that colour into the painting that we talked about. <laughs> Someone's telling me to stop. I'm sorry. Um, I went down the rabbit hole. Have you ever, have you ever seen uh, Scrubs? Watch Scrubs JD he goes into little thought bubbles all the time. Runs off on a tangent. Kind of happens to me a wee bit every now and again. I just vocalise it. Instead of sitting there awkwardly, slowly going down a uh, chain of events, just say it out loud. Can you go to Hobbiton and paint it for me? You can use those same colours. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do that. Not just because I'd love to go to Hobbiton. <laughs> um, jump on the link in my bio and fill out a commission form. That's what you want to do. There we go. And I can stir up around there. Okay, I'm there. Champion, go for gold. Um, at the moment, there is no paintings available. Um, this is a commission, so this is going somewhere. And then there's no originals online. But depending on the size you're after, and where in the world you want to go, it varies. I recommend leaving on the page there and filling out the commission form. If you want something straight away, best place to go is the limited prints on the web page. And you'll find what you're looking for. Or you might find what you're looking for. Some of the limited prints are already sold out too, so you won't find everything you want. But you will find a few things. Which is pretty cool. Maybe one of the prints is exactly what you've been looking for. Um, if they do say sold out, they're gone. There will not be more available. They're gone, gone, gone. I've had people reaching out to me saying, can I get that one? And I'm like, sold out, been sold out, because people buy them. Like, if, there's, if it's a set of one of three, or one of nine, or one of six, or one of 12, um, people buy them as almost like an investment, thinking that they're getting, get something, they're getting something rare and special. So, to make that true, I can't just be like, oh, they sold fast. Here's another 10 of them. <laughs> Um, so, once they're out, they're out. Once they're out, they're out. Dun, 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 dun. Thanks, Jay Smith. Appreciate that. Once they're out, they're really out. They're really, really out. Do dun, 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 dun. Um, what side are you into painting? Natty Natty. Great name. Natty Natty. Um, I was starting to painting solely because I just love to paint. Sounds cheesy. I used to, um, I'd work, well, I used to paint ever since I was a kid, but I started to paint full time or more all the time when I uh, was working a uh, job, corporate job. I would uh, finish and then at night I'd run off, spend the whole night painting, but rather than buying fresh canvases each time, I just paint over the old canvas, cover it in paint, start again. So I wasn't trying to make any art for anyone, it was for me. So I just enjoyed the process of making it. it sounds silly when you hear that and you say, why would you paint over it? Because it didn't matter, it was just me. Me loving what I was making, and I could fund it by actually painting, uh, by working. And so if you're starting out, it's great to figure out what you love and why you love it. Do you just love making art? If you love making art, you don't need to quit your job and start painting full time in order to love making art. You can just do that. In fact, you'd probably do more of it if you had a job because you wouldn't have to worry about bills. Um, I actually ended up getting too snowed in, too many it was commissions and 
stuff like that. And I was like, right, I actually need to turn down commissions, stop selling, like stop making and selling art, or I need to either leave my other job and do this full time. If it hadn't been for reaching that point, I would have just made art non-stop. Uh, sorry, and just done it in the garage and not worried about becoming a full-time artist. It wasn't really a necessary thing. Monet and Van Gogh were never full-time artists. It wasn't a requirement for them to become full-time artists. Well, they were full-time, but they didn't make their money from it. Basically, love what you do. Don't, don't try and make art to make money. Make money to make art. Sounds so cheesy, but if it's cheesy, it's probably true, guys. Uh, Van Gogh style? Yeah, probably. Van Goghish. Post-impressionistic, I suppose you could say. down to very low, here we go. There we go, perfect. Fantastic. That's not cheesy. I love to knit. That's what I've been wanting to get into painting recently. Fantastic. Honestly, when it comes to getting into something like painting, don't let anyone trip you up and think that you need to be doing it a certain way um, or anything like that. You can just do it for you. Um, and if you want any tips on painting, there's tons on YouTube. You don't need to. Um, Go to any painting, I mean, go to painting class, it's great because you can get one on one stuff, but uh, you don't need to. You can just do it literally by watching one clip a day on YouTube for 10 minutes, learning a new tri uh, tip, new trick, and then from there, buy some paint and just have some fun being you. It's a good way. The saying is so simple but true do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. This is true. This is true. It's so cheesy, so cheesy, so cheesy and corny and ridiculous and said all the time in fact that a lot of us ignore it and write it off, laugh about it and say yeah of course you'd say that, it's usually it's like yeah, sometimes it's like a rich person saying it you're like oh yeah okay, alright mate, <laughs> but usually it's because they found out what they loved they pursued it with reckless abandon and then from that they couldn't help but actually be endorsed by people, be loved by people and then become, you know, whatever from there. So, find out what you love. I think the better way to say it actually, to get more people turned around and happy about it, um, I would say find out what you love so then it can then it'll be easy to get rich. Find out what you love and getting rich will be easy. And then when you hear that, you'll be like, okay, I want to be rich, I want money. So you'll start finding out what you love. And then <laughs> once you find what you love, you'll realize getting rich had nothing to do with money. And you're rich now money or no money, because you found what you loved. Oh, so cheesy. So cheesy, it's so true. There we go. Number 10 on Rising Star. I don't know what this Rising Star thing is, guys. What's Rising Star? There we go. Hey Denny, by the way, how you doing? Good to see you, and I hope you're looking after yourself. There we go. 
together. All right, we're not far off gonna let this painting sit, Steve. It'll just sit for a few days and cool off. I say cool off because you leave a painting for a few days, study it, see if you feel the same way about it after a bit of time. And if you do, the painting's finished. But if you don't, you might notice other little things that you want to add. Totally okay. Totally okay. Check. Puppy needed out. Had to come check. <laughs> Thanks, crazy young. Good to see you back here. Yeah, I've gone nowhere. I, I did mean it though. We are coming to the tail end of the stream. Bit by bit. Um, love the zone differences. <laughs> yeah, zone differences are fun. And thanks for the uh, corgi. It didn't tell me you sent me the corgi, but that's pretty fun. Oh no, crazy gay uncle. Thanks, crazy gay uncle. Thanks for the corgi. Um, and Paul. Paul, you're about to lose your... Hello, Paul. How you doing? You're about to uh, run out of your subscription which is totally okay. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. I really, really appreciate that. If you do renew, I'd love you to bits. If you don't, I still love you. I appreciate the support. It's really kind of you. And Max Chiruz. Max Chiruz. Max Chiruz. Hard to know. All right. I'll just check a bit more in here. That's done there. It's done there. We'll pause there. We'll pause there. We just need a little bit more salmon in this one. I'll stand on back and have a look see. Yeah. Let that sit. Oh, Paul. Welcome back to the team, you absolute champion. You're absolutely lovely to have you here. And this is pretty exciting. I started today thinking I was going to come on, hang out with you guys, chill for a little bit, spend some time, paint some layers, <clears throat> and have just a wholesome time. And we're now at a stage where we're two subscribers off the subscription goal. So if you're feeling like showing some love, I would absolutely love to have you join me as a subscriber. I'd be the luckiest man on the face of the planet. So, watch out for that. I'll put that one there. There we go. Always neatly taking them off that side of the thing. Put that one down there. Now, we need to let that painting sit now. It's got that last little bit of salmon through it. It needs to sit for about, hmm, I'll give it 24 hours, see how certain I am around it. Maybe we'll give it to 48, but uh, it's in a pretty fun space right now. We just have to see if our opinion changes over time on it. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate the paper cranes. Now, and the hearts. Cheers, crazy uncle. Okay, are we going to bring back... <laughs> Let me have a look-see at our... Does that need it? Not really. That one's all good. Maybe. With the tail end. Maybe we just bring back Aku Aku. Maybe that's what we do. Ah, uh, do we? Hmm. Hmm. I don't feel like doing Aku Aku at the moment. Um, have I ever drunk the paint water is there by accident? No, I've never done that. I don't think I have. Maybe I have. Who knows? I'm going to grab a new picture. Uh, not a new picture. I'm going to grab an old picture, but do the final layer on it. One second. Coming in hot. All right, we're gonna finish off this one. I've been telling you guys that I was gonna finish it off. Well, today's the day. We're finishing Abel Lincoln off. And then once he's finished, I'll take him to get photos done and things, but uh, he just needs a little bit more love. That's all he needs. Just a little bit more love. Let's grab this here. 
Now the reason why he's not finished is there's a bit of texture in a few of these areas that have been put over it. They need some white added in. They had white added in. They just need a little bit more. There we go. How's that positioning? We're good there. And we're good there. There we go. Now the special thing about this picture. Um, <laughs> Uh, I chose this size because it has uh, it's monumental, it's big, it's fun to do big portraits because it's, it actually disassociates you from the noses and the mouths and the eyes. You see much bigger shapes inside of them and so you don't get caught up in trying to perfect every brush stroke. Um, Scud, what's going on? Tell me what's up. Tell me what's up. So, quick job. Now, oh sorry, what I was saying here was with the colours, um, the colours in this picture, or the pigments in it, there's 16 different pigments. Why is there 16 pigments, sir? Oh, <laughs> I see, it's just a wave. You're all good, Scott. Um, why is there 16 different pigments, sir? That's a great question, whoever asked that. There's 16 pigments in it, I'm sorry, that was stupid. Um, there's 16 different pigments in it, because he's a 16th president. So the idea behind that is that each tone you see in here, each pigment, they're unmixed, they're unmixed. So I haven't done any gradient changes. So there's 16 colors, 16 colors, 16th president, 16, 16, 16. Did I say 16? I said, I meant 16. Um, Max Cheroots, it is absolutely lovely to have you on board, Max. Cheers to you, thanks for subscribing, you absolute champion. Um, my sense of humor is extremely dork and scud, let's not beat around the bush, but that's okay. I'm gonna do me, and hopefully that allows someone who's really funny to do them. And I can laugh at their jokes. Um, right, well, I've probably got another 19 minutes in me to finish off this picture, and then your boy might dash. But before I go, I'm really hoping we can find that last subscriber. Who are you? Where are you? We want to have you on board. Now, standing back, having a look-see, we can't add any new colors to this, but we're gonna add on and embellish it with... Mm-hmm-hmm. Um, let's see here, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Right, do I have another plate? I've got one last plate. Your boy's got one last plate. Here we go. Okay. We need lots of transparency gel because we don't want to lose what we've made. We want to uh, actually make it transparent. And then we're going to use our pastel colors. So first color up, pastel violet. Next color up, where are you hiding? It's in here somewhere. Pastel lilac, pastel coral. Um, yeah, thank you, Jay. All social medias are in the bio. And then I want pastel aquamarine. Here we go. <clears throat> pastel aquamarine, that's where we want to be. Right, that can go in there. There's my colors. Wipe off this brush. We can technically use this color I've got here um, because it's one of our 16, but it's mixed with white. So that splicing is technically a lie because that would give us more pigments that aren't included in our 16. We're religiously sticking to this. <laughs> All right. So we're not focusing on these deeper, darker areas around here. We're focusing specifically on these touch areas around here that we've added a lot of texture onto. And we're just gonna embellish that just a little bit more. Just around here. Whoop, splashed it on my shirt. There we go. Just chuck some that in there. And there you go. It's sort of battling to get on that texture there. Just around this eye here, there we go. That's what we're after. 
If you uh, didn't notice, guys, if you've uh, been around, if you're a subscriber, there's a couple of new emojis up at the moment. Max has already discovered them, which is pretty funny. <laughs> there we go. Do, da, 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 da. I'll just keep up, keep on subtly adding a few in as well, because it's fun. There we go. A little bit through here. All right. Just these light colours. Oh, that's not really one that trip to go. Who noticed that land? <laughs> Take that off there. The white drip lands perfectly in the dark spot of the painting. <laughs> it always would. Why wouldn't it land on the darkest point of the whole painting? Of course that's where it wants to go. Thanks Queen, appreciate the paper crane. Here we go, scoop this in there. This in there. Um, wait, I was on this live tonight and you were painting a guy in a suit. Did you just paint a... No, college, no, no, this is, this is an old painting. Not an old painting, it was done maybe last week sometime. The, um, it's not on YouTube yet, so... Once that goes up, you'll be able to see it from start to finish. But, um, I've been telling everyone, people have been coming on being like, have you finished Abe yet? And I've been like, no. I need to add some more light colours in there. And they're like, what needs to change? And it's like... Nothing really, it's sort of subtle, but it does need these light touches. Um, because then when you get up close to it, the texture's beautiful. It pops better. Um, so, that's what needs to happen. Well, that's what's going on. Making this negative space beautiful. That's the plan of attack. Here we go. Through there. Okay, moving on to the pastel lilac. Very similar to the pastel aquamarine, just off shots of white, really. Here we go. Um, is this a commission? Crazy Gay Uncle, it, Crazy Gay Uncle, it is not. So, I just need to round off a few of the works we were doing. I wanted to get a really recognizable face. It's been a while since I've done a close-up portrait, so I wanted to make sure I didn't get uh, too off the beat with how to do them. I say how to do them, how I do them. So, anyway. So this one's actually not a commission. It will be available soon via the website. There is two people who have come forward with expressions of interest about it, but it is not bought yet. Because I told them as well, I tell you guys, it's not finished yet. Wait till it's finished. Make sure you love it. And before you buy it as well, I'd send you a close and more up close file of it so you can see it and make sure that actually, yep, that's what I want. Thanks, crazy yeah, uncle. Appreciate you. I also appreciate that you came back. You know, you're leaving your dog out, it's the middle of the night, you got work tomorrow, but you've come on back to hang out with me and I appreciate that. I don't expect you to be around for long, don't get me wrong, because I know you've got things going on, but I appreciate you coming back. Greetings from Brazil. Hello. And the last one is the pastel coral that we'll move on to. There we go. This one's just a little bit more ready. <laughs> there we go. In here. There we go. Beautiful. Come up around here. Beautiful. Pastel lilac. That's what we're after. Falling asleep, sorry. Next time, catch you later. Catch you later. There we go. Where else are we going to go? Oh, cheers, crazy gay uncle. Leave on the line. Oh, wow. Look at that. Man, that's exciting. <laughs> oh, Leah the Kitten, yo. Thank you very much. 
All right, get some sleep. Get off this channel. <laughs> here we go. And here, and here, and around here. Are we finished yet? Not yet, not yet. Down here in this corner needs some love. A major. Mm, mm, mm. Get up in this corner. There we go. Thanks, Virgo. Appreciate you. Oh, I see that thing that you guys were talking about. What's that there? Huh. So that's like a... Oh, buzzy. So I don't get it. What's a... Okay, I'm going to do some Googling when I come off here for what a rising star is. But I see it on the top left of the screen there. Now. Alright. Alright, I thought I was done. Now that I look at those whites, I need to just push the blacks back in a few of these little areas. So I'm going to get the blacks out. Here we go. And let's make them. That was a black, I swear. And let's make them pop. What's that? Oh, jeepers. Cheers, Max. Yeah, that was one made by uh, Mark. I think Mark made that. So that was pretty funny. Thanks, Christina. Appreciate you. Right, here we go. Blacks. Now, I am going to take a quick hike. I'm going to be back in just a second. I'm going to quickly top up this with some boiling water because I mix my coffee's too strong and I'm going to quickly go to the bathroom because I'm human and I'm real and this happens sometimes. Um, so I'll leave, ah, oh, it's too bright isn't it? Let me go like this, hold on. I wonder if I can get this, go like that and go. Yeah, there we go, that's awesome. And then scale. Oh, perfect. That's way better. That's way more subtle. Pretty. All right, guys. I'm off to be a human. I'll be back in just a second. Hot water.
I'm coming back. Did I make it in time? Oh my god. I must. The live's over. I'm done. I'm done. Um, no biscuits, sorry, Scud, but I did, I did grab a mouthful of um, gummy beers. I thought. <laughs> oh, cheers, Cheryl. That's such a lovely thing to say as well. You were so close. You only just missed it. Um, I did grab a mouthful of gummy beers. Same mouthful, like six or five to six gummy beers. I was like, you know what? A little bit of a kick couldn't hurt. A kick that only a gummy bear could give you. There we go. Devils through these parts. And out across this eye. We're just capturing these darker areas. But only the areas we've already elected as dark. So we're not rediscovering anything here. It is five. Ah, uh, it is. It is indeed. Coming close to dinner time. There we go. Over here on the side. The side here. Ooh, I'll fix that. There we go. Mm -mm. Just like that. Lincoln is getting better and better. Yeah, so as we embellish these darker colors, we're going to really accentuate features in Lincoln. It's high risk, high reward sort of behavior because you do risk, as you add in those deep dark colors, you risk the whole painting. But if you don't embellish the dark colors, he has no presence. So you make a decision. Less presence. Risk the whole painting for more prisons. I think by now we all know I'm a risk the whole painting kind of a guy. <laughs> um, so, let's see where we can take this. Up through here. Don't be afraid to do some big strokes. Up in here. There we go. There we go, just up in here like that. What kind of method is that called? Abstract painting or something else? Let's call it, uh, well first off, whatever you like, is art subjective. You get to choose. But, if you're gonna give me the ability to name it, all the power to me, I would say, this is probably modern impression, uh, sorry, modern impressionism. But again, it doesn't have to be right. It can be whatever you want it to be. It's not even being cheesy. Uh, it's so subjective that you can just do that. You can be like, actually, this is what I feel about art. Down the floor again, let's see what we can get around here. Up and around here, there we go. Double there, and this comes down here. Grabbing a hold of these lips. Here we go. And then down under the lips. Across there. A bit of the chin there. That is out. A bit there. There we go. Perfect. Impressionistic, yeah, impressionism's really fun. Really fun. It's, um, it's the scariest, because you need to be the loosest. You need to actually be not afraid to lose the painting in any single stroke, but not afraid to make the painting in any stroke. It's like rolling dice over and over again. Sometimes you roll the one, 
Sometimes you lose the whole work. But it's worth it for when you thread the needle and roll that six. There we go. Perfect. Um, how do I multitask? I think, uh, I think I'm starting to kind of like the way that talking, getting questioned, it doesn't distract me from the painting as much as it brings me into it, reminds me what I'm doing, stops me from being sidetracked, keeps me engaged, embellishes the journey in a way that I can't escape it in the most wholesome of ways. I'll normally, if I'm left to my own devices, alone with music going, I'll get distracted, consumed by a small part of the picture. But if I started fiddling away in one corner of this picture and not engaging with the whole picture, Someone's going to pull me up on it and be like, yo, are you going to do the rest? What are you doing? What are you doing down in that corner, Sebastian? You'll pull me up. Keep me on the straight and narrow. Keep this painting moving forward. This journey is not just me on a boat heading off in my own direction. There's currently 200 of us charging off together. And since we're all charging off together, There's a responsibility for me to bring you along with me. And I love that. I love that responsibility while you're painting. Too often do we lack it as artists. Which causes us to just charge off in any direction. And sometimes paralyze us in the fear that we might choose the wrong direction. But with you guys here, I don't get to be paralyzed. I can't just stop. I can't just be like, you know what? I don't know. Got to make a decision. Got to keep charging. So you bring you bring a real life aspect into these paintings by being here, challenging me in directions, forcing me down roads in a very wholesome way. Make no mistake. There we go. Where else are we going to go with this? And in here too. There we go. Just down the side there. Embellish that sideburn. Fantastic. And then over here. Scooping up into that ear. Just gently. Coming out a little bit there. Perfect. All righty, team. That about sums up this, ooh, does it? A little bit up here. A little bit up here. There we go. Just scoop in there. Allow that haircut to be real. Perfect. All right, team. It's been an absolute pleasure spending a day with you. Hold on. I tell a lie, I'm not done just yet. Over here, over here. There we go, there we go, there we go. Where else? Perfect. Down in here? Yeah, you do. Hello. There we go. One more. Do -do 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 -do. Perfect. Now we're done. <laughs> Sorry for the awkward silence there. Um, I just needed to get that little part around there that I missed before. We are all sorted. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. We've done a lot of ground. We left out Aku Aku. Probably for the best. I wasn't in the mood for it today. Smash the waterfalls. Smash the waterfalls. Smash the uh, cowboy pick. Really good ground there. Smash the farmer. They've all gone to really fun places. And I think we've got a good final coat on this guy. Those black areas just been a little bit further accentuated. At 6.04, I've got just enough time to do some stretching and make dinner. And then 
Yeah, that's it. That's pretty exciting. Guys, absolute pleasure to have you all here. The ones who were here from the start, oh my god, you absolute troopers, thanks for joining me. The ones who are joining later in the piece, I hope you had fun. Um, you can always jump on the link in my bio for Instagram, for Twitter, for TikTok. You've already found TikTok. Um, YouTube replays, they're on YouTube. That's all by the link in the bio. Um, yeah. Ryan, <laughs> I didn't see your name earlier. Good to have you here, by the way. Um, yeah, absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you, everyone. If you're waking up in the morning, I hope you have a fantastic day. If you're going to sleep or if I kept you up way too late, I'm sorry for keeping you up. But um, yeah, thanks for being here with me. And I hope you have a good night's sleep. And if you're at work, keep working. Sorry for baiting on you. I hope you enjoy what you're doing. And I'm wishing you the best for your day. I'm off to do my thing. Bye, guys. <laughs> you, oh, you'll be that fly. <laughs> you champion. All right, guys. Bye for now, wherever you are in the world, all the best. See ya.